Song of Songs chapter The Song of Songs which is Solomon's let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for thy love is better than wine thine ointments have a goodly fragrance thy name is as ointment poured forth therefore do the maidens love thee draw me we will run after thee the king hath brought me into his chambers we will be glad and rejoice in thee we will find thy love more fragrant than wine sincerely do they love thee I am black but comely O ye daughters of Jerusalem as the tents of Kedar as the curtains of Solomon look not upon me that I am swarthy that the sun hath tanned me my mother's sons were incensed against me they made me keeper of the vineyards but mine own vineyard have I not kept tell me O thou whom my soul loveth where thou feedest where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon for why should I be as one that veileth herself beside the flocks of thy companions if thou know not O thou fairest among women go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tents I have compared thee O my love to a steed in Pharaoh's chariots thy cheeks are comely with circ lets thy neck with beads we will make thee circ lets of gold with studs of silver while the king sat at his table my spikenard sent forth its fragrance my beloved is unto me as a bag of myrrh that lieth betwixt my breasts my beloved is unto me as a cluster of henna in the vineyards of Engadi behold thou art fair my love behold thou art Fair thine eyes are as doves behold thou art fair my beloved yet pleasant also our couch is leafy the beams of our houses are cedars and our panels are cypresses song of songs chapter I am a rose of Sharon a lily of the valleys as a lily among thorns so is my love among the daughters as an apple tree among the trees of the wood so is my beloved among the suns under its shadow I delighted to sit and its fruit was sweet to my taste he hath brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me is love stay yemi with dainties refresh me with apples for I am love sick let his left hand be under my head and his right hand embrace me I adjure you O daughters of Jerusalem by the gazelles and by the hinds of the field that ye awaken not nor stir up love until it please hark my beloved behold he cometh leaping upon the mountains skipping upon the hills my beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart behold he standeth behind our wall he looked in through the windows he peereth through the lattice my beloved spoke and said unto me rise up my love my fair one and come away for lo the winter is past the rain is over and gone the flowers appear on the earth the time of singing is come and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land the fig tree putteth forth her green figs and the vines in blossom give forth their fragrance arise my love my fair one and come away O my dove that art in the clefts of the rock in the covert of the cliff let me See thy countenance let me hear thy voice for sweet is thy voice and thy countenance is comely take us the foxes the little foxes that spoil the vineyards for our vineyards are in blossom my beloved is mine and I am his that feedeth among the lilies until the day breathe and the shadows flee away turn my beloved and be thou like a gazelle or a young heart upon the mountains of spices song of songs chapter by night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth I sought him but I found him not I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the broadways I will seek him whom my soul loveth I sought him but I found him not the watchmen that go about the city found me saw yet him whom my soul loveth scarce had I passed from them when I found him whom my soul loveth I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me I adjure you O daughters of Jerusalem by the gazelles and by the hinds of the field that ye awaken not nor stir up love until it please who is this that cometh up out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke perfumed with myrrh and frankincense with all powders of the merchant behold it is the litter of Solomon threescore mighty men are about it of the mighty men of Israel they all handle the sword and are expert in war every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of dread in the night king Solomon made himself a palanquin of the wood of Lebanon he made the pillars thereof of silver the top thereof of gold the seat of it of purple the inside thereof being inlaid with love from the daughters of Jerusalem go forth O ye daughters of Zion and gaze upon King Solomon even upon the crown wherewith his mother hath crowned him in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart song of songs chapter behold thou art fair my love behold thou art fair thine eyes are as doves behind thy veil thy hair is as a flock of goats that trail down from Mount Gilead thy teeth are like a flock of ewes all shaped alike which are come up from the washing whereof all are paired and none faileth among them thy lips are like a thread of scarlet and thy mouth is comely thy temples are like a pomegranate split open behind thy veil thy neck is like the tower of David builded with turrets whereon there hang a thousand shields all the armor of the mighty men thy two breasts are like two fawns that are twins of a gazelle which feed among the lilies until the day breathe and the shadows flee away I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense thou art all fair my love and there is no spot in thee come with me from Lebanon my bride with me from Lebanon look from the top of Amana from the top of Sinir and Hermon from the lion's dens from the mountains of the leopards thou hast ravished my heart my sister my bride thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes with one beat of thy necklace how fair is thy love my sister my bride how much better is thy love than wine and the smell of thine ointments than all manner of spices thy lips O oh my bride drop honey honey and milk are under thy tongue and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon a garden shut up is my sister my bride a spring shut up a fountain sealed thy shoots are a park of pomegranates with precious fruits henna with spikenard plants spikenard and saffron calamus and cinnamon 
with all trees of frankincense myrrh and aloes with all the chief spices thou art a fountain of gardens a well of living waters and flowing streams from Lebanon awake O north wind and come thou south blow upon my garden that the spices thereof may flow out let my beloved come into his garden and eat his precious fruit song of songs chapter I am come into my garden my sister my bride I have gathered my myrrh with my spice I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey I have drunk my wine. With my milk eat O friends drink ye drink abundantly O beloved I sleep but my heart waked hark my beloved knocketh open to me my sister my love my dove my undefiled for my head is filled with dew my locks with the drops of the night I have put off my coat how shall I put it on I have washed my feet how shall I defile them my beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door and my heart was moved for him I rose up to open to my beloved and my hands dropped with myrrh and my fingers. With flowing myrrh upon the handles of the bar I opened to my beloved but my beloved had turned away and was gone my soul failed me when he spoke I sought him but I could not find him I called him but he gave me no answer the watchmen that go about the city found me they smote me they wounded me the keepers of the walls took away my mantle from me I adjure you O daughters of Jerusalem if ye find my beloved what will ye tell him that I am love sick what is thy beloved more than? Another beloved O thou fairest among women what is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou dost so adjure us my beloved is white and ruddy preeminent above ten thousand his head is as the most fine gold his locks are curled and black as a raven his eyes are like doves beside the water brooks washed with milk and fitly set his cheeks are as a bed of spices as banks of sweet herbs his lips are as lilies dropping with flowing myrrh his hands are as rods of gold set with beryl. His body is as polished ivory overlaid with sapphires his legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold his aspect is like Lebanon excellent as the cedars his mouth is most sweet yet he is altogether lovely this is my beloved and this is my friend O daughters of Jerusalem song of songs chapter whither is thy beloved gone O thou fairest among women whither hath thy beloved turned him that we may seek him with thee my beloved is gone down into his garden to the beds of spices to feed in the gardens and to gather lilies I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine that feedeth among the lilies thou art beautiful O my love as terza comely as Jerusalem terrible as an army with banners turn away thine eyes from me for they have overcome me thy hair is as a flock of goats that trail down from Gilead thy teeth are like a flock of ewes which are come up from the washing whereof all are paired and none faileth among them thy temples are like a pomegranate. Split open behind thy veil there are three score queens and four score concubines and maidens without number my dove my undefiled is but one she is the only one of her mother she is the choice one of her that bore her the daughters saw her and called her happy ye the queens and the concubines and they praised her who is she that looked forth as the dawn fair as the moon clear as the sun terrible as an army with banners I went down into the garden of nuts to look at the green plants of the valley to see whether the vine buddied and the pomegranates were in flower before I was aware my soul set me upon the chariots of my princely people song of songs chapter return return O Shulamite return return that we may look upon thee what will ye see in the Shulamite as it were a dance of two companies how beautiful are thy steps in sandals O prince's daughter the roundings of thy thighs are like the links of a chain the work of the hands of a skilled workman thy navel is. Like a round goblet wherein no mingled wine is wanting thy belly is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies thy two breasts are like two fawns that are twins of a gazelle thy neck is as a tower of ivory thine eyes as the pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bathrabim thy nose is like the tower of Lebanon which looped toward Damascus thy head upon thee is like caramel and the hair of thy head like purple the king is held captive in the tresses thereof how fair and how pleasant art thou o. Love for delights this thy stature is like to a palm tree and thy breasts to clusters of grapes I said I will climb up into the palm tree I will take hold of the branches thereof and let thy breasts be as clusters of the vine and the smell of thy countenance like apples and the roof of thy mouth like the best wine that glides down smoothly for my beloved moving gently the lips of those that are asleep I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me come my beloved let us go forth. Into the field let us lodge in the villages let us get up early to the vineyards let us see whether the vine hath buddied whether the vine blossom be opened and the pomegranates be in flower there will I give thee my love the mandrakes give forth fragrance and at our doors are all manner of precious fruits new and old which I have laid up for thee O my beloved song of songs chapter O that thou wert as my brother that sucked the breasts of my mother when I should find thee without I would kiss thee and none would despise me I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house that thou mightest instruct me I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate his left hand should be under my head and his right hand should embrace me I adjure you O daughters of Jerusalem why should ye awaken or stir up love until it please who is this that cometh up from the wilderness leaning upon her beloved under the apple tree I awaken thee there thy mother was in travail with thee there was she in travail and brought thee forth set me as a seal upon thy heart as a seal upon thine arm for love is strong as death jealousy is cruel as the grave the flashes thereof are flashes of fire a very flame of hashem many waters cannot quench love neither can the floods drown it if a man would give all the substance of his house for love he would utterly be contemned we have a little sister and she hath no breasts what shall we do for our 
sister in the day when she shall be spoken for if she be a wall we will build upon her a turret of silver and if she be a door we will enclose her with boards of cedar I am a wall and my breasts like the towers thereof then was I in his eyes as one that found peace Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman he gave over the vineyard unto keepers every one for the fruit thereof brought in a thousand pieces of silver my vineyard which is mine is before me thou O Solomon shalt have the thousand and those that keep the fruit thereof two hundred thou that dwellest in the gardens the companions hearken for thy voice cause me to hear it make haste my beloved and be thou like to a gazelle or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices Ruth chapter and it came to pass in the days when the judges judged that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the field of Moab he and his wife and his two sons and the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife Naomi and the name of his two sons Malan and Chilean Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah and they came into the field of Moab and continued there and Elimelech Naomi's husband died and she was left and her two sons and they took them wives of the women of Moab the name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth and they dwelt there about ten years and Malan and Chilean died both of them and the woman was left of her two children and of her husband and she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the field of Moab for she had heard in the field of Moab how that Hashem had remembered his people in giving them bread and she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah and Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law go return each of you to her mother's house Hashem deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me Hashem grant you that ye may find rest each of you in the house of her husband then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept and they said unto her nay but we will return with thee unto thy people and Naomi said turn back my daughters why will ye go with me have I yet sons in my womb that they may be your husbands turn back my daughters go your way for I am too old to have a husband if I should say I have hope should I even have an husband tonight and also bear sons would ye tarry for them till they were grown would ye shut yourselves off for them and have no husbands nay my daughters for it grieveth me much for your sakes for the hand of Hashem is gone forth against me and they lifted up their voice and wept again and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law but Ruth cleaved unto her and she said behold thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her God return thou after thy sister-in-law and Ruth said entreat me not to leave thee and to return from following after thee for whither thou goest I will go and where thou lodgest I will lodge thy people shall be my people and thy God my God where thou deest will I die and there will I be buried Hashem do so to me and more also if aught but death part thee and me and when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her she left off speaking unto her so they too went until they came to Bethlehem and it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was astir concerning them and the women said is this Naomi and she said unto them call me not Naomi call me Mara for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me I went out full and Hashem hath brought me back home empty why call ye me Naomi seeing Hashem hath testified against me and the Almighty hath afflicted me so Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites her daughter-in-law with her who returned out of the field of Moab and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of Barley harvest Ruth chapter and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's a mighty man of valor of the family of Elimelech and his name was Boaz and Ruth the Moabites said unto Naomi let me now go to the field and glean among the ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find favor and she said unto her go my daughter and she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers and her hap was to light on the portion of the field belonging unto Boaz who was of the family of Elimelech and behold Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers the Hashem be with you and they answered him the Hashem bless thee then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers whose damsel is this and the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said it is a Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the field of Moab and she said let me glean I pray you and gather after the reapers among the sheaves so she came and hath continued even from the morning until now save that she tarried a little in the house then said Boaz unto Ruth hearest thou not my daughter go not to glean in another field neither pass from hence but abide here fast by my maidens let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap and go thou after them have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee and when thou art athirst go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn then she fell on her face and bowed down to the ground and said unto him why have I found favor in thy sight that thou shouldest take cognizance of me seeing I am a foreigner and Boaz answered and said unto her it hath fully been told me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people that thou knewest not heretofore Hashem recompense thy work and be thy reward complete from Hashem the God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to take refuge then she said let me find favor in thy sight my Hashem for that thou hast comforted me and for that thou hast spoken to the heart of thy handmaid though I be not as one of thy handmaidens and Boaz said unto her at mealtime come hither and eat of the bread and dip thy morsel in the vinegar and she sat beside the reapers and they reached her parched corn and she did eat and was satisfied and left thereof and when she was risen up to glean Boaz commanded his young men saying let her glean even among the sheaves and put her not to shame and also pull out some for her of purpose from the bundles and leave it and let her glean and rebuke her not so she gleaned in the field until even and she beat out that which she had gleaned and it was about an ephah of barley and she took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned and she brought forth and gave to her that which she had left after. 
she was satisfied and her mother-in-law said unto her where hast thou gleaned today and where wroughtest thou blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee and she told her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said the man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz and Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law blessed be he of Hashem who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead and Naomi said unto her the man is nigh of kin unto us one of our near kinsmen and Ruth the Moabites said yea he said unto me thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest and Naomi said unto Ruth her daughter-in-law it is good my daughter that thou go out with his maidens and that thou be not met in any other field so she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and she dwelt with her mother-in-law Ruth chapter and Naomi her mother-in-law said unto her my daughter shall I not seek rest for thee that it may be well with thee and now is there not Boaz our kinsman with whose maidens thou wast behold he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the threshing floor but make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking and it shall be when he leeth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down and he will tell thee what thou shalt do and she said unto her all that thou sayest unto me I will do and she went down unto the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her and when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down and it came to pass at midnight that the man was startled and turned himself and behold a woman lay at his feet and he said who art thou and she answered I am Ruth thine handmaid spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid for thou art a near kinsman and he said blessed be thou of Hashem my daughter thou hast shown more kindness in the end than at the beginning inasmuch as thou didst not follow the young men whether poor or rich and now my daughter fear not I will do to thee all that thou sayest for all the men in the gate of my people do know that thou art a virtuous woman and now it is true that I am a near kinsman howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I tarry this night and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman well let him do the kinsman's part but if he be not willing to do the part of a kinsman to thee then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee as Hashem liveth lie down until the morning and she lay at his feet until the morning and she rose up before one could discern another for he said let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor and he said bring the mantle that is upon thee and hold it and she held it and he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her and he went into the city and when she came to her mother-in-law she said who art thou my daughter and she told her all that the man had done to her and she said these six measures of barley gave he me for he said to me go not empty unto thy mother-in-law then said she sit still my daughter until thou know how the matter will fall for the man will not rest until he have finished the thing this day Ruth chapter now Boaz went up to the gate and sat him down there and behold the near kinsman of whom Boaz spoke came by unto whom he said ho such a one turn aside sit down here and he turned aside and sat down and he took ten men of the elders of the city and said sit ye down here and they sat down and he said unto the near kinsman Naomi that is come back out of the field of Moab selleth the parcel of land which was our brother Elimelech's and I thought to disclose it unto thee saying by it before them that sit here and before the elders of my people if thou wilt redeem it redeem it but if it will not be redeemed then tell me that I may know for there is none to redeem it beside thee and I am after thee and he said I will redeem it then said Boaz what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi hast thou also bought of Ruth the Moabites the wife of the dead to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance and the near kinsman said I cannot redeem it for myself lest I mar mine own inheritance take thou my right of redemption on thee for I cannot redeem it now this was the custom in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning exchanging to confirm all things a man drew off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor and this was the attestation in Israel so the near kinsman said unto Boaz buy it for thyself and he drew off his shoe and Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilean's and Malan's of the hand of Naomi moreover Ruth the Moabites the wife of Malan have I acquired to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place ye are witnesses this day and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said we are witnesses Hashem make the woman that is come into thy house like Rachel and like Leah which too did build the house of Israel and do thou worthily in Ephrath and be famous in Bethlehem and let thy house be like the house of Perez whom Tamar bore unto Judah of the seed which Hashem shall give thee of this young woman so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife and he went in unto her and Hashem gave her conception and she bore a son and they Women said unto Naomi blessed be Hashem who hath not left thee this day without a near kinsman and let his name be famous in Israel and he shall be unto thee a restorer of life and a nourisher of thine old age for thy daughter-in-law who loveth thee who is better to thee than seven sons hath borne him and Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it and the women her neighbors gave it a name saying there is a son born to Naomi and they called his name Obed. 
He is the father of Jesse the father of David now these are the generations of Purus Purus begot Hezron and Hezron begot Ram and Ram begot Ammonadab and Ammonadab begot Nashon and Nashon begot Salmon and Salmon begot Boaz and Boaz begot Obed and Obed begot Jesse and Jesse begot David Lamentations chapter How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people how is she become as a widow she that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces how is she become? Tributary she weepeth sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks she hath none to comfort her among all her lovers all her friends have dealt treacherously with her they are become her enemies Judah is gone into exile because of affliction and because of great servitude she dwelleth among the nations she findeth no rest all her pursuers overtook her within the straits the ways of Zion do mourn because none come to the solemn assembly all her gates are desolate her priests sigh her. Virgins are afflicted and she herself is in bitterness her adversaries are become the head her enemies are at ease for Hashem hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions her young children are gone into captivity before the adversary and gone is from the daughter of Zion all her splendor her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture and they are gone without strength before the pursuer Jerusalem remembereth in the days of her affliction and of her anguish all her treasures that she had from the days of old now that her people fall by the hand of the adversary and none doth help her the adversaries have seen her they have mocked at her desolations Jerusalem hath grievously sinned therefore she is become as one unclean all that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness she herself also sigh it and turneth backward her filthiness was in her skirts she was not mindful of her and therefore is she come down wonderfully she hath no Comforter behold O Hashem my affliction for the enemy hath magnified himself the adversary hath spread out his hand upon all her treasures for she hath seen that the heathen are entered into her sanctuary concerning whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation all her people sigh they seek bread they have given their pleasant things for food to refresh the soul see O Hashem and behold how abject I am become let it not come unto you all ye that pass by. Behold and see if there be any pain like unto my pain which is done unto me wherewith Hashem hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger from on high hath he sent fire into my bones and it prevaileth against them he hath spread a net for my feet he hath turned me back he hath made me desolate and faint all the day the yoke of my transgressions is impressed by his hand they are knit together they are come up upon my neck he hath made my strength to fail the Lord hath delivered me into their hands against whom I am not able to stand the Lord hath set at not all my mighty men in the midst of me he hath called a solemn assembly against me to crush my young men the Lord hath trodden as in a winepress the virgin the daughter of Judah for these things I weep mine I mine I runneth down with water because the comforter is far from me even he that should refresh my soul my children are desolate because the enemy hath prevailed Zion spreadeth forth her hands there is None to comfort her Hashem hath commanded concerning Jacob that they that are round about him should be his adversaries Jerusalem is among them as one unclean the Hashem is righteous for I have rebelled against his word here I pray you all ye peoples and behold my pain my virgins and my young men are gone into captivity I called for my lovers but they deceived me my priests and mine elders perished in the city while they sought them food to refresh their souls behold O Hashem for I am in. Distress mine inwards burn my heart is turned within me for I have grievously rebelled abroad the sword bereaveth at home there is the like of death they have heard that I sigh there is none to comfort me all mine enemies have heard of my trouble and are glad for thou hast done it thou wilt bring the day that thou hast proclaimed and they shall be like unto me let all their wickedness come before thee and do unto them as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions for my sighs are many. And my heart is faint lamentations chapter how hath the Lord covered with a cloud the daughter of Zion in his anger he hath cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and hath not remembered his footstool in the day of his anger the Lord hath swallowed up unsparingly all the habitations of Jacob he hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah he hath brought them down to the ground he hath profaned the kingdom and the princes thereof he hath. Cut off in fierce anger all the horn of Israel he hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy and he hath burned in Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about he hath bent his bow like an enemy standing with his right hand as an adversary and hath slain all that were pleasant to the eye in the tent of the daughter of Zion he hath poured out his fury like fire the Lord is become as an enemy he hath swallowed up Israel he hath swallowed up all her palaces he hath destroyed his strongholds and he hath multiplied in the daughter of Judah mourning and moaning and he hath stripped his tabernacle as if it were a garden he hath destroyed his place of assembly Hashem hath caused to be forgotten in Zion appointed season and Sabbath and hath rejected in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest the Lord hath cast off his altar he hath abhorred his sanctuary he hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces they have made a noise in the house of Hashem as in the day of a solemn assembly Hashem hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion he hath stretched out the line he hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying but he hath made the rampart and wall to mourn they languish together her gates are sunk into the ground he hath destroyed and broken her bars her king and her princes are among the nations instruction is no more yet her prophets find no vision from Hashem they sit upon the ground and keep silence.
The elders of the daughter of Zion they have cast up dust upon their heads they have girded themselves with sackcloth the virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground mine eyes do fail with tears mine inwards burn my liver is poured upon the earth for the breach of the daughter of my people because the young children and the suckling swoon in the broad places of the city they say to their mothers where is corn and wine when they swoon as the wounded in the broad places of the city when their soul is poured out into their mother's bosom what shall I take to witness for thee what shall I liken to thee O daughter of Jerusalem what shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee O virgin daughter of Zion for thy breach is great like the sea who can heal thee thy prophets have seen visions for thee of vanity and delusion and they have not uncovered thine iniquity to bring back thy captivity but have prophesied for thee burdens of vanity and seduction all that pass by clap their hands at thee they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem is this the city that men called the perfection of beauty the joy of the whole earth all thine enemies have opened their mouth wide against thee they hiss and gnash the teeth they say we have swallowed her up certainly this is the day that we looked for we have found we have seen it Hashem hath done that which he devised he hath performed his word that he commanded in the days of old he hath thrown down unsparingly and he hath caused the enemy to rejoice over thee he hath exalted the horn of thine adversaries their heart cried unto the Lord O wall of the daughter of Zion let tears run down like a river day and night give thyself no respite let not the apple of thine eye cease arise cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches pour out thy heart like water before the face of the Lord lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger at the head of every street see O Hashem and consider to whom thou hast done thus shall the women eat their fruit the children that are dandled in the hands shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord the youth and the old man lie on the ground in the streets my virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger thou hast slaughtered unsparingly thou hast called as in the day of a solemn assembly my terrors on every side and there was none in the day of Hashem's anger that escaped or remained those that I have dandled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed lamentations chapter I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath he hath led me and caused me to walk in darkness and not in light surely against me he turneth his hand again and again all the day my flesh and my skin hath he worn out he hath broken my bones he hath builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail he hath made me to dwell in dark places as those that have been long dead he hath hedged me about that I cannot go forth he hath made my chain heavy yea when I cry and call for help he shutteth out my prayer he hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone he hath made my paths crooked he is unto me as a bear lying in wait as a lion in secret places he hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces he hath made me desolate he hath bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow he hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins I am become a derision to all my people and their song all the day he hath filled me with bitterness he hath sated me with wormwood he hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones he hath made me to wallow in ashes and my soul is removed far off from peace I forgot prosperity and I said my strength is perished and mine expectation from Hashem remember mine affliction and mine anguish the wormwood and the gall my soul hath them still in remembrance and is bowed down within me this I recall to my mind therefore have I hope surely Hashem's mercies are not consumed surely his compassions fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness the Hashem is my portion saith my soul therefore will I hope in him Hashem is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him it is good that a man should quietly wait for the salvation of Hashem it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth let him sit alone and keep silence because he hath laid it upon him let him put his mouth in the dust if so be there may be hope let him give his cheek to him that smite him let him be filled full with reproach for the Lord will not cast off forever for though he cause grief yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies for he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men to crush underfoot all the prisoners of the earth to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High to subvert a man in his cause the Lord approveth not who is he that saith and it cometh to pass when the Lord commandeth it not out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good wherefore doth a living man complain a strong man because of his sins let us search and try our ways and return to Hashem let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens we have transgressed and have rebelled thou hast not pardoned thou hast covered with anger and pursued us thou hast slain unsparingly thou hast covered thyself with a cloud so that no prayer can pass through thou hast made us as the offscoring and refuse in the midst of the peoples all our enemies have opened their mouth wide against us terror and the pit are come upon us desolation and destruction mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the breach of the daughter of my people mine eye is poured out and seizeth not Without any intermission till Hashem look forth and behold from heaven mine I affected my soul because of all the daughters of my city they have chased me sore like a bird that are mine enemies without cause they have cut off my life in the dungeon and have cast stones upon me waters flowed over my head I said I am cut off I called upon thy name O Hashem out of the lowest dungeon thou heardest my voice hide not thine ear at my sighing at my cry thou drewest near in the day. That I called upon thee thou saidst fear not O Lord thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul thou hast redeemed my life O Hashem thou hast seen my wrong judge thou my cause thou hast seen all their vengeance and all their devices against me thou hast heard their taunt O Hashem and all their devices against me the lips of those that rose up against me and their muttering against me all the day behold thou their sitting down and their rising up I am their song thou wilt render unto. 
them a recompense O Hashem according to the work of their hands thou wilt give them hardness of heart thy curse unto them thou wilt pursue them in anger and destroy them from under the heavens of Hashem Lamentations chapter how is the gold become dim how is the most fine gold changed the hallowed stones are poured out at the head of every street the precious sons of Zion comparable to fine gold how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers the work of the hands of the potter even the jackals draw out the breast they give suck to their young ones the daughter of my people is become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness the tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst the young children ask bread and none break that unto them they that did feed on dainties are desolate in the streets they that were brought up in scarlet embrace dung hills for the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the sin of sodom that was overthrown as in a moment and no hands fell upon her her princes were purer than snow they were whiter than milk they were more ruddy in body than rubies their polishing was as of sapphire their visage is blacker than a coal they are not known in the streets their skin is shriveled upon their bones it is withered it is become like a stick they that are slain with the sword are better than they that are slain with hunger for these pine away stricken through for want of the fruits of the field the hands of women full of compassion have sodden their own children they were their food in the destruction of the daughter of my people Hashem hath accomplished his fury he hath poured out his fierce anger and he hath kindled a fire in Zion which hath devoured the foundations thereof the kings of the earth believed not neither all the inhabitants of the world that the adversary and the enemy would enter into the gates of Jerusalem it is because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her they wander as blind men in the streets they are polluted with blood so that men cannot touch their garments depart yet unclean men cried unto them depart depart touch not yet they fled away and wandered men said among the nations they shall no more sojourn here the anger of Hashem hath divided them he will no more regard them they respected not the persons of the priests they were not gracious unto the elders as for us our eyes do yet fail for our vain help in our watching we have watched for a nation that could not save they hunt our steps that we cannot go in our broad places our end is near our days are fulfilled for our end is come our pursuers were swifter than the eagles of the heaven they chased us upon the mountains they lay in wait for us in the wilderness the breath of our nostrils the anointed of Hashem was taken in their pits of whom we said under his shadow we shall live among. The nations rejoice and be glad O daughter of Edom that dwellest in the land of us the cup shall pass over unto thee also thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished O daughter of Zion he will no more carry thee away into captivity he will punish thine iniquity O daughter of Edom he will uncover thy sins lamentations chapter remember O Hashem what is come upon us behold and see our reproach our inheritance is turned unto. Strangers are houses unto aliens we are become orphans and fatherless our mothers are as widows we have drunk our water for money our wood cometh to us for price to our very necks we are pursued we labor and have no rest we have given the hand to Egypt and to Assyria to have bread enough our fathers have sinned and are not and we have borne their iniquities servants rule over us there is none to deliver us out of their hand we get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness our skin is hot like an oven because of the burning heat of famine they have ravished the women in Zion the maidens in the cities of Judah princes are hanged up by their hand the faces of elders are not honored the young men have borne the mill and the children have stumbled under the wood the elders have ceased from the gate the young men from their music the joy of our heart is ceased our dance is turned into mourning the crown is fallen from our head woe unto us for we have sinned for this our heart is faint for these things our eyes are dim for the mountain of Zion which is desolate the foxes walk upon it thou O Hashem art enthroned forever thy throne is from generation to generation wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time turn thou us unto thee O Hashem and we shall be turned renew our days as of old thou canst not have utterly rejected us and be exceeding wrath against us Ecclesiastes. Chapter The words of the Kahilath the son of David king in Jerusalem Vanity of vanities saith Kahilath vanity of vanities all is vanity what profit hath man of all his labor wherein he laboureth under the sun one generation passeth away and another generation cometh and the earth abideth forever the sun also ariseth and the sun goeth down and hasteth to his place where he ariseth the wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north it turneth about continually in its circuit and the wind returneth again to its circuits all the rivers run into the sea yet the sea is not full unto the place whither the rivers go thither they go again all things toil to weariness man cannot utter it the eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing that which hath been is that which shall be and that which hath been done is that which shall be done and there is nothing new under the sun is there a thing whereof it is said see this is new it hath been already in the ages which were before us there is no remembrance of them of former times neither shall there be any remembrance of them of latter times that are to come among those that shall come after I Kahilath have been king over Israel in Jerusalem and I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven it is a sore task that God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith I have seen all the works that are done under the sun and behold all is vanity and a striving after wind that which is crooked cannot be made straight and that which is wanting cannot be numbered I spoke with my own heart saying lo I have gotten great wisdom more also than all that were before me over Jerusalem yea my heart hath had great experience of wisdom and knowledge and I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly I perceived that this also was a striving after wind for in much wisdom is much 
Vexation and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow chapter I said in my heart come now I will try thee with mirth and enjoy pleasure and behold this also was vanity I said of laughter it is mad and of mirth what doth it accomplish I searched in my heart how to pamper my flesh with wine and my heart conducting itself with wisdom how yet to lay hold on folly till I might see which it was best for the sons of men that they should do under the heaven the few days of their life I made me great works I builded me houses I planted me vineyards I made me gardens and parks and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit I made me pools of water to water there from the wood springing up with trees I acquired men servants and maid servants and had servants born in my house also I had great possessions of herds and flocks above all that were before me in Jerusalem I gathered me also silver and gold and treasure such as kings and the provinces have as there own I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men women very many so I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem also my wisdom stood me instead and whatsoever mine eyes desired I kept not from them I withheld not my heart from any joy for my heart had joy of all my labor and this was my portion from all my labor then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do and behold all was vanity and a striving after wind and there was no profit under the sun and I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly for what can the man do that cometh after the king even that which hath been already done then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness the wise man his eyes are in his head but the fool walketh in darkness and I also perceived that one event happeneth to them all then said I in my heart as it happeneth to the fool so will it happen even to me and why was I then more wise than I said in my heart that this also is vanity for of the wise man even as of the fool there is no remembrance for ever seeing that in the days to come all will long ago have been forgotten and how must the wise man die even as the fool so I hated life because the work that is wrought under the sun was grievous unto me for all is vanity and a striving after wind and I hated all my labor wherein I labored under the sun seeing that I must leave it unto the man that shall be after me and who know it whether he will be a wise man or a fool yet will he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored and wherein I have shown myself wise under the sun this also is vanity therefore I turned about to cause my heart to despair concerning all the labor wherein I had labored under the sun for there is a man whose labor is with wisdom and with knowledge and with skill yet to a man that hath not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion this also is vanity and a great evil for what hath a man of all his labor and of the striving of his heart wherein he laboreth under the sun for all his days are pains and his occupation vexation yet even in the night his heart taketh not rest this also is vanity there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and make his soul enjoy pleasure for his labor this also I saw that it is from the hand of God for who will eat or who will enjoy if not. I for to the man that is good in his sight he giveth wisdom and knowledge and joy but to the sinner he giveth the task to gather and to heap up that he may leave to him that is good in the sight of God this also is vanity and a striving after wind chapter to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to seek and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away a time to rend and a time to sow a time to keep silence and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace what profit hath he that worketh in that he laboreth I have seen the task which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith he hath made everything beautiful in its time also he hath set the world in their heart yet so that man cannot find out the work that God hath done from the beginning even to the end I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to get pleasure so long as they live but also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy pleasure for all his labor is the gift of God I know that whatsoever God doth it shall be forever nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it and God hath so made it that men should fear before him that which is hath been long ago and that which is to be hath already been and God seek that which is pursued and moreover I saw under the sun in the place of justice that wickedness was there and in the place of righteousness that wickedness was there I said in my heart the righteous and the wicked God will judge for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work I said in my heart it is because of the sons of men that God may sift them and that they may see that they themselves are but as beasts for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts even one thing befalleth them as the one dieth so dieth the other yea they have all one breath so that man hath no preeminence above a beast for all is vanity all go unto one place all are of the dust and all return to dust who knoweth the spirit of man whether it goeth upward and the spirit of the beast whether it goeth downward to the earth wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his works for that is his portion for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him chapter but I returned and considered all the oppress ions that are done under the sun and behold the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter and on the side of their oppressors there was power but they had 
No comforter wherefore I praise the dead that are already dead more than the living that are yet alive but better than they both is he that hath not yet been who hath not seen the evil work that is done under the sun again I considered all labor and all excelling in work that it is a man's rivalry with his neighbor this also is vanity and a striving after when the fool foldeth his hands together and eateth his own flesh better is a handful of quietness than both the hands full of labor and striving after when then I returned and saw vanity under the sun there is one that is alone and he hath not a second yet he hath neither son nor brother yet is there no end of all his labor neither is his eye satisfied with riches for whom then do I labor and bereave my soul of pleasure this also is vanity yet it is a grievous business two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth and hath not another to lift him up again if two lie together then they have warmth but how can one be warm alone and if a man prevail against him that is alone two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly broken better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who knoweth not how to receive admonition any more for out of prison he came forth to be king although in his kingdom he was born poor I saw all the living that walk under the sun that they were with the child the second that was to stand up in his stead there was no end of all the people even of all them whom he did lead yet they that come after shall not rejoice in him surely this also is vanity and a striving after wind guard thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be ready to hearken it is better than when fools give sacrifices for they know not that they do evil chapter be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart be hasty to utter a word before God for God is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words be few for a dream cometh through a multitude of business and a fool's voice through a multitude of words when thou vowest a vow unto God defer not to pay it for he hath no pleasure in fools pay that which thou vowest better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay suffer not thy mouth to bring thy flesh into guilt neither say thou before the messenger that it was an Error wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands for through the multitude of dreams and vanities there are also many words but fear thou God if thou cease the oppression of the poor and the violent perverting of justice and righteousness in the state marvel not at the matter for one higher than the high watcheth and there are higher than they but the prophet of a land every way is a king that maketh himself servant to the field he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver nor he that loveth abundance with increase this also is vanity when goods increase they are increased that eat them and what advantage is there to the owner thereof saving the beholding of them with his eyes sweet is the sleep of a laboring man whether he eat little or much but the satiety of the rich will not suffer him to sleep there is a grievous evil which I have seen under the sun namely riches kept by the owner thereof to his hurt and those Riches perish by evil adventure and if he hath begotten a son there is nothing in his hand as he came forth of his mother's womb naked shall he go back as he came and shall take nothing for his labor which he may carry away in his hand and this also is a grievous evil that in all points as he came so shall he go and what profit hath he that he laboureth for the wind all his days also he eateth in darkness and he hath much vexation and sickness and wrath behold that which I have seen it is good yet it is comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy pleasure for all his labor wherein he laboureth under the sun all the days of his life which God hath given him for this is his portion every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth and hath given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor this is the gift of God for let him remember the days of his life that they are not many for God answereth him in the joy of his heart. Chapter There is an evil which I have seen under the sun and it is heavy upon men a man to whom God giveth riches wealth and honor so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof but a stranger eat that this is vanity and it is an evil disease if a man beget a hundred children and live many years so that the days of his years are many but his soul have not enough of good and moreover he have no burial I say that an untimely birth is better than he for it cometh in vanity and departeth in darkness and the name thereof is covered with darkness moreover it hath not seen the sun nor known it this hath gratification rather than the other yet though he live a thousand years twice told and enjoy no good do not all go to one place all the labor of man is for his mouth and yet the appetite is not filled for what advantage hath the wise more than the fool or the poor man that hath understanding in walking before the living better is the seeing of the eyes than the wandering of the desire this also is vanity and a striving after wind whatsoever cometh into being the name thereof was given long ago and it is foreknown what man is neither can he contend with him that is mightier than he seeing there are many words that increase vanity what is man the better for who knoweth what is good for man in his life all the days of his vain life which he spendeth as a shadow for who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun chapter a good name is better than precious oil and the day of death than the day of one's birth it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart vexation is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance the heart may be gladdened the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools for as the crackling of thorns under a pot so is the laughter of the fool this also is vanity surely oppression turneth a wise man into a fool and a gift destroyeth the understanding better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry for anger resteth in the bosom of fools say not thou how was it that the former 
days were better than these for it is not out of wisdom that thou inquirest concerning this wisdom is good with an inheritance yea profit to them that see the sun for wisdom is a defense even as money is a defense but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserveth the life of him that hath it consider the work of God for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked in the day of prosperity be joyful and in the day of adversity consider God hath made even the one as well as the other to the end that man should find nothing after him all things have I seen in the days of my vanity there is a righteous man that perisheth in his righteousness and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his evil doing be not righteous overmuch neither make thyself overwise why shouldest thou destroy thyself be not overmuch wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time it is good that thou shouldest take hold of the one ye also from the other withdraw not thy hand for he that feareth God shall discharge himself of them all wisdom is a stronghold to the wise man more than ten rulers that are in a city for there is not a righteous man upon earth that doth good and sinneth not also take not heed unto all words that are spoken lest thou hear thy servant curse thee for oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others all this have I tried by wisdom I said I will get wisdom but it was far from me that which is is far off and exceeding deep who can find it out I turned about and applied my heart to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and the reason of things and to know wickedness to be folly and foolishness to be madness and I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands who so pleaseth God shall escape from her but the sinner shall be taken by her behold this have I found saith Kahilath adding one thing to another to find out the account which yet my soul sought but I found not one man among a thousand have I found but a woman among all those have I not found behold this only have I found that God made man upright but they have sought out many inventions chapter who is as the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine and the boldness of his face is changed I counsel thee keep the king's command and that in regard of the oath of God be not hasty to go out of his presence stand not in an evil thing for he doth whatsoever pleaseth him for as much as the king's word hath power and who may say unto him what doest thou whoso keepeth the commandment shall know no evil thing and a wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment for to every matter there is a time and judgment for the evil of man is great upon him for he knoweth not that which shall be for even when it cometh to pass who shall declare it unto him there is. No man that hath power over the wind to retain the wind neither hath he power over the day of death and there is no discharge in war neither shall wickedness deliver him that is given to it all this have I seen even applied my heart thereto whatever the work that is done under the sun what time one man had power over another to his hurt and so I saw the wicked buried and they entered into their rest but they that had done right went away from the holy place and were forgotten in the city. This also is vanity because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil because a sinner doth evil a hundred times and prolongeth his days though yet I know that it shall be well with them that fear God that fear before him but it shall not be well with the wicked neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow because he feareth not before God there is a vanity which is done upon the earth that there are righteous men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked again there are wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous I said that this also is vanity so I commended mirth that a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry and that this should accompany him in his labor all the days of his life which God hath given him under the sun when I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done upon the earth for neither day nor night do men see sleep with their eyes then I beheld all the work of God that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun because though a man labor to seek it out yet he shall not find it yet further though a wise man think to know it yet shall he not be able to find it chapter for all this I laid to my heart even to make clear all this that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God whether it be love or Hatred man knoweth it not all is before them all things come alike to all there is one event to the righteous and to the wicked to the good and to the clean and to the unclean to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not as is the good so is the sinner and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath this is an evil in all that is done under the sun that there is one event unto all yea also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that they go to the dead for to him that is joined to all the living there is hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion for the living know that they shall die but the dead know not anything neither have they any more a reward for the memory of them is forgotten as well their love as their hatred and their envy is long ago perished neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun go thy way eat thy bread with joy and drink thy wine. With a merry heart for God hath already accepted thy works let thy garments be always white and let thy head lack no oil enjoy life with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity for that is thy portion in life and in thy labor wherein thou laborest under the sun whatsoever thy hand attaineth to do by thy strength that do for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave whither. Thou goest I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill but time and chance happeneth to them all for man also knoweth not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare even so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them this also have I seen as wisdom. 
under the sun and it seemed great unto me there was a little city and few men within it and there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it now there was found in it a man poor and wise and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man then said I wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard the words of the wise spoken in quiet are more acceptable then. The cry of a ruler among fools wisdom is better than weapons of war but one sinner destroyeth much good chapter dead flies make the ointment of the perfumer fetid and putrid so doth a little folly outweigh wisdom and honor a wise man's understanding is at his right hand but a fool's understanding at his left yea also when a fool walketh by the way his understanding faileth him and he saith to every one that he is a fool if the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee leave not thy place for gentleness allayeth great offenses there is an evil which I have seen under the sun like an error which proceedeth from a ruler folly is set on great heights and the rich sit in low place I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it and whoso break through a fence a serpent shall bite him whoso quarrieth stones shall be hurt therewith and he that cleaveth wood is endangered thereby if the iron be blunt and one do not wet the edge then must he put to more strength but wisdom is profitable to direct if the serpent bite before it is charmed then the charmer hath no advantage the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself the beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness and the end of his talk is grievous madness a fool also multiplieth words yet man knoweth not what shall be and that which shall be after him who can tell him the labor of fools wearieth every one of them for he knoweth not how to go to the city woe to thee O land when thy king is a boy and thy princes feast in the morning happy art thou O land when thy king is a free man and thy princes eat in due season in strength and not in drunkenness by slothfulness the rafters sink in and through idleness of the hands the house leak they feast is made for laughter and wine make glad the life and money answereth all things curse not the king no not. In thy thought and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber for a bird of the air shall carry the voice and that which hath wings shall tell the matter chapter cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days divide a portion into seven yet even into eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth and if a tree fall in the south or in the north in the place where the tree falleth there. Shall it be he that observeth the wind shall not sow and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap as thou knowest not what is the way of the wind nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child even so thou knowest not the work of God who doth all things in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thy hand for thou knowest not which shall prosper whether this or that or whether they both shall be alike good and the light is sweet and a pleasant thing. It is for the eyes to behold the sun for if a man live many years let him rejoice in them all and remember the days of darkness for they shall be many all that cometh is vanity rejoice O young man in thy youth and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth and walk in the ways of thy heart and in the sight of thine eyes but know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment therefore remove vexation from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood. And youth are vanity chapter remember then thy creator in the days of thy youth before the evil days come and the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out shall be darkened in the windows and the doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low and one shall start up at the voice of a bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low also when they shall be afraid of that which is high and terrors shall be in the way and the almond tree shall blossom and the grasshopper shall drag itself along and the caper berry shall fail because man goeth to his long home and the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped asunder and the golden bowl is shattered and the pitcher is broken at the fountain and the will falleth shattered into the pit and the dust returneth to the earth as it was and the spirit returneth unto God who gave it vanity of vanity saith Kahilath all is vanity and besides that Kahilath was wise he also taught the people knowledge yet he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs Kahilath sought to find out words of delight and that which was written uprightly even words of truth the words of the wise are as goads and as nails well fastened are those that are composed in collections they are given from one shepherd and furthermore my son be admonished of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh the end of the matter all having been heard fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole man for God shall bring every work into the judgment concerning every hidden thing whether it be good or whether it be evil Esther chapter now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus this is Ahasuerus who reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom which was in Shushan the castle in the third year of his reign he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants the army of Persia and Media the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the Honor of his excellent majesty many days even a hundred and fourscore days and when these days were fulfilled the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the castle both great and small seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace there were hangings of white fine cotton and blue bordered with cords of fine linen and purple upon silver rods and pillars of marble the couches were of gold and silver upon a pavement of green and white and shell and 
onyx marble and they gave them drink in vessels of gold the vessels being diverse one from another and royal wine in abundance according to the bounty of the king and the drinking was according to the law none did compel for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to king Ahasuerus on the seventh day when the heart of the king was Mary with wine he commanded Mehuman Bezitha Harbana Bigtha and Abigtha Zether and Carcass the seven chamberlains that ministered in the presence of Ahasuerus the king to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the peoples and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on but the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by the chamberlains therefore was the king very wroth and his anger burned in him then the king said to the wise men who knew the times for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment and the next unto him was Kars Hina Shether Admetha Tars Hishmirs Marcina and Memlukan the seven princes of Persia and Media who saw the king's face and sat the first in the kingdom what shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law for as much as she hath not done the bidding of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains and Memlukan answered before the king and the princes Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only but also to all the princes and to all the peoples that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus for this deed of the queen will come abroad unto all women to make their husbands contemptible in their eyes when it will be said the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him but she came not and this day will the princesses of Persia and Media who have heard of the deed of the queen say the like unto all the king's princes so will there arise enough contempt and wrath if it please the king let there go forth a royal commandment from him and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered that Vashti come no more before king Ahasuerus and that the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she and when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his kingdom great though it be all the wives will give to their husbands honor both to great end. Small and the word pleased the king and the princes and the king did according to the word of Memlukan for he sent letters into all the king's provinces into every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language that every man should bear rule in his own house and speak according to the language of his people Esther chapter after these things when the wrath of king Ahasuerus was assuaged he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her then said the king's servants that ministered unto him let there be sought for the king young virgins fair to look on and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan the castle to the house of the women unto the custody of Haggai the king's chamberlain keeper of the women and let their ointments be given them and let the maiden that pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king and he did so there was a certain Jew in Shushan the castle whose name was Mordecai the son of Jahir the son of Shimei the son of Kish a Benjamite who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives that had been carried away with Jeconiah king of Judah whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away and he brought up Hadassah that is Esther his uncle's daughter for she had neither father nor mother and the maiden was of beautiful form and fair to look on and when her father and mother were dead Mordecai took her for his own daughter so it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was published and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the castle to the custody of Haggai that Esther was taken into the king's house to the custody of Haggai keeper of the women and the maiden pleased him and she obtained kindness of him and he speedily gave her her ointments with her portions and the seven maidens who were meet to be given her out of the king's house and he advanced her and her maidens to the best place in the house of the women Esther had not made known her people nor her kindred for Mordecai had charged her that she should not tell it and Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what would become of her now when the turn of every maiden was come to go into King Ahasuerus after that it had been done to her according to the law for the Women twelve months for so were the days of their anointing accomplished to with six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other ointments of the women when then the maiden came unto the king whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house in the evening she went and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women to the custody of Shushgaz the king's chamberlain who kept the concubines she came in unto the king no more except the king delighted in her and she were called by name now when the turn of Esther the daughter of Abihail the uncle of Mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go in unto the king she required nothing but what Haggai the king's chamberlain the keeper of the women appointed and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her so Esther was taken unto king Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month which is the month Tabath in the seventh year of his reign and the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants even Esther's feast and he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the bounty of the king and when the virgins were gathered together the second time and Mordecai sat in the king's gate Esther had not yet made known her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him in those days while Mordecai sat in the king's gate two of the king's chamberlains Bigthan and Teresh of those that kept the door were wroth and sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus and the thing became known to Mordecai who told it unto Esther the queen and Esther told the king. 
thereof in Mordecai's name and when inquisition was made of the matter and it was found to be so they were both hanged on a tree and it was written in the book of the chronicles before the king Esther chapter after these things did king Ahasuerus promote Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him and all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed down and prostrate themselves before Haman for the king had so commanded concerning him but Mordecai bowed not down nor prostrate himself before him then the king's servants that were in the king's gate said unto Mordecai why transgressest thou the king's commandment now it came to pass when they spoke daily unto him and he hearkened not unto them that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's words would stand for he had told them that he was a Jew and when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not down nor prostrate himself before him then was Haman full of wrath but it seemed contemptible in his eyes to lay hands on Mordecai alone for they had made known to him the people of Mordecai wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus even the people of Mordecai in the first month which is the month Nisan in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus they cast per that is the lot before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month which is the month Adar and Haman said unto King Ahasuerus there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of thy kingdom and their laws are diverse from those of every people neither keep they the king's laws therefore it profiteth not the king to suffer them if it please the king let it be written that they be destroyed and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those that have the charge of the king's business to bring it into the king's treasuries and the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite the Jews enemy and the king said unto Haman the silver is given to thee the people also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee then were the king's scribes called in the first month on the thirteenth day thereof and there was written according to all that Haman commanded unto the king's satraps and to the governors that were over every province and to the princes of every people to every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and it was sealed with the king's ring and letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy to slay and to cause to perish all Jews both young and old little children and women in one day even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month which is the month Adar and to take the spoil of them for a prey the copy of the writing to be given out for a decree in every province was to be published unto all peoples that they should be ready against that day the posts went forth in haste by the king's commandment and the decree was given out in Shushan the castle and the king and Haman sat down to drink but the city of Shushan was perplexed Esther chapter now when Mordecai knew all that was done Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and he came even before the king's gate for none might enter within the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes and Esther's maidens and her chamberlains came and told it her and the queen was exceedingly pained and she sent Ryman to clothe Mordecai and to take his sackcloth from off him but he accepted it not then called Esther for had hatch one of the king's chamberlains whom he had appointed to attend upon her and charged him to go to Mordecai to know what this was and why it was so had hatch went forth to Mordecai unto the broad place of the city which was before the king's gate and Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and the exact sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given out in Shushan to destroy them to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make request before him for her people and Hadhach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai then Esther spoke unto Hadhach and gave him a message unto Mordecai all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever whether man or woman shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called there is one law for him that he be put to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live but I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days and they told to Mordecai Esther's words then Mordecai bade them to return answer unto Esther think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time then will relief and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place but thou and thy father's house will perish and who know it whether thou art not come to royal estate for such a time as this then Esther bade them return answer unto Mordecai go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days night or day I also and my maidens will fast in like manner and so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law and if I perish I perish so Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him Esther chapter now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the entrance of the house and it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter then said the king unto her what wilt thou queen Esther for whatever thy request even to the half of the kingdom it shall be given thee and Esther said if it seem good unto the king let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him then the king said cause Haman to make haste that it may be done as Esther hath said so the king 
And Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared and the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine whatever thy petition it shall be granted thee and whatever thy request even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed then answered Esther and said my petition and my request is if I have found favor in the sight of the king and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them. And I will do tomorrow as the king hath said then went Haman forth that day joyful and glad of heart but when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate that he stood not up nor moved for him Haman was filled with wrath against Mordecai nevertheless Haman refrained himself and went home and he sent and fetched his friends and Zeresh his wife and Haman recounted unto them the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and everything as to how the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king Haman said moreover ye Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself and tomorrow also am I invited by her together with the king yet all this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high and in the morning speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet and the thing pleased Haman and he caused the gallows to be made Esther chapter on that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king and it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh two of the king's chamberlains of those that kept the door who had sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said what honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this then said the king's servants that ministered unto him there is nothing done for him and the king said who is in the court now Haman was come into the outer court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him and the king's servants said unto him behold Haman standeth in the court and the king said let him come in so Haman came in and the king said unto him what shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor now Haman said in his heart whom would the king delight to honor besides myself and Haman said unto the king for the man whom the king delighteth to honor let royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear and the horse that the king rideth upon and on whose head a crown royal is set and let the apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes that they may array the man there with whom the king delighteth to honor and cause him to ride on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor then the king said to Haman make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said and do even so to Mordecai the Jew that sitteth at the king's gate let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed. Mordecai and caused him to ride through the street of the city and proclaimed before him thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor and Mordecai returned to the king's gate but Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered and Haman recounted unto Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him if Mordecai before whom thou hast begun to fall be of the seed of the Jews. Thou shalt not prevail against him but shalt surely fall before him while they were yet talking with him came the king's chamberlains and hastened to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared Esther chapter so the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen and the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine whatever thy petition queen Esther it shall be granted thee and whatever thy request even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed then Esther the queen answered and said if I have found favor in thy sight O king and if it please the king let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request for we are sold I and my people to be destroyed to be slain and to perish but if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen I had held my peace for the adversary is not worthy that the king be endemagged then spoke the king Ahasuerus and said unto Esther the queen who is he and where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so and Esther said an adversary and an enemy even this wicked Haman then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen and the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden but Haman remained to make request for his life to Esther the queen for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine and Haman was fallen upon the couch whereon Esther was then said the king will he even force the queen before me in the house as the word went out of the king's mouth they covered Haman's face then said Harbanah one of the chamberlains that were before the king behold also the gallows fifty cubits high which Haman hath made for Mordecai who spoke good for the king standeth in the house of Haman and the king said hang him thereon so they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai then was the King's wrath assuaged Esther chapter on that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman the Jews enemy unto Esther the queen and Mordecai came before the king for Esther had told what he was unto her and the king took off his ring which he had taken from Haman and gave it unto Mordecai and Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman and Esther spoke yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite and his device that he had devised against the Jews then the king held out to Esther the golden scepter so Esther arose and stood before the king and she said if it please the king and if I have found favor in his sight and the thing seem right before the king and I be pleasing in his eyes let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite which he wrote to destroy the Jews that are in all the king's provinces for how can I endure to see the evil.
that shall come unto my people or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew behold I have given Esther the house of Haman and him they have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hand upon the Jews right yet also concerning the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man. Reverse then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month which is the month seven on the three and twentieth day thereof and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded concerning the Jews even to the satraps and the governors and princes of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia a hundred twenty and seven provinces unto every province according to the writing thereof and unto every people after their language and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language and they wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed it with the king's ring and sent letters by posts on horseback riding on swift steeds that were used in the king's service bread of the stud that the king had granted the Jews that were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their life to destroy and to slay and to cause to perish all the forces of the people and province that would assault them their little ones and women and to take the spoil of them for a prey upon one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus namely upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month which is the month Adar the copy of the writing to be given out for a decree in every province was to be published unto all the peoples and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies so the posts that rode upon swift steeds that were used in the king's service went out being hastened and pressed on by the King's commandment and the decree was given out in Shushan the castle and Mordecai went forth from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a robe of fine linen and purple and the city of Shushan shouted and was glad the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor and in every province and in every city whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came the Jews had gladness and joy a feast and a good day and many from among the peoples of the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews was fallen upon them Esther chapter now in the twelfth month which is the month Adar on the thirteenth day of the same when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have rule over them whereas it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had rule over them that hated them the Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their hurt and no man could withstand them for the fear of them was fallen upon all the peoples and all the princes of the provinces and the satraps and the governors and they that did the king's business helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai was fallen upon them for Mordecai was great in the king's house and his fame went forth throughout all the provinces for the man Mordecai waxed greater and greater and the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and with slaughter and destruction and did what they would unto them that hated them and in Shushan the castle the Jews slew and destroyed five hundred men and Parshandatha and Dalphan and Espada and Puratha and Adaliah and Aradatha and Parmashta and Arisai and Aradai and Viizatha the ten sons of Haman the son of Hamdatha the Jews enemy slew they but on the spoil they laid not their hand on that day the number of those that were slain in Shushan the castle was brought before the king and the king said unto Esther the queen the Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan the castle and the ten sons of Haman what then have they done in the rest of the king's provinces now whatever thy petition it shall be granted thee and whatever thy request further it shall be done then said Esther if it please the king let it be granted to the Jews that are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree and let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows and the king commanded it so to be done and a decree was given out in Shushan and they hanged Haman's ten sons and the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day also of the month Adar and slew three hundred men in Shushan but on the spoil they laid not their hand and the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives and had rest from their enemies and slew of them that hated them seventy and five thousand but on the spoil they laid not their hand on the thirteenth day of the month Adar and on the fourteenth day of the same they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness but the Jews that were in Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof and on the fourteenth thereof and on the fifteenth day of the same they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness therefore do the Jews of the villages that dwell in the unwalled towns make the fourteenth day of the month Adar a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and of sending portions one to another and Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus both nigh and far to enjoin them that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month Adar and the fifteenth day of the same yearly the days wherein the Jews had rest from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to gladness and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of feasting and gladness and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor and the Jews took upon them to do as they had begun and as Mordecai had written unto them because Haman the son of Hamdatha the Agagite the enemy of all the Jews had devised against the Jews to destroy them and had cast per that is the lot to discomfit them and to destroy them but when she came before the king he commanded by letters that his wicked device which he had devised against the Jews should return upon his own head and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows wherefore they called these days Purim after the name of Pur therefore because of all the words of this letter and of that which they had seen concerning this matter and that which had come unto them the Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them. 
so as it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to the writing thereof and according to the appointed time thereof every year and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation every family every province and every city and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews nor the memorial of them perish from their seed then Esther the queen the daughter of Abihail and Mordecai the Jew wrote down all the acts of power to confirm. This second letter of Purim and he sent letters unto all the Jews to the hundred twenty and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim in their appointed times according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them and as they had ordained for themselves and for their seed the matters of the fastings and their cry and the commandment of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim and it was written in the book. Esther chapter and the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea and all the acts of his power and of his might and the full account of the greatness of Mordecai how the king advanced him are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia for Mordecai the Jew was next unto king Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. Daniel chapter in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and besieged it and the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God and he carried them into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and the vessels he brought into the treasure house of his God and the king spoke unto Ashpenaz his chief officer that he should bring in certain of the children of Israel and of the seed royal and of the nobles youths in whom was no blemish but fair to look on and skillful in all wisdom and skillful in knowledge and discerning in thought and such as had ability to stand in the king's palace and that he should teach them the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans and the king appointed for them a daily portion of the king's food and of the wine which he drank and that they should be nourished three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king now. Among these were of the children of Judah Daniel Hananiah Missal and Azariah and the chief of the officers gave names unto them unto Daniel he gave the name of Belteshazzar and to Hananiah of Shadrach and to Missal of Meshach and to Azariah of Abednego but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's food nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chief of the officers that he might not defile himself and God granted Daniel mercy and compassion in the sight of the chief of the officers and the chief of the officers said unto Daniel I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your food and your drink for why should he see your faces sad in comparison with the youths that are of your own age so would ye endanger my head with the king then said Daniel to the steward whom the chief of the officers had appointed over Daniel Hananiah Missal and Azariah try thy servants I beseech thee ten days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the youths that eat of the king's food and as thou cease deal with thy servants so he hearkened unto them in this matter and tried them ten days and at the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and they were fatter in flesh than all the youths that did eat of the king's food so the steward took away their food and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse now. As for these four youths God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams and at the end of the days which the king had appointed for bringing them in the chief of the officers brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar and the king spoke with them and among them all was found none like Daniel Hananiah Missal and Azariah therefore stood they before the king and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired. Of them he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all his realm and Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus Daniel chapter and in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams and his spirit was troubled and his sleep broke from him then the king commanded to call the magicians and the enchanters and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams so they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them I have dreamed a dream and my spirit is troubled to know the dream then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Aramaic O king live forever tell thy servants the dream and we will declare the interpretation the king answered and said to the Chaldeans the thing is certain with me if ye make not known unto me the dream and the interpretation thereof ye shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made a dunghill but if ye declare the dream and the interpretation thereof ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor only declare unto me the dream and the interpretation thereof they answered the second time and said let the king tell his servants the dream and we will declare the interpretation the king answered and said I know of a truth that ye would gain time inasmuch as ye see the thing is certain with me that if ye make not known unto me the dream there is but one law for you and ye have agreed together to speak before me lying and corrupt words till the time be changed only tell me the dream and I shall know that ye can declare unto me the interpretation thereof the Chaldeans answered before the king and said there is not a man upon the earth that can declare the king's matter for as much as no great and powerful king hath asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean and it is a hard thing that the king asketh and there is none other that can declare it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh for this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon so the decree went forth and the wise men were to be slain and they sought Daniel and his companions to be slain then Daniel returned answer with counsel and discretion to Ariok the captain of the king's guard who was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon he answered and said to Ariok the king's captain wherefore is the decree so 
peremptory from the king then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time that he might declare unto the king the interpretation then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah Missal and Azariah his companions that they might ask mercy of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his companions should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a vision of the night then Daniel blessed the God of heaven Daniel spoke and said blessed be the name of God from everlasting even unto everlasting for wisdom and might are his and he changeth the times and the seasons he removeth kings and setteth up kings he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding he revealeth the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him I thank thee and praise thee O thou God of my fathers who hath given me wisdom and might and hast now made known unto me what we desired of thee for thou hast made known unto us the king's matter therefore Daniel went in unto Ariak whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon he went and said thus unto him destroy not the wise men of Babylon bring me in before the king and I will declare unto the king the interpretation then Ariak brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him I have found a man of the children of the captivity of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation the king spoke and said to Daniel whose name was Belteshazzar art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof Daniel answered before the king and said the secret which the king hath asked can neither wise men enchanters magicians nor astrologers declare unto the king but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and he hath made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the end of days thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these as for thee O king thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed what should come to pass hereafter and he that revealeth secrets hath made known to thee what shall come to pass but as for me the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living but to the intent that the interpretation may be made known to the king and that thou Mayest know the thoughts of thy heart thou O king sawest and behold a great image this image which was mighty and whose brightness was surpassing stood before thee and the appearance thereof was terrible as for that image its head was of fine gold its breast and its arms of silver its belly and its thighs of brass its legs of iron its feet part of iron and part of clay thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon its feet that were of iron and clay and broke them to pieces then was the iron the clay the brass the silver and the gold broken in pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away so that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth this is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king thou O king king of kings unto whom the god of heaven hath given the kingdom the power and the strength and the glory and wheresoever the children of men the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven dwell hath he given them into thy hand and hath made thee to rule over them all thou art the head of gold and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and beat down all things and as iron that Cruise hate all these shall it break in pieces and crush and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron it shall be a divided kingdom but there shall be in it of the firmness of the iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay so part of the kingdom shall be strong and part thereof broken and whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay they shall mingle themselves by the seed of men but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron doth not mingle with clay and in the days of those kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed nor shall the kingdom be left to another people it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms but it shall stand forever for as much as thou sawest that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it broke in pieces the iron the brass the clay the silver and the gold the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an offering and sweet odors unto him the king spoke unto Daniel and said of a truth it is that your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets seeing thou hast been able to reveal this secret then the king made Daniel great and gave him many great gifts and made him to rule over the whole province of Babylon and to be chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon and Daniel requested of the king and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon but Daniel was in the gate of the king Daniel chapter Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the satraps the prefects and the governors the judges the treasurers the counselors the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up then the satraps the prefects and the governors the judges the treasurers the counselors the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up and the herald cried aloud to you it is commanded O peoples nations and languages that at what time ye hear the sound of the hornpipe harp trigon psaltery bagpipe and all kinds of music ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up and whoso falleth not down and worship hath shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace therefore at that time when 
All the peoples heard the sound of the hornpipe harp trigon psaltery and all kinds of music all the peoples the nations and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and brought accusation against the Jews they spoke and said to Nebuchadnezzar the king O king live forever thou O king hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the hornpipe harp trigon psaltery and bagpipe and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace there are certain Jews whom thou hast appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon Shadrach Meshach and Abednego these men O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach Meshach and Abednego then were these men brought before the king Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them is it true O Shadrach Meshach and Abednego that ye serve not my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the hornpipe harp trigon psaltery and bagpipe and all kinds of music ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well but if ye worship not ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace and who is the God that shall deliver you out of my hands Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king O Nebuchadnezzar we have no need to answer thee in this matter if our God whom we serve is able to deliver us he will deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and out of thy hand O king but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up then was Nebuchadnezzar filled with fury and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach Meshach and Abednego he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was wont to be heated and he commanded certain mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace then these men were bound in their cloaks their tunics and their robes and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace therefore. Because the king's commandment was peremptory and the furnace exceeding hot the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and these three men Shadrach Meshach and Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace then Nebuchadnezzar the king was alarmed and rose up in haste he spoke and said unto his ministers did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire they answered and said unto the king true O king he answered and said lo I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace he spoke and said Shadrach Meshach and Abednego yes servants of God most high come forth and come hither then Shadrach Meshach and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire and the satraps the prefects and the governors and the king's ministers being gathered together saw these men that the fire had no power upon their bodies nor was the hair of their heads singed neither were their cloaks changed nor had the smell of fire passed on them Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said blessed be the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and have yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god therefore I make a decree that every people nation and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that is able to deliver after the sort then the king promoted Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all peoples nations and languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you it hath seemed good unto me to declare the signs and wonders that God most high hath wrought toward me how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation Daniel chapter I Nebuchadnezzar was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace I saw a dream which made me afraid and imaginings upon my bed and the visions of my head affrighted me therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might Make known unto me the interpretation of the dream then came in the magicians the enchanters the Chaldeans and the astrologers and I told the dream before them but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof but at the last Daniel came in before me whose name was Belteshazzar according to the name of my God and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods and I told the dream before him O Belteshazzar master of the magicians because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee and no secret causeth thee trouble tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof thus were the visions of my head upon my bed I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and the height thereof was great the tree grew and was strong and the height thereof reached unto heaven and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth the leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much and in it was food for all the beasts of the field had shadow under it and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the branches thereof and all flesh was fed of it I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed and behold a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven he cried aloud and said thus hew down the tree and cut off its branches shake off its leaves and scatter its fruit let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from its branches nevertheless leave the stump of its roots in the earth even in a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the 
field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him the matter is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the lowest of men this dream I. King Nebuchadnezzar have seen and thou O Belteshazzar declare the interpretation for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation but thou art able for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee then Daniel whose name was Belteshazzar was appalled for a while and his thoughts affrighted him the king spoke and said Belteshazzar let not the dream or the interpretation affright thee Belteshazzar answered and said my lord the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof to thine adversaries the tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong whose height reached unto the heaven and the sight thereof to all the earth whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much and in it was food for all under which the beasts of the field dwelt and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation it is thou O king that art grown and become strong for thy greatness is grown and reach it unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth and whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying hew down the tree and destroy it nevertheless leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth even in a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him this is the interpretation o king and it is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king that thou shalt be driven from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and thou shalt be made to eat grass as oxen and shalt be wet with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and whereas it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule wherefore o king let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by almsgiving and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor if there may be a lengthening of thy prosperity all this came upon the king nebuchadnezzar at the end of twelve months he was walking upon the royal palace of babylon the king spoke and said is not this great babylon which i have built for a royal dwelling place by the might of my power and for the glory of my majesty while the word was in the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven O king Nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken the kingdom is departed from thee and thou shalt be driven from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field thou shalt be made to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair was grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws and at the end of the days I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and mine understanding returned unto me and I blessed the Most High and I praised and honored him that liveth forever for his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom from generation to generation and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he doth according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou at the same time mine understanding returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom my majesty and my splendor returned unto me and my ministers and my lord sought unto me and i was established in my kingdom and surpassing greatness was added unto me now i nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven for all his works are truth and his ways justice and those that walk in pride he is able to abase Daniel chapter Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand Belshazzar while he tasted the wine commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which Nebuchadnezzar his father had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his lords his consorts and his concubines might drink therein then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem and the king and his lords his consorts and his concubines drank in them they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver of brass of iron of wood and of stone in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the palm of the hand that wrote then the king's countenance was changed in him and his thoughts affrighted him and the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another the king cried aloud to bring in the enchanters the Chaldeans and the astrologers the king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon whosoever shall read this writing and declare unto me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall rule as one of three in the kingdom then came in all the king's wise men but they could not read the writing nor Make known to the king the interpretation then was King Belshazzar greatly affrighted and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were perplexed now the queen by reason of the words of the king and his lords came into the banquet house the queen spoke and said O king live forever let not thy thoughts affright thee nor let thy countenance be changed there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods and in the days of thy father light and understanding and Wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him and the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made him master of the magicians enchanters Chaldeans and astrologers for as much as a surpassing spirit and knowledge and understanding interpreting of dreams and declaring of riddles and loosing of knots were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belteshazzar now let Daniel be called and he will declare the interpretation then was Daniel brought in before the king the 
King spoke and said unto Daniel Art thou Daniel who is of the children of the captivity of Judah whom the king my father brought out of Judah I have heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and surpassing wisdom is found in thee and now the wise men the enchanters have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not declare the interpretation of the thing but I have heard of thee that thou canst give interpretations and loose knots now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof thou shalt be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt rule as one of three in the kingdom then Daniel answered and said before the king let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another nevertheless I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation O thou king God most. I gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father the kingdom and greatness and glory and majesty and because of the greatness that he gave him all the people's nations and languages trembled and feared before him whom he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he raised up and whom he would he put down but when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened that he dealt proudly he was deposed from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses he was fed with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that God most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and that he setteth up over it whomsoever he will and thou his son O Belshazzar hast not humbled thy heart though thou knewest all this but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou and thy lords thy consorts and thy concubines have drunk wine in them and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold of brass iron wood and stone which see not nor hear nor know and the god in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways hast thou not glorified then was the palm of the hand sent from before him and this writing was inscribed and this is the writing that was inscribed mene mene tickle up hearts and this is the interpretation of the thing mene god hath numbered thy kingdom and brought it to an end tickle thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting Paris thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians then commanded Belshazzar and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold about his neck and made proclamation concerning him that he should rule as one of three in the kingdom in that night Belshazzar the Chaldean king was slain Daniel chapter and Darius the Mede received the kingdom being about three score and two years old it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty satraps who should be throughout the whole kingdom and over them three presidents of whom Daniel was one that these satraps might give account unto them and that the king should have no damage then this Daniel distinguished himself above the presidents and the satraps because a surpassing spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm then the presidents and the satraps sought to find occasion against Daniel as touching the kingdom but they could find no occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful neither was there any error or fault found in him then said these men we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him in the matter of the law of his God then these presidents and satraps came tumultuously to the king and said thus unto him King Darius live forever all the presidents of the kingdom the prefects and the satraps the ministers and the governors have consulted together that the king should establish a statute and make a strong interdict that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days save of the o king he shall be cast into the den of lions now o king establish the interdict and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the medes and persians which altereth not wherefore king darius signed the writing and the interdict and when daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house now his windows were open in his upper chamber toward Jerusalem and he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime then these men came tumultuously and found Daniel making petition and supplication before his God then they came near and spoke before the king concerning the king's interdict hast thou not signed an interdict that every man that shall make petition unto any God or man within thirty days save of the O king shall be cast into the den of lions the king answered and said the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians which altereth not then answered they and said before the king that Daniel who is of the children of the captivity of Judah regardeth not the O king nor the interdict that thou hast signed but make this petition three times a day then the king when he heard these words was sore displeased and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him then these men came tumultuously unto the king and said unto the king know o king that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no interdict nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions now the king spoke and said unto Daniel thy God whom thou servest continually he will deliver thee and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting neither were diversions brought before him and his sleep fled from him then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions and when he came near unto the den to Daniel he cried with a pained voice the king spoke and said to Daniel O Daniel servant of the living 
God is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions then said Daniel unto the king O king live forever my God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions mouths and they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee O king have I done no hurt then was the king exceeding glad and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den so Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Because he had trusted in his God and the king commanded and they brought those men that had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions them their children and their wives and they had not come to the bottom of the den when the lions had the mastery of them and broke all their bones in pieces then king Darius wrote unto all the peoples nations and languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end he delivereth and rescueth and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian Daniel chapter in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters Daniel spoke and said I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of the heaven broke forth upon the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea to verse one from another the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon two feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it and Behold another beast a second like to a bear and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth and it was said thus unto it arise devour much flesh after this I beheld and lo another like a leopard which had upon the sides of it four wings of a fowl the beast had also four heads and dominion was given to it after this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another horn a little one before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things I beheld till thrones were placed and one that was ancient of days did sit his rhyme and was as white snow and the hair of his head like pure wool his throne was fiery flames and the wheels thereof burning fire a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him thousand thousands ministered unto him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was set and the books were opened I beheld at that time because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke I beheld even till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and it was given to be burned with fire and as for the rest of the beasts their dominion was taken away yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time I saw in the night visions and behold there came with the clouds of heaven one like unto a son of man and he came even to the ancient of days and he was brought near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all the people's nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed as for me Daniel my spirit was pained in the midst of my body and the visions of my head affrighted me I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth concerning all this so he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things these great beasts which are four are four kings that shall arise out of the earth but the saints of the most high shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever then I desired to know the truth concerning the fourth beast which was diverse from all of them exceeding terrible whose teeth were of iron and its nails of brass which devoured break in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet and concerning the ten horns that were on its head and the other horn which came up and before which three fell even that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things whose appearance was greater than that of its fellows I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given for the saints of the most high and the time came and the saints possessed the kingdom thus he said the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces and as for the ten horns out of this kingdom shall ten kings arise and another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the former and he shall put down three kings and he shall speak words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and he shall think to change the seasons and the law and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and half a time but the judgment shall sit and his dominions shall be taken away to be consumed and to be destroyed unto the end and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high their kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey them here is the end of the matter as for me Daniel my thoughts much affrighted me and my countenance was changed in me but I kept the matter in my heart Daniel chapter in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar a vision appeared unto me even unto me Daniel after that which appeared unto me at the first and I saw in the vision now it was so that when I saw I was in Shushan the castle which is in the province of Elam and I saw in the vision and I was by the stream Ola and I lifted up mine eyes and saw and behold there stood before the stream a ram which had two horns and the two horns were high but one was higher than the other and the higher came up last I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward and no beasts could stand before him neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand but he did according 
to his will and magnified himself and as I was considering behold a he-goat came from the west over the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground and the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes and he came to the ram that had the two horns which I saw standing before the stream and ran at him in the fury of his power and I saw him come close unto the ram and he was moved with choler against him and smote the ram and broke his two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand before him but he cast him down to the ground and trampled upon him and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand and the he-goat magnified himself exceedingly and when he was strong the great horn was broken and instead of it there came up the appearance of four horns toward the four winds of heaven and out of one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the beauteous land and it waxed great even to the host of heaven and some of the host and of the stars it cast down to the ground and trampled upon them yet it magnified itself even to the prince of the host and from him the continual burnt offering was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down and the host was given over to it together with the continual burnt offering through transgression and it cast down truth to the ground and it wrought and prospered then I heard a holy one speaking and another holy one said unto that certain one who spoke how long shall be the vision concerning the continual burnt offering and the transgression that causes a palmant to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot and he said unto me unto two thousand and three hundred evenings and mornings then shall the sanctuary be victorious and it came to pass when I even I Daniel had seen the vision that I saw to understand it and behold there stood before me as the appearance of a man and I heard the voice of a man between the banks of Olehu called and said Gabriel make this man to understand the vision so he came near where I stood and when he came I was terrified and fell upon my face but he said unto me understand O son of man for the vision Belangeth to the time of the end now as he was speaking with me I fell into a deep sleep with my face toward the ground but he touched me and set me upright and he said behold I will make thee know what shall be in the latter time of the indignation for it Belangath to the appointed time of the end the ram which thou sawest having the two horns they are the kings of Media and Persia and the rough he goat is the king of Greece and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king and as for that which was broken in the place whereof four stood up four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation but not with his power and in the latter time of their kingdom when the transgressors have completed their transgression there shall stand up a king of fierce countenance and understanding stratagems and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and do and he shall destroy them that are mighty and the people of the saints and through his cunning he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and in time of security shall he destroy many he shall also stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand and the vision of the evenings and mornings which hath been told is true but thou shut thou up the vision for it belongeth to many days to come and I Daniel fainted and was six certain days then I rose up and did the king's business and I was appalled at the vision but understood it not Daniel chapter in the first year of Darius the son of Ahasuerus of the seed of the Medes who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans in the first year of his reign I Daniel meditated in the books over the number of the years whereof the word of Hashem came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish for the desolations of Jerusalem seventy years and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes and I prayed unto Hashem my God and made confession and said O Lord the great and awful God who keepest covenant and mercy with them that love thee and keep thy commandments we have sinned and have dealt iniquitously and have done wickedly and have rebelled and have turned aside from thy commandments and from thine ordinances neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets that spoke in thy name to our kings our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land unto thee O Lord Belangath righteousness but unto us confusion of face as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because they dealt treacherously with thee O Hashem to us Belangath confusion of face to our kings to our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee to the Lord our God belong compassions and forgivenesses for we have rebelled against him neither have we hearkened to the voice of Hashem our God to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servants the prophets yet all Israel have transgressed thy law and have turned aside so as not to hearken to thy voice and so there hath been poured out upon us the curse and the oath that is written in the law of Moses the servant of God for we have sinned against him and he hath confirmed his word which he spoke against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil so that under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem as it is written in the law of Moses all this evil is come upon us yet have we not entreated the favor of Hashem our God that we might turn from our iniquities and have discernment in thy truth and so Hashem hath watched over the evil and brought it upon us for Hashem our God is righteous in all his works which he hath done and we have not hearkened to his voice and now O Lord our God that hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and hast gotten thee renown as at this day we have sinned we have done wickedly O Lord according to all. Thy righteousness let thine anger and thy fury I pray thee be turned away from thy city Jerusalem thy holy mountain because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us now therefore O our God hearken unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake O my God incline thine ear and hear open thine eyes and behold our 
desolations and the city upon which thy name is called for we do not present our supplications before thee because of our righteousness but because of thy great compassions O Lord hear O Lord forgive O Lord attend and do defer not for thine own sake O my God because thy name is called upon thy city and thy people and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before Hashem my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yet while I was speaking in prayer the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly approached close to me about the time of the evening offering and he made me to understand and talked with me and said O Daniel I am now come forth to make thee skillful of understanding at the beginning of thy supplications a word went forth and I am come to declare it for thou art greatly beloved therefore look into the word and understand the vision seventy. Weeks are decreed upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to forgive iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal vision and profit and to anoint the most holy place know therefore and discern that from the going forth of the word to restore and to build Jerusalem unto one anointed a prince shall be seven weeks and for three score and two weeks it shall be built again with broad place and moat but in true blues times. And after the threescore and two weeks shall an anointed one be cut off and be no more and the people of a prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary but his end shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall make a firm covenant with many for one week and for half of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease and upon the wing of detestable things shall be that which causeth appalment and that until the extermination wholly determined be poured out upon that which causeth appalment Daniel chapter in the third year of Cyrus king of Persia a word was revealed unto Daniel whose name was called Belteshazzar and the word was true even a great warfare and he gave heed to the word and had understanding of the vision in those days I Daniel was mourning three whole weeks I ate no pleasant bread neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole Weeks were fulfilled and in the four and twentieth day of the first month as I was by the side of the great river which is Tigris I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphas his body also was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as torches of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to burnished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude and I Daniel alone. Saw the vision for the men that were with me saw not the vision howbeit a great trembling fell upon them and they fled to hide themselves so that I was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption and I retained no strength yet heard I the voice of his words and when I heard the voice of his words then was I fallen into a deep sleep on my face with my face toward the ground and behold a hand touched me which set me tottering upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands and he said unto me O Daniel thou man greatly beloved give heed unto the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for now am I sent unto thee and when he had spoken this word unto me I stood trembling then said he unto me fear not Daniel for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to humble thyself before thy God thy words were heard and I am come because of thy words but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days but lo Michael one of the chief princes came to help me and I was left over there beside the kings of Persia now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the end of days for there is yet a vision for the days and when he had spoken unto me according to these words I set my face toward the ground and was dumb and behold one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips then I opened my mouth and spoke and said unto him that stood before me O my lord by reason of the vision my pains are come upon me and I retain no strength for how can the servant of my lord talk with this my lord for as for me straightway there remained no strength in me neither was there breath left in me then there touched me again one like the appearance of a man and he strengthened me and he said O man greatly beloved fear not peace be unto thee be strong ye be strong and when he had spoken unto me I was strengthened and said let my lord speak for thou hast strengthened me then said he knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee and now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia and when I go forth lo the prince of Greece shall come howbeit I will declare unto thee that which is inscribed in the writing of truth and there is none that holdeth with me against these except Michael your prince Daniel chapter and as for me in the first year of Darius the Mede I stood up to be a supporter and a stronghold unto him and now will I declare unto thee the truth behold there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia and the fourth shall be far richer than they all and when he is waxed strong through his riches he shall stir up all against the realm of Greece and a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will and when he shall stand up his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven but not to his posterity nor according to his dominion wherewith he ruled for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those and the king of the south shall be strong and one of his princes and he shall be strong above him and have dominion his dominion shall be a great dominion and at the end of years they shall join themselves together and the daughter of the king of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement but she shall not retain the strength of her arm. 
neither shall he stand nor his arm but she shall be given up and they that brought her and he that begot her and he that obtained her in those times but one of the shoots of her roots shall stand up in his place and shall come unto the army and shall enter into the stronghold of the king of the north and shall deal with them and shall prevail and also their gods with their molten images and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold shall he bring into captivity into Egypt and he shall desist some years from the king of the north and he shall come into the kingdom of the king of the south but he shall return into his own land and his sons shall stir themselves up and shall assemble a multitude of great forces and he shall come on and overflow as he passes through and he shall return and stir himself up even to his stronghold and the king of the south shall be moved with Cholar and shall come forth and fight with him even with the king of the north and he shall set forth a great multitude but the multitude shall be given into his hand and the multitude shall be carried away and his heart shall be lifted up and he shall cast down tens of thousands but he shall not prevail and the king of the north shall again set forth a multitude greater than the former and he shall come on at the end of the times even of years with a great army and with much substance and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south also the children of the violent among thy people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision but they shall stumble and the king of the north shall come and cast up a mound and take a well fortified city and the arms of the south shall not withstand and as for his chosen people there shall be no strength in them to withstand but he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will and none shall stand before him and he shall stand in the beauteous land and in his hand shall be extermination and he shall set his face to come with the strength of his whole kingdom but shall make an agreement with him and he shall give him the daughter of women to destroy it but it shall not stand neither be for him after this shall he set his face unto the isles and shall take many but a captain shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease yet he shall cause his own reproach to return upon him then he shall turn his face toward the strongholds of his own land but he shall stumble and fall and shall not be found then shall stand up in his place one that shall cause an exactor to pass through the glory of the kingdom but within few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle and in his place shall stand up a contemptible person upon whom had not been conferred the majesty of the kingdom but he shall come in time of security and shall obtain the kingdom by blandishments and the arms of the flood shall be swept away from before him and shall be broken yea also the prince of the covenant and after the league made with him he shall work deceitfully and he shall come up and become strong with a little nation in time of security shall he come even upon the fattest places of the province and he shall do that which his fathers have not done nor his fathers fathers he shall scatter among them prey and spoil and substance yet he shall devise his devices against fortresses but only until the time and he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army and the king of the south shall stir himself up to battle with a very great and mighty army but he shall not stand for they shall devise devices against him yea they that eat of his food shall destroy him and his army shall be swept away and many shall fall down slain and as for both these kings their hearts shall be to do mischief and they shall speak lies at one table but it shall not prosper for the end remaineth yet for the time appointed and he shall return to his own land with great substance and his heart shall be against the holy covenant and he shall do his pleasure and return to his own land at the time appointed he shall return and come into the south but it shall not be in the latter time as it was in the former for ships of kittim shall come against him and he shall be cowed and he shall return and have indignation against the holy covenant and shall do his pleasure and he shall return and have regard unto them that forsake the holy covenant and arms shall stand on his part and they shall profane the sanctuary even the stronghold and shall take away the continual burnt offering and they shall set up the detestable thing that causeth appalment and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by blandishments but the people that know their god shall show strength and prevail and they that are wise among the people shall cause the many to understand yet they shall stumble by the sword and by flame by captivity and by spoil many days now when they shall stumble they shall be helped with a little help but many shall join themselves unto them with blandishments and some of them that are wise shall stumble to refine among them and to purify and to make white even to the time of the end for it is yet for the time appointed and the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak strange things against the god of gods and he shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that which is determined shall be done neither shall he regard the gods of his fathers and neither the desire of women nor any god shall he regard for he shall magnify himself above all but in his place shall he honor the god of strongholds and a god whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and costly things and he shall deal with the strongest fortresses with the help of a foreign god whom he shall acknowledge shall increase glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for a price and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through he shall enter also into the beauteous land and many countries shall be overthrown but these 
shall be delivered out of his hand Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affright him and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the beauteous holy mountain and he shall come to his end and none shall help him Daniel chapter and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince who standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book and many of them that sleep. In the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to reproaches and everlasting abhorrence and they that are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn the many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever but thou O Daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased then I Daniel looked and behold there stood other two the one on the bank of the river on this side and the other on the bank of the river on that side and one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river how long shall it be to the end of the wonders and I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he lifted up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swore by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time times and a half and when they have made an end of breaking in pieces the power of the holy people. All these things shall be finished and I heard but I understood not then said I O my Lord what shall be the latter end of these things and he said go thy way Daniel for the words are shut up and sealed till the time of the end many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but they that are wise shall understand and from the time that the continual burnt offering shall be taken away and the detestable thing that causes a palmant set up there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days happy is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days but go thou thy way till the end be and thou shalt rest and shalt stand up to thy lot at the end of the days Ezra chapter now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of Hashem by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished Hashem stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying thus saith Cyrus king of Persia all the kingdoms of the earth hath Hashem the God of heaven given me and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem which is in Judah whosoever there is among you of all his people his God be with him let him go up to Jerusalem which is in Judah and build the house of Hashem the God of Israel he is the God who is in Jerusalem and whosoever is left in any place where he sojourneth let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the freewill offering for the house of God which is in Jerusalem then rose up the heads of Fathers houses of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites even all whose spirit God had stirred to go up to build the house of Hashem which is in Jerusalem and all they that were round about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver with gold with goods and with beasts and with precious things beside all that was willingly offered also Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of Hashem which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods even those did Cyrus king of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithridoth the treasurer and numbered them unto Shishbazar the prince of Judah and this is the number of them thirty basins of gold a thousand basins of silver nine and twenty knives. 30 bowls of gold silver bowls of a second sort 410 and other vessels a thousand all the vessels of gold and of silver were 5400 all these did Shishbazar bring up when they of the captivity were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem Ezra chapter now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away unto Babylon and that returned unto Jerusalem and Judah every one unto his city who came with Zerubbabel, Shua, Nehemiah, Sirei, Rile, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispar, Bigvei, Iri, Hambana, the number of the men of the people of Israel, the children of Parash 2170 and two, the children of Shephesha 370 and two, the children of Ara 770 and five, the children of Pahat, Moab, of the children of Shua and Job 2812, the Children of Elam 1250 and 4 The children of Zato 940 and 5 The children of Zakai 703 Score the children of Bani 640 and 2 The children of Babai 620 and 3 The children of Asjid 1220 and 2 The children of Adonikam 660 and 6 The children of Bigvai 2050 and 6 The children of Adin 450 and 4 The children of Ader of Hezekiah 90 and 8 the children of Bezai 320 and 3 the children of Jorah 112 the children of Hashem 220 and 3 the children of Jibar 90 and 5 the children of Bethlehem 120 and 3 the men of Netapha 50 and 6 the men of Anadhoth 120 and 8 the children of Ismaveth 40 and 2 the children of Kiriath Aram Chephirah and Biroth 740 and 3. 
the children of Rama and Gaba 620 and 1 the men of Mikmas 120 and 2 the men of Bethel and Ai 220 and 3 the children of Nebo 50 and 2 the children of Magbish 150 and 6 the children of the other Elam 1250 and 4 the children of Haram 320 the children of Lod Hadid and Ono 720 and 5 the children of Jericho 340 and 5 the Children of Sina 3630 the priests the children of Jedeah of the house of Jeshua 970 and 3 the children of Imer 1050 and 2 the children of Pashur 1240 and 7 the children of Haram 1017 the Levites the children of Jeshua and Kadmiel of the children of Hodavia 70 and 4 the singers the children of Azaf 120 and 8 the children of the Porters the children of Shalom the children of Ader the children of Talman the children of Akub the children of Hadada the children of Shobai in all 130 and 9 the Nathanim the children of Zihah the children of Hazhuva the children of Tabaith the children of Kuros the children of Siaha the children of Padon the children of Lebanon the children of Hagaba the children of Akub the children of Hagab the children of Salma the children of Hanan the children of Gedel the Children of Gahar, the children of Rea, the children of Rezin, the children of Nekata, the children of Gazam, the children of Uwa, the children of Basi, the children of Basay, the children of Asna, the children of Munim, the children of Nephuzim, the children of Bakbuk, the children of Hakupha, the children of Harhur, the children of Bosluk, the children of Mehida, the children of Harsha, the children of Barkos, the children of Sisira, the children of Tamah, the children of Nesia, the Children of Hatifa, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of Sotai, the children of Hasapharath, the children of Peruda, the children of Jala, the children of Darkin, the children of Gedel, the children of Shephisha, the children of Hadal, the children of Pochereth Hazabim, the children of Ami, all the Nathanim, and the children of Solomon's servants were 390 and 2, and these were they that went up from Tel Mela, Tel Harsa, Cherubadan, and Immer, but they could. Not tell their fathers' houses and their seed whether they were of Israel, the children of Delea, the children of Tobia, the children of Nekata 650 and 2, and of the children of the priests, the children of Habai, the children of Hakas, the children of Barzilla, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzilla the Jalidite and was called after their name. These sought their register, that is the genealogy, but it was not found, therefore were they deemed polluted and put from the priesthood and the tears hath us said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with Urim and with Thummim the whole congregation together was forty and two thousand three hundred and three score beside their men servants and their maid servants of whom there were seven thousand three hundred thirty and seven and they had two hundred singing men and singing women their horses were seven hundred thirty and six their mules two hundred forty and Five their camels four hundred thirty and five their asses six thousand seven hundred and twenty and some of the heads of Fathers' houses when they came to the house of Hashem which is in Jerusalem offered willingly for the house of God to set it up in its place they gave after their ability into the treasury of the work threescore and one thousand derricks of gold and five thousand pounds of silver and one hundred priests' tunics so the priests and the levites and some of the people and the singers and the porters and the Nathanim dwelt in their cities and all Israel in their cities Ezra chapter and when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem then stood up Joshua the son of Josadak and his brethren the priests and Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and his brethren and builded the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon as it is written in the law of Moses. The man of God and they set the altar upon its bases for fear was upon them because of the people of the countries and they offered burnt offerings thereon unto Hashem even burnt offerings morning and evening and they kept the feast of tabernacles as it is written and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the ordinance as the duty of every day required and afterward the continual burnt offering and the offerings of the new moons and of all the appointed seasons of Hashem that were hallowed and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto Hashem from the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto Hashem but the foundation of the temple of Hashem was not yet laid they gave money also unto the hewers and to the carpenters and food and drink and oil unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea unto Joppa according to the grant that they had of Cyrus king of Persia now. In the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem in the second month began Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Shua the son of Josadak and the rest of their brethren the priests and the Levites and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem and appointed the Levites from twenty years old and upward to have the oversight of the work of the house of Hashem then stood Shua with his sons and his brethren and Kadmiel and his sons the sons of Judah together. To have the oversight of the workmen in the house of God the sons of Hanadad also with their sons and their brethren the Levites and when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of Hashem they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites the sons of Azaph with cymbals to praise Hashem according to the direction of David king of Israel and they sang one to another in praising and giving thanks unto Hashem for he is good for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel.
and all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised Hashem because the foundation of the house of Hashem was laid but many of the priests and levites and heads of Fathers houses the old men that had seen the first house standing on its foundation wept with a loud voice when this house was before their eyes and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people for the people shouted with a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off Ezra chapter now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity were building a temple unto Hashem the God of Israel then they drew near to Zerubbabel and to the heads of Fathers houses and said unto them let us build with you for we seek your God as ye do and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Ezerhaddon king of Assyria who brought us up hither but Zerubbabel and Shua and the rest of the Heads of Fathers houses of Israel said unto them Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God but we ourselves together will build unto Hashem the God of Israel as King Cyrus the king of Persia hath commanded us then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and harried them while they were building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus king of Persia even until the reign of Darius king of Persia and in the reign of Ahasuerus in the beginning of his reign wrote they an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem and in the days of Artaxerxes wrote Bishlam Mithridoth Tabil and the rest of his companions unto Artaxerxes king of Persia and the writing of the letter was written in the Aramaic character and set forth in the Aramaic tongue Reham the commander and Shimshai the scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes the king in this sort then wrote Reham the commander and Shimshai the scribe and the rest of their companions the Dinites and the Ephorisatechites the Tarpalites the Ephorisites the Archevites the Babylonians the Shushunchites the Dehites the Elamites and the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asenapar brought over and set in the city of Samaria and the rest that are in the country beyond the river and now this is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him even unto Artaxerxes the king thy servants the men beyond the river and now be it known unto the king that the Jews that came up from the air come to us unto Jerusalem they are building the rebellious and the bad city and have finished the walls and are digging out the foundations be it known now unto the king that if the city be builded and the walls finished they will not pay tribute impost or toll and so thou wilt endomage the revenue of the kings now because we eat the salt of the palace and it is not meet for us to see the kings. Dissianuer therefore have we sent and announced to the king that search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers so shalt thou find in the book of the records and know that the city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces and that they have moved sedition within the same of old time for which cause was the city laid waste we announce to the king that if the city be builded and the walls finished by this means thou shalt have no portion beyond the river. Then sent the king an answer unto Reham the commander and to Shimshai the scribe and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria and unto the rest beyond the river peace and now the letter which ye sent unto us hath been plainly read before me and I decreed and search hath been made and it is found that the city of old time hath made insurrection against kings and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein there have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem who have ruled. Over all the country beyond the river and tribute impost and toll was paid unto them make ye now a decree to cause these men to cease and that the city be not builded until a decree shall be made by me and take heed that ye be not slack herein why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings then when the copy of King Artaxerxes letter was read before Reham and Shimshai the scribe and their companions they went in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and Power then ceased the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem and it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius king of Persia Ezra chapter now the prophets Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Ido prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel prophesied they unto them then rose up Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Shua the son of Josadak and began to build the house of God which is at Jerusalem and with them were. The prophets of God helping them at the same time came to them Tatanai the governor beyond the river and Shetherbozanai and their companions and said thus unto them who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure then spoke we unto them after this manner wrote they what are the names of the men that build this building but the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews and they did not make them cease till the matter should come to Darius and then answer should be returned by letter concerning it the copy of the letter that Tatanai the governor beyond the river and Shetherbozanai and his companions the Ephoresichites who were beyond the river sent unto Darius the king they sent a letter unto him wherein was written thus unto Darius the king all peace be it known unto the king that we went into the province of Judah to the house of the great God which is builded with great stones and timber is laid in the walls and this work goeth on. With diligence and prospereth in their hands then asked we those elders and said unto them thus who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this wall we asked them their names also to announce to thee that we might write the names of the men that were at the head of them and thus they returned us answer saying we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth and build the house that was builded these many years ago which a great king of Israel builded and finished but because that our fathers had provoked the God of heaven he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon the Chaldean who destroyed this house and carried the people away into Babylon but in the first year of Cyrus king of Babylon Cyrus the king made a decree to build this house of God and the gold and silver vessels also of the house of God which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought them into the temple of Babylon those did Cyrus the king take. 
out of the temple of Babylon and they were delivered unto one whose name was Shishbazer whom he had made governor and he said unto him take these vessels go put them in the temple that is in Jerusalem and let the house of God be builded in its place then came the same Shishbazer and laid the foundations of the house of God which is in Jerusalem and since that time even until now hath it been in building and yet it is not completed now therefore if it seem good to the king let search be made in the king's treasure house there which is at Babylon whether it be so that a decree was made of Cyrus the king to build this house of God at Jerusalem and let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter Ezra chapter then Darius the king made a decree and search was made in the house of the archives where the treasures were laid up in Babylon and there was found at Amatha in the palace that is in the province of Media a roll and therein was thus written a record. In the first year of Cyrus the king Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem let the house be builded the place where they offer sacrifices and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid the height thereof three score cubits and the breadth thereof three score cubits with three rows of great stones and a row of new timber and let the expenses be given out of the king's house and also let the gold and silver vessels of the house of God which Nebuchadnezzar took. Forth out of the temple which is at Jerusalem and brought unto Babylon be restored and brought back unto the temple which is at Jerusalem every one to its place and thou shalt put them in the house of God now therefore Tatanai governor beyond the river Shetherbozanai and your companions the Ephoresichites who are beyond the river Befar from thence let the work of this house of God alone let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in its place. Moreover I make a decree concerning what ye shall do to these elders of the Jews for the building of this house of God that of the king's goods even of the tribute beyond the river expenses be given with all diligence unto these men that they be not hindered and that which they have need of both young bullocks and rams and lambs for burnt offerings to the God of heaven wheat salt wine and oil according to the word of the priests that are at Jerusalem let it be given them day by day without fail that they may offer sacrifices of sweet savour unto the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and of his sons also I have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word let a beam be pulled out from his house and let him be lifted up and fastened thereon and let his house be made a dunghill for this and may the God that hath caused his name to dwell there overthrow all kings and peoples that shall put forth their hand to alter the same to destroy this house of God which is at Jerusalem I Darius have made a decree let it be done with all diligence then Tatanai the governor beyond the river Shetherbozanai and their companions because that Darius the king had thus sent acted with all diligence and the elders of the Jews built it and prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Ido and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the decree of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes king of Persia and this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king and the children of Israel the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy and they offered at the dedication of this house of God a hundred bullocks two hundred rams four hundred lambs and for a sin offering for all Israel twelve he goats according to the number of the tribes of Israel and they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God which is at Jerusalem as it is written in the book of Moses and the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the fourteenth day of the first month for the priests and the Levites had purified themselves together all of them were pure and they killed the Passover lamb for all the children of the captivity and for their brethren the priests and for themselves. And the children of Israel that were come back out of the captivity and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the nations of the land to seek Hashem the God of Israel did eat and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy for Hashem had made them joyful and had turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God the God of Israel Ezra chapter now after these things in the reign of Artaxerxes king of Persia Ezra the son of Syria the son of Azariah the son of Hilkiah the son of Shalom the son of Zadok the son of Ahid of the son of Amariah the son of Azariah the son of Miraith the son of Zeriah the son of Uzi the son of Bukai the son of Abishua the son of Phinehas the son of Eleazar the son of Aaron the chief priest this Ezra went up from Babylon and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses which Hashem the God of Israel had given and the king granted him all his request according to the hand of Hashem his God upon him and there went up some of the children of Israel and of the priests and the Levites and the singers and the porters and the Nathanim unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king and he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month which was in the seventh year of the king for upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him for Ezra had set his heart to seek the law of Hashem and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and ordinances now this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest the scribe even the scribe of the words of the commandments of Hashem and of his statutes to Israel Artaxerxes king of kings unto Ezra the priest the scribe of the law of the God of heaven and so forth and now I make a decree that all they of the people of Israel and their priests and the Levites in my realm that are minded of their own free will to go with thee to Jerusalem go for as much as thou art sent of the king and his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God which is in thy hand and to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto the God of Israel whose habitation is in Jerusalem and all the silver and gold that thou shalt find in all the 
province of Babylon with the free will offering of the people and of the priests offering willingly for the house of their God which is in Jerusalem therefore thou shalt with all diligence buy with this money bullocks rams lambs with their meal offerings and their drink offerings and shalt offer them upon the altar of the house of your God which is in Jerusalem and whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold that do ye after the will of your God and the vessels that are given thee for the service of the house of thy God deliver thou before the God of Jerusalem and whatsoever more shall be needful for the house of thy God which thou shalt have occasion to bestow bestow it out of the king's treasure house and I even I Artaxerxes the king do make a decree to all the treasurers that are beyond the river that whatsoever Ezra the priest the scribe of the law of the God of heaven shall require of you it be done with all diligence unto a hundred talents of silver and to a hundred measures of wheat and to a hundred baths of wine and to a hundred baths of oil and salt without prescribing how much whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven let it be done exactly for the house of the God of heaven for why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons also we announce to you that touching any of the priests and levites the singers porters nathinim or servants of this house of God it shall not be lawful to impose tribute impost or toll upon them and thou Ezra after the wisdom of thy God that is in thy hand appoint magistrates and judges who may judge all the people that are beyond the river all such as know the laws of thy God and teach yet him that knoweth them not and whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king let judgment be executed upon him with all diligence whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment. Blessed be Hashem the God of our fathers who hath put such a thing as this in the king's heart to beautify the house of Hashem which is in Jerusalem and hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes and I was strengthened according to the hand of Hashem my God upon me and I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me Ezra chapter now these are the heads of their fathers houses and this is the genealogy of them. That went up with me from Babylon in the reign of Artaxerxes the king of the sons of Phinehas Gershom of the sons of Ithamar Daniel of the sons of David Hattish of the sons of Shechaniah of the sons of Parash Zechariah and with him were reckoned by genealogy of the males a hundred and fifty of the sons of Pahat Moab Elihona the son of Zeriah and with him two hundred males of the sons of Shechaniah the son of Hahaziel and with him three hundred males and of the sons of Adinib the son of Jonathan and with him fifty males and of the sons of Elam Jshiah the son of Athaliah and with him seventy males and of the sons of Shephesh Zebediah the son of Michael and with him fourscore males of the sons of Job Obadiah the son of Jehiel and with him two hundred and eighteen males and of the sons of Shalamith the son of Josephiah and with him a hundred and threescore males and of the sons of Babai Zechariah the son of Babai and with him twenty and eight males and of the sons of Isjid Yohanan the son of Hakatan and with him a hundred and ten males and of the sons of Adonikam that were the last and these are their names Eliphelet Jeel and Shemaiah and with them threescore males and of the sons of Bigvai Uthai and Zachar and with him seventy males and I gathered them together to the river that runneth to Ahava and there we encamped three days and I viewed the people and the priests and found there none of the sons of Levi then sent I for Eliza. For Ariel for Shemaiah and for Elnathan and for Jerob and for Elnathan and for Nathan and for Zechariah and for Meshulam chief men also for Jwadarab and for Elnathan teachers and I gave them commandment unto Ido the chief at the place Kasiphia and I told them what they should say unto Ido and his brother who were set over the place Kasiphia that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of our God and according to the good hand of our God upon us they brought us a man of Discretion of the sons of Mali the son of Levi the son of Israel and Jerebiah with his sons and his brethren eighteen and Hashabiah and with him Jeshiah of the sons of Merari his brethren and their sons twenty and of the Nathinim whom David and the princes had given for the service of the Levites two hundred and twenty Nathinim all of them were mentioned by name then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek of him a straight way. For us and for our little ones and for all our substance for I was ashamed to ask of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way because we had spoken unto the king saying the hand of our God is upon all them that seek him for good but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him so we fasted and besought our God for this and he was entreated of us then I separated twelve of the chiefs of the priests besides Sherebiah Hashabiah and ten of their brethren with them and weighed unto them the silver and the gold and the vessels even the offering for the house of our God which the king and his counselors and his princes and all Israel there present had offered I even weighed into their hands six hundred and fifty talents of silver and silver vessels a hundred talents of gold a hundred talents and twenty bowels of gold of a thousand derricks and two vessels of fine bright brass precious as gold and I said unto them yet are holy unto Hashem and the vessels are holy and the silver and the gold are a free will offering unto Hashem the God of your fathers watch ye and keep them until ye weigh them before the chiefs of the priests and the levites and the princes of the fathers houses of Israel at Jerusalem in the chambers of the house of Hashem so the priests and the levites received the weight of the silver and the gold and the vessels to bring them to Jerusalem unto the house of our God then we departed.
from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem and the hand of our God was upon us and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and liar in wait by the way and we came to Jerusalem and abode there three days and on the fourth day was the silver and the gold and the vessels weighed in the house of our God into the hand of Mirmoth the son of Uriah the priest and with him was Eleazar the son of Phinehas and with them was Josabad the son of Jeshua and Noadiah the son of Benwi the Levites the whole by number and by weight and all the weight was written at that time the children of the captivity that were come out of exile offered burnt offerings unto the God of Israel twelve bullocks for all Israel ninety and six rams seventy and seven lambs twelve he goats for a sin offering all this was a burnt offering unto Hashem and they delivered the king's commissions unto the king's satraps and to the governors beyond the river and they furthered the people and the house of God Ezra chapter now when these things were done the princes drew near unto me saying the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands doing according to their abominations even of the Canaanites the Hittites the Perizzites the Jebusites the Ammonites the Moabites the Egyptians and the Amorites for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands yet the hand of the princes and rulers hath been first in this faithlessness and when I heard this thing I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down appalled then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the faithlessness of them of the captivity and I sat appalled until the evening offering and at the evening offering I arose up from my fasting even with my garment and my mantle rent and I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto Hashem my God and I said O oh my God I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee my God for our iniquities are increased over our head and our guiltiness is grown up unto the heavens since the days of our fathers we have been exceeding guilty unto this day and for our iniquities have we our kings and our priests been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands to the sword to captivity and to spoiling and to confusion of face as it is this day and now for a little moment grace hath been shown from Hashem our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage for we are bondmen yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reviving to set up the house of our God and to repair the ruins thereof and to give us offense in Judah and in Jerusalem and now O our God what shall we say after this for we have forsaken thy commandments which thou hast commanded by thy servants the prophets saying the land unto which ye go to possess it is an unclean land through the uncleanness of the peoples of the lands through their abominations wherewith they have filled it from one end to another with their filthiness now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons neither take their daughters unto your sons nor seek their peace or their prosperity forever that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever and after all that is come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great guilt seeing that thou our God hast punished us less than our iniquities deserve and hast given us such a remnant shall we again break thy commandments and make marriages with the peoples that do these abominations. Wouldest not thou be angry with us till thou hadst consumed us so that there should be no remnant nor any to escape O Hashem the God of Israel thou art righteous for we are left a remnant that is escaped as it is this day behold we are before thee in our guiltiness for none can stand before thee because of this Ezra chapter now while Ezra prayed and made confession weeping and casting himself down before the house of God there was gathered together unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children for the people wept very sore and Shekaniah the son of Jehiel one of the sons of Elam answered and said unto Ezra we have broken faith with our God and have married foreign women of the peoples of the land yet now there is hope for Israel concerning this thing now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of Hashem and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law arise for the matter Belangath unto thee and we are with thee be of good courage and do it then arose Ezra and made the chiefs of the priests the Levites and all Israel to swear that they would do according to this word so they swore then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Jehohanan the son of Eliashib and when he came thither he did eat no bread nor drink water for he mourned because of the faithlessness of them of the captivity and they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem and that whosoever came not within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of the captivity then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within the three days it was the ninth month on the twentieth day of the month and all the people sat in the broad place before the house of God trembling because of this matter and for the great rain and Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them ye have broken faith and have married foreign women to increase the guilt of Israel now therefore make confession unto Hashem the God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the peoples of the land and from the foreign women then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice as thou hast said so it is for us to do but the people are many and it is a time of much rain and we are not able to stand without neither is this a work of one day or two for we have greatly transgressed in this matter let now our princes of all the congregation stand and let all them that are in our cities that have married foreign women come at appointed times and with them the elders of every city and the judges thereof until the fierce 
wrath of our God be turned from us as touching this matter only Jonathan the son of Asahel and Yaziah the son of Tikva stood up against this matter and Meshalam and Shabbatai the Levite helped them and the children of the captivity did so and Ezra the priest with certain heads of Fathers houses after their Fathers houses and all of them by their names were separated and they sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter and they were finished with all the men that had married foreign women by the first day of the first month and among the sons of the priests there were found that had married foreign women namely of the sons of Jeshua the son of Josadak and his brethren Masiah and Elizar and Jerob and Gedaliah and they gave their hand that they would put away their wives and being guilty they offered a ram of the flock for their guilt and of the sons of Immer Hanani and Zebediah and of the sons of Haram Masiah and Elijah and Shemaiah and Jehiel and Uziah and of the sons of Pashur Elioina Masiah Ishmael Nethanel Josabad and Elasa and of the Levites Josabad and Shimei and Keleah the same is Keleta Pethia Judah and Elizar and of the singers Eliashiv and of the porters Shalom and Telem and Uri and of Israel of the sons of Parash Ramia and Isiah and Malchijah and Majaman and Eliezer and Malchijah and Benaiah and of the sons of Elam Matania Zechariah and Jehiel and Abdi and Jeremoth and Elijah and of the Sons of Zato Elioina Eliashib Matania and Jeremoth and Zabad and Aziza and of the sons of Babai Jehohan and Hananiah Zabi Athle and of the sons of Bani Meshalam Malika and Adaya Jashub and Sheel and Ramoth and of the sons of Pahat Moab Adna and Kilal Benaiah Masiya Matania Bezalel and Benwi and Manasseh and of the sons of Haram Elizar Ishaja Malchija Shimea Shimei and Benjamin Malika Shemariah of the sons of Hashem Matina Matata Zabad Ilafelet Jeremiah. Manasseh Shimei of the sons of Bani Ma'ada Emrum and Yuel Benaya Bidi Akila Huvania Mir Moth Eliashib Matania Matina and Jasse and Bani and Benwi Shimei Shalimia and Nathan and Adaya Machnade Beshash I Shere Azarel and Shalimia Shemariah Shalom Amaria Joseph of the sons of Nebo Jeel Matithiah Zabad Zabina Jade and Joel Benaya all these had taken foreign wives and some of them had wives by whom they had children Nehemiah chapter the words of Nehemiah the son of Hakaliah now it came to pass in the month Kislev in the twentieth year as I was in Shushan the castle that Hanani one of my brethren came out of Judah he and certain men and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped that were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem and they said unto me the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and I fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said I beseech thee O Hashem the God of heaven the great and awful God that keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee at this time day and night for thee. Children of Israel thy servants while I confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against thee I and my father's house have sinned we have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments nor the statutes nor the ordinances which thou didst command thy servant Moses remember I beseech thee the word that thou didst command thy servant Moses saying if ye deal treacherously I will scatter you abroad among the peoples but if ye return unto me and Keep my commandments and do them though your dispersed were in the uttermost part of the heaven yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to cause my name to dwell there now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand O Lord I beseech thee let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who delight to fear thy name and prosper I pray thee. Thy servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man now I was cupbearer to the king Nehemiah chapter and it came to pass in the month Nisan in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king when wine was before him that I took up the wine and gave it unto the king now I had not been before time sad in his presence and the king said unto me why is thy countenance sad seeing thou art not sick this is nothing else but sorrow of heart then I was very sore afraid and I said unto the king let the king live forever why should not my countenance be sad when the city the place of my father's sepulchres layeth waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire then the king said unto me for what dost thou make requests so I prayed to the God of heaven and I said unto the king if it please the king and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight that thou wouldest send me unto Judah unto the city of my father's sepulchres that I may build it and the king said unto me the queen also sitting by him for how long shall thy journey be and when wilt thou return so it pleased the king to send me and I set him a time moreover I said unto the king if it please the king let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river that they may let me pass through till I come unto Judah and a letter unto Azaf the keeper of the king's park that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the castle which appertaineth to the house and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into and the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters now the king had sent with me captains of the army and horsemen and when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobia the servant the Ammonite heard of it it grieved them exceedingly for that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel so I came to Jerusalem and was there three 
days and I arose in the night I and some few men with me neither told I any man what my God put into my heart to do for Jerusalem neither was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon and I went out by night by the valley gate even toward the dragon's well and to the dung gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and the gates thereof were consumed with fire then I went on to the fountain gate and to the king's pool but there was no place for the beast. That was under me to pass then went I up in the night in the valley and viewed the wall and I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned and the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did neither had I as yet told it to the Jews nor to the priests nor to the nobles nor to the rulers nor to the rest that did the work then said I unto them yes see the evil case that we are in how Jerusalem lieth waste and the gates thereof are burned with fire come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we be no more a reproach and I told them of the hand of my God which was good upon me as also of the king's words that he had spoken unto me and they said let us rise up and build so they strengthened their hands for the good work but when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite and Geshem the Arabian heard it they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said what is this thing that ye do will ye rebel against the king then answered I them and said unto them the God of heaven he will prosper us therefore we his servants will arise and build but ye have no portion nor right nor memorial in Jerusalem Nehemiah chapter then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brethren the priests and they builded the sheep gate they sanctified it and set up the doors of it even unto the tower of Hamia they sanctified it unto the tower of Hananel and next unto him builded the men of Jericho and next to them builded Zachar the son of Imri and the fish gate did the sons of Hasna build they laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof the bolts thereof and the bars thereof and next unto them repaired Mirmoth the son of Uriah the son of Hakas and next unto them repaired Meshalam the son of Berechiah the son of Meshazabal and next unto them repaired Zadok the son of Bana and next unto them the Tekoites repaired and their nobles put not their necks to the work of their lord and the gate of the old city. Repaired Jwadah the son of Basi and Meshalam the son of Basodiah they laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof and the bolts thereof and the bars thereof and next unto them repaired Melashia the Gibeonite and Jadon the Moronathite the men of Gibeon and of Mizpah for them that appertained to the throne of the governor beyond the river next unto him repaired Uziel the son of Harhai goldsmiths and next unto him repaired Hananiah one of the perfumers and they restored. Jerusalem even unto the broad wall and next unto them repaired Rephiah the son of Hur the ruler of half the district of Jerusalem and next unto them repaired Jedeah the son of Harumaph even over against his house and next unto him repaired Hattish the son of Hashabnia Malchijah the son of Haram and Hashab the son of Pahat Moab repaired another portion and the tower of the furnaces and next unto him repaired Shalom the son of Halahesh the ruler of half the district of Jerusalem. He and his daughters the valley gate repaired Hanun and the inhabitants of Zanoah they built it and set up the doors thereof the bolts thereof and the bars thereof and a thousand cubits of the wall unto the dung gate and the dung gate repaired Malchijah the son of Rechab the ruler of the district of Bethcherim he built it and set up the doors thereof the bolts thereof and the bars thereof and the fountain gate repaired Shalon the son of Kalhoza the ruler of the district of Mizpah he built it and covered it and set up the doors thereof the bolts thereof and the bars thereof and the wall of the pool of Shelah by the king's garden even unto the stairs that go down from the city of David after him repaired Nehemiah the son of Azbuk the ruler of half the district of Bethzur unto the place over against the sepulchres of David and unto the pool that was made and unto the house of the mighty men after him repaired the Levites Reham the son of Bani next unto him repaired. Hashabia the ruler of half the district of Kila for his district after him repaired their brethren Babai the son of Hanadad the ruler of half the district of Kila and next to him repaired Ezer the son of Jeshua the ruler of Mizpah another portion over against the ascent to the armory at the turning after him Barak the son of Zakai earnestly repaired another portion from the turning unto the door of the house of Eliashib the high priest after him repaired Mirmoth the son of Uriah the son of Hak is another portion from the door of the house of Eliashib even to the end of the house of Eliashib and after him repaired the priests the men of the plain after them repaired Benjamin and Hashab over against their house after them repaired Azariah the son of Masiah the son of Ananiah beside his own house after him repaired Benwi the son of Hanadad another portion from the house of Azariah unto the turning and unto the corner Palal the son of Ose repaired over against the turning and the tower that standeth out from the upper house of the king which is by the court of the guard after him Pedaiah the son of Parash repaired now the Nathanim dwelt in Offal unto the place over against the water gate toward the east and the tower that standeth out after him the Tekoites repaired another portion over against the great tower that standeth out and unto the wall of Offal above the horse gate repaired the priests every one over against his own house. After them repaired Zadok the son of Immer over against his own house and after him repaired Shimeah the son of Shekaniah the keeper of the east gate after him repaired Hananiah the son of Shalemiah and Hanan the sixth son of Zalaf another portion after him repaired Meshalam the son of Berechiah over against his chamber after him repaired Malchijah one of the goldsmiths unto the house of the Nathinim and of the merchants over against the gate of Hamifkot and to the upper chamber of the corner and between the upper chamber of the corner and the sheep gate repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants Nehemiah chapter but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews and he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said what do these feeble Jews will they restore at will will they sacrifice will they make an end this day will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish.
Seeing they are burned now Tobia the Ammonite was by him and he said even that which they build if a fox go up he shall break down their stone wall here O our God for we are despised and turn back their reproach upon their own head and give them up to spoiling in a land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee for they have vexed thee before the builders so we built the wall and all the wall was joined together unto half the height thereof for the people had a mind to work but it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem went forward and that the breaches began to be stopped then they were very wroth and they conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion therein but we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them and Judah said the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall and our adversaries said they shall not know neither see till we come into the midst of them and slay them and cause the work to cease and it came to pass that when the Jews that dwelt by them came they said unto us ten times ye must return unto us from all places therefore said I in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall in the open places I even set the people after their families with their swords their spears and their bows and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people be not yet afraid of them remember the Lord who is great and awful and fight for your brethren your sons and your daughters your wives and your houses and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to not that we returned all of us to the wall every one unto his work and it came to pass from that time forth that half of my servants wrought in the work and half of them held the spears the shields and the bows and the coats of mail and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah they that builded the wall and they that bore burdens laded themselves every one with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other held his weapon and the builders every one had his sword girded by his side and so builded and he that sounded the horn was by me and I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people the work is great and large and we are separated upon the wall one far from another in what place soever yet hear the sound of the horn resort yet thither unto us our God will fight for us so we wrought in the work and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared likewise at the same time said I unto the people let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem that in the night they may be a guard to us and may labor in the day so neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard that followed me none of us put off our clothes every one that went to the water had his weapon Nehemiah chapter but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews and he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said what do these feeble Jews will they restore at will will they sacrifice will they make an end this day will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish seeing they are burned now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and he said even that which they build if a fox go up he shall break down their stone wall here O our God for we are despised and turn back their reproach upon their own head and give them up to spoiling in a land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee for they have vexed thee before the builders so we built the wall and all the wall was joined together unto half the height thereof for the people had a mind to work but it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem went forward and that the breaches began to be stopped then they were very wroth and they conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion therein but we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them and Judah said the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall and our adversaries said they shall not know neither see till we come into the midst of them and slay them and cause the work to cease and it came to pass that when the Jews that dwelt by them came they said unto us ten times ye must return unto us from all places therefore set I in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall in the open places I even set the people after their families with their swords their spears and their bows and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people be not yet afraid of them remember the Lord who is great and awful and fight for your brethren your sons and your daughters your wives and your houses and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to not that we returned all of us to the wall every one unto his work and it came to pass from that time forth that half of my servants wrought in the work and half of them held the spears the shields and the bows and the coats of mail and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah they that builded the wall and they that bore burdens laded themselves every one with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other held his weapon and the builders every one had his sword girded by his side and so builded and he that sounded the horn was by me and I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people the work is great and large and we are separated upon the wall one far from another in what place soever yet hear the sound of the horn resort yet thither unto us our God will fight for us so we wrought in the work and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the Stars appeared likewise at the same time said I unto the people let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem that in the night they may be a guard to us and may labor in the day so neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard that followed me none of us put off our clothes every one that went to the water had his weapon Nehemiah chapter now it came to pass when it was reported to Sanballat and Tobiah and to Geshem the Arabian and unto the rest of our 
enemies that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein though even unto that time I had not set up the doors in the gates that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me saying come let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono but they thought to do me mischief and I sent messengers unto them saying I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you and they sent unto me four times. After the sort and I answered them after the same manner then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand wherein was written it is reported among the nations and Geshem saith it that thou and the Jews think to rebel for which cause thou buildest the wall and thou wouldest be their king even according to these words and thou hast also appointed prophets to proclaim of thee at Jerusalem saying there is a king in Judah and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words come now therefore and let us take counsel together then I sent unto him saying there are no such things done as thou sayest but thou feignest them out of thine own heart for they all would have us afraid saying their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done but now strengthen thou my hands and as for me I went unto the house of Shimei the son of Delia the son of Mehedabel who was shut up and he said let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple for they will come to slay thee yet in the night will they come to slay thee and I said should such a man as I flee and who is there that being such as I could go into the temple and live I will not go in and I discerned and lo God had not sent him for he pronounced this prophecy against me whereas Tobia and Sanballat had hired him for this cause was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might taunt me remember oh my god Tobia and Sanballat according to these their works and also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets that would have me put in fear so the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month a little in fifty and two days and it came to pass when all our enemies heard thereof that all the nations that were about us feared and were much cast down in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God moreover in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah and the letters of Tobiah came unto them for there were many in Judah sworn unto him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah the son of Ara and his son Jehohanan had taken the daughter of Meshalam the son of Berechiah to wife also they spoke of his good deeds before me and reported my words to him and Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear Nehemiah chapter now it came to pass when the wall was built and I had set up the doors and the porters and the singers and the levites were appointed that I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah the governor of the castle charge over Jerusalem for he was a faithful man and feared God above many and I said unto them let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot and while they stand on guard let them shut the doors and bar ye them and let watches be appointed of the inhabitants of Jerusalem every one in his watch and every one to be over against his house now the city was wide and large but the people were few therein and the houses were not builded and my God put into my heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by genealogy and I found the book of the genealogy of them that came up at the first and I found written therein these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away and that returned unto Jerusalem and to Judah every one unto his city who came with Zerubbabel, Shua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispareth, Bigvai, Nehambana, the number of the men of the people of Israel, the children of Barash 2170 and two, the children of Shephesha 370 and two, the children of Arah 650 and two, the children of Pahat Moab. Of the children of Jeshua and Job 2,818 the children of Elam 1,250 and 4 the children of Zato 840 and 5 the children of Zakai 703 score the children of Benwi 640 and 8 the children of Babai 620 and 8 the children of Isja 2,320 and 2 the children of Adonikam 603 score and 7 the children of Big Vi 2003 score and 7 the children of Adin 650 and 5 the children of Adar of Hezekiah 90 and 8 the children of Hashem 320 and 8 the children of Bezai 320 and 4 the children of Haraf 112 the children of Gibeon 90 and 5 the men of Bethlehem and Netapha 104 score and 8 the men of Anadhoth 120 and 8 the men of Bethes Maveth 40 and 2. The men of Kiriath Jerim Chephirah and Biroth 740 and 3 the men of Ramah and Geba 620 and 1 the men of Mikmas 120 and 2 the men of Bethel and Ai 120 and 3 the men of the other Nebo 50 and 2 the children of the other Elam 1250 and 4 the children of Haram 320 the children of Jericho 340 and 5 the children of Lod Hadid and Ono 7. 120 and 1 the children of Sina 3930 the priests the children of Jedeah of the house of Jeshua 970 and 3 the children of Immer 1050 and 2 the children of Pashur 1240 and 7 the children of Haram 1017 the Levites the children of Jeshua of Kadmiel of the children of Hodiah 70 and 4 the singers the children of Azaph 140 and 8. 
the porters the children of Shalom the children of Ader the children of Talman the children of Akub the children of Hadada the children of Shobai 138 the Nathinim the children of Zihah the children of Hajufa the children of Tabaith the children of Kuros the children of Sia the children of Padon the children of Lebanon the children of Hagaba the children of Salma the children of Hanan the children of Gadel the children of Gahar the children of Riyah the Children of Rezin, the children of Nekada, the children of Gazam, the children of Uwa, the children of Basi, the children of Basay, the children of Munim, the children of Nefeshizim, the children of Bakbuk, the children of Hakupha, the children of Harhur, the children of Bajlat, the children of Mehida, the children of Harsha, the children of Barkos, the children of Sisira, the children of Tama, the children of Nizia, the children of Hatifa, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of Sotai, the children of Sepharath, the children of Perida, the children of Jala, the children of Darkin, the children of Gedel, the children of Shephesha, the children of Hadal, the children of Pochereth Hazabim, the children of Ammon, all the Nathinim and the children of Solomon's servants were three hundred ninety and two, and these were they that went up from Tel Mela, Tel Harsha, Cherub, Adon, and Immer, but they could not tell their fathers' houses nor their seed whether they were of Israel the children of Delea the children of Tobia the children of Nekada 640 and 2 and of the priests the children of Habai the children of Hakas the children of Barzala who took a wife of the daughters of Barzala the Jalidite and was called after their name these sought their register that is the genealogy but it was not found therefore were they deemed polluted and put from the priesthood and the tears hath said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with Urim and Thummim the whole congregation together was forty and two thousand three hundred and three score beside their men servants and their maid servants of whom there were seven thousand three hundred thirty and seven and they had two hundred forty and five singing men and singing women their horses were seven hundred thirty and six their mules two hundred forty and five their camels four hundred thirty and five their asses six thousand seven hundred and twenty and some from among the heads of fathers houses gave unto the work the tears hatha gave to the treasury a thousand derricks of gold fifty basins five hundred and thirty priests tunics and some of the heads of fathers houses gave into the treasury of the work twenty thousand derricks of gold and two thousand and two hundred pounds of silver and that which the rest of the people gave was twenty thousand derricks of gold and two thousand pounds of silver and three score and seven priests tunics so the priests and the levites and the porters and the singers and some of the people and the Nathanim and all Israel dwelt in their cities and when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in their cities Nehemiah chapter all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the broad place that was before the water gate and they spoke unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which Hashem had commanded to Israel and Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation both men and women and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month and he read therein before the broad place that was before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and of those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law and Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattithiah and Shema and Anna and Uriah and Hilkiah and Masiah on his right hand and on his left hand Pedeah and Missal and Malchijah and Hashem and Hashbadnah Zechariah and Meshalam and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was above all the people and when he opened it all the people stood up and Ezra blessed Hashem the great God and all the people answered Amen Amen with the lifting up of their hands and they bowed their heads and fell down before Hashem with their faces to the ground also Shua and Bani and Cherebiah Jamin Akub Shabbatai Hodiah Masiah Keleda Azariah Josabad Hanan Pileah even the Levites caused the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place and they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and they gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading and Nehemiah who was the tears Hatha and Ezra the priest the scribe and the Levites that taught the people said Unto all the people this day is holy unto Hashem your God mourn not nor weep for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law then he said unto them go your way eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto him for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our Lord neither be ye grieved for the joy of Hashem is your strength so the Levites stilled all the people saying hold your peace for the day is holy neither be ye grieved and all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them and on the second day were gathered together the heads of Fathers houses of all the people the priests and the Levites unto Ezra the scribe even to give attention to the words of the law and they found written in the law how that Hashem had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem saying go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and branches of wild olive and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written so the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths every one upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and in the broad place of the water gate and in the broad place of the gate. 
of Ephraim and all the congregation of them that were come back out of the captivity made booths and dwelt in the booths for since the days of Joshua the son of Nun unto that day had not the children of Israel done so and there was very great gladness also day by day from the first day unto the last day he read in the book of the law of God and they kept the feast seven days and on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the ordinance Nehemiah chapter now in the twenty. And fourth day of this month the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloth and earth upon them and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all foreigners and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers and they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of Hashem their God a fourth part of the day and another fourth part they confessed and prostrated themselves before Hashem their God then stood up upon the platform of the Levitz Shua and Bani Kadmiel Shabanya Buni Sherebia Bani and Chanani and cried with a loud voice unto Hashem their God then the Levitz Shua and Kadmiel Bani Hashabnia Sherebia Hodia Shabanya and Pethaya said stand up and bless Hashem your God from everlasting to everlasting and let them say blessed be thy glorious name that is exalted above all blessing and praise thou art Hashem even thou alone thou hast made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host the earth and all things that are thereon the seas and all that is in them and thou preservest them all and the host of heaven worshipeth thee thou art Hashem the God who didst choose Abram and broughtest him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gavest him the name of Abraham and foundest his heart faithful before thee and madest a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanite the Hittite the Amorite and the Peretzite and the Jebusite and the Girgashite even to give it unto his seed and hast performed thy words for thou art righteous and thou sawest the affliction of our fathers in Egypt and heardest their cry by the Red Sea and didst show signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on all his servants and on all the people of his land for thou knewest that they dealt proudly against them and didst get thee a name as it is this day and thou didst divide the sea before them so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land and their pursuers thou didst cast into the depths as a stone into the mighty waters moreover in a pillar of cloud thou didst lead them by day and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light in the way wherein they should go thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai and spokest with them from heaven and gavest them right ordinances and laws of truth good statutes and commandments and madest known unto them thy holy sabbath and didst command them commandments and statutes and a law by the hand of Moses thy servant and gavest them bread from heaven for their hunger and broughtest forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst and didst command them that they should go in to possess the land which thou hadst lifted up thy hand to give them but they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their neck and hearkened not to thy commandments and refused to hearken neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them but hardened their neck and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and plenteous in mercy and forsookest them not yet when they had made them a molten calf and said this is thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt and had wrought great provocations yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness the pillar of cloud departed not from over them by day to lead them in the way neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way wherein they should go thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth and gavest them water for their thirst ye forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness and they lacked nothing their clothes waxed not old and their feet swelled not moreover thou gavest them kingdoms and peoples which thou didst allot quarter by quarter so they possessed the land of Sihon even the land of the king of Heshbon and the land of Og king of Bashan there. Children also didst thou multiply as the stars of heaven and didst bring them into the land concerning which thou didst say to their fathers that they should go in to possess it so the children went in and possessed the land and thou didst subdue before them the inhabitants of the land the Canaanites and gavest them into their hands with their kings and the peoples of the land that they might do with them as they would and they took fortified cities and a fat land and possessed houses full. Of all good things cisterns hewn out vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance so they did eat and were filled and became fat and luxuriated in thy great goodness nevertheless they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their back and slew thy prophets that did forewarn them to turn them back unto thee and they wrought great provocations therefore thou didst deliver them into the hand of their adversaries who distressed them and in the time of their Trouble when they cried unto thee thou heardest from heaven and according to thy manifold mercies thou gavest them saviors who might save them out of the hand of their adversaries but after they had rest they did evil again before thee therefore didst thou leave them in the hand of their enemies so that they had the dominion over them yet when they returned and cried unto thee many times didst thou hear from heaven and deliver them according to thy mercies and didst forewarn them that thou mightest bring them back unto thy law yet they dealt proudly and hearkened not unto thy commandments but sinned against thine ordinances which if a man do he shall live by them and presented a stubborn shoulder and hardened their neck and would not hear yet many years didst thou extend mercy unto them and didst forewarn them by thy spirit through thy prophets yet would they not give ear therefore gavest thou them into the hand of the peoples of the lands nevertheless in thy manifold mercies. Thou didst not utterly consume them nor forsake them for thou art a gracious and merciful God now therefore our God the great the mighty and the awful God who keepest covenant and mercy let not all the travail seem little before thee that hath come upon us on our kings on our princes and on our priests and on our prophets and on our fathers and on all thy people since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day howbeit thou art just in all that is come upon us for thou hast dealt truly.
but we have done wickedly neither have our kings our princes our priests nor our fathers kept thy law nor hearkened unto thy commandments and thy testimonies wherewith thou didst testify against them for they have not served thee in their kingdom and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them and in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them neither turned they from their wicked works behold we are servants this day and as for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof behold we are servants in it and it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins also they have power over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure and we are in great distress Nehemiah chapter and yet for all this we make a sure covenant and subscribe it and our princes our levites and our priests set their seal unto it now those that set their seal were Nehemiah the tears hath of the son of Hashalia. And Zedekiah Syria Azariah Jeremiah Pashur Amariah Malchijah Hattish Shabanya Malika Haram Mir Moth Obadiah Daniel Jinethon Barak Meshalam Abijam Ijaman Mazia Bilgai Shimea These were the priests and the Levites Shua the son of Azaniah Benwi of the sons of Hanadad Kadmiel and their brethren Shabanya Hodia Kelada Pelea Hanan Micariab Hashabia Zakar Sharebia Shabanya Hodia Bani Benano the chiefs of the people Parash Pahat Moab Elam Zado Bani Buni is Jid Babaya Donija Big Vaya Din Ader Hezekiah Eight Sir Hodia Hashem Bezai Harif Anat Hoth Nebai Makbiash Meshalam Hezair Meshazabal Zadok Jadwa Palashia Hanan Anna Hashia Hananiah Hashab Halahesh Pilasho Begriham Hashabna Masiya and Aya Hanan Anan Malika Haram Bana and the rest of the people the priests the Levites the porters the singers the Nathinim and all they that had separated themselves from the peoples of the lands unto the law of God there. Wives their sons and their daughters every one that had knowledge and understanding they cleaved to their brethren their nobles and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's law which was given by Moses the servant of God and to observe and do all the commandments of Hashem our Lord and his ordinances and his statutes and that we would not give our daughters unto the peoples of the land nor take their daughters for our sons and if the peoples of the land bring where or any vittles on the Sabbath day to sell that we would not buy of them on the Sabbath or on a holy day and that we would forego the seventh year and the exaction of every debt also we made ordinances for us to charge ourselves yearly with the third part of a shekel for the service of the house of our God for the showbread and for the continual meal offering and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbaths of the new moons for the appointed seasons and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of our God and we cast lots the priests the Levites and the people for the wood offering to bring it into the house of our God according to our fathers houses at times appointed year by year to burn upon the altar of Hashem our God as it is written in the law and to bring the first fruits of our land and the first fruits of all fruit of all manner of trees year by year unto the house of Hashem also the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle as it is written in the law and the firstlings of our herds and of our flocks to bring to the house of our God unto the priests that minister in the house of our God and that we should bring the first of our dough and our heave offerings and the fruit of all manner of trees the wine and the oil unto the priests to the chambers of the house of our God and the tithes of our land unto the Levites for they the Levites take the tithes in all the cities of our tillage. And the priest the son of Aaron shall be with the Levites when the Levites take tithes and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes unto the house of our God to the chambers into the treasure house for the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the heave offering of the corn of the wine and of the oil unto the chambers where are the vessels of the sanctuary and the priests that minister and the porters and the singers and we will not forsake the house of our God. Nehemiah chapter and the princes of the people dwelt in Jerusalem the rest of the people also cast lots to bring one of ten to dwell in Jerusalem the holy city and nine parts in the other cities and the people blessed all the men that willingly offered themselves to dwell in Jerusalem now these are the chiefs of the province that dwelt in Jerusalem but in the cities of Judah dwelt everyone in his possession in their cities to wit Israelites the priests and the Levites and the Nathanim. And the children of Solomon's servants and in Jerusalem dwelt certain of the children of Judah and of the children of Benjamin of the children of Judah Adiah the son of Uzziah the son of Zechariah the son of Amariah the son of Shephashah the son of Mahalalel of the children of Puraz and Masiah the son of Barak the son of Kalhoza the son of Haziah the son of Adiah the son of Zhuagarab the son of Zechariah the son of the Shilonite all the sons of Puraz that dwelt in Jerusalem were. 403 score and 8 valiant men and these are the sons of Benjamin Salu the son of Meshalam the son of Jod the son of Pedea the son of Kolea the son of Masiah the son of Ithiel the son of Jshia and after him Gabay Salai 920 and 8 and Joel the son of Zikri was their overseer and Judah the son of Hasanua who was second over the city of the priests Jedeah the son of Jwarab Jachin Sirea the son of Hilkiah the son of Meshalam the son of Zadok the son of Mirath the son of Ahid of the ruler of the house of God and their brethren that did the work of the house 820 and 2 and Adaiah the son of Jeroham the son of Pelaliah the son of Amzah the son of Zechariah the son of Pashur the son of Malchijah and his brethren chiefs of Fathers houses 240 and 2 and Amashsai the son of Azarel the son of Azay the son of Meshalemeth the son of Immer and their brethren mighty men of valor a hundred. 20 and 8 and their overseer was Zabdiel the son of Hagadalim and of the Levites Shimea the son of Hashab the son of Azrakam the son of Hashabiah the son of Buni and Shabbatai and Josabat of the chiefs of the Levites who had the oversight of the outward business of the house of God and Matania the son of Micah the son of Zabdi the son of Azaph who was the chief to begin the thanksgiving in prayer and Bakbukiah the second among his brethren and Abdah the son of Shamua the son 
of Galal the son of Jeduth and all the Levites in the holy city were two hundred fourscore and four moreover the porters Akub Talman and their brethren that kept watch at the gates were a hundred seventy and two and the residue of Israel of the priests the Levites were in all the cities of Judah every one in his inheritance but the Nathanim dwelt in Ophel and Zihah and Jishba were over the Nathanim the overseer also of the Levites at Jerusalem was Utzi the son of Bani the son of Hashabiah the son of Matania the son of Micah of the sons of Azap the singers over the business of the house of God for there was a commandment from the king concerning them and a sure ordinance concerning the singers as every day required and Pethia the son of Meshazabal of the children of Zerah the son of Judah was at the king's hand in all matters concerning the people and for the villages with their fields some of the children of Judah dwelt in Kiriatharba and the towns thereof and in Dibon and the towns thereof and in Jechabzeel and the villages thereof and in Shua and in Molata and Bethbalat and in Hazarshual and in Beersheba and the towns thereof and in Ziklag and in Makana and in the towns thereof and in Enrimen and in Zara and in Jarmuth Zanoa Adullam and their villages Lachish and the fields thereof Azekah and the towns thereof so they encamped from Beersheba unto the valley of Hinnom and the children of Benjamin from Geba onward at Mikmas and Ijah and at Bethel and the towns thereof at Anad Hothnab Ananiah Hazarama Gittam Hadid Zeboim Nebalat Lot and Ono Gee Harashim and of the Levites certain courses in Judah were joined to Benjamin Nehemiah chapter now these are the priests and the Levites that went up with Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Shua Sireh Jeremiah Ezra Amaria Malachah Hadish Shekaniah Rehamir Mothido Jenethoi Abijam Ijaman Maadia Bilga Shemaya and Shwarab Jediah Salua Mukhilkia Jediah these were the chiefs of the priests and their brethren in the days of Shua moreover the Levites Shua ben we Kadmiel Sherebia Judah and Matania who was over the thanksgiving he and his brethren also Bakbukia and Uni their brethren were over against them in wards and Shua begot Shwadakim and Shwadakim begot Eliashib and Eliashib begot Shwadada and Shwadada begot Jonathan and Jonathan begot Jadwa and in the days of Shwadakim were priests heads of Fathers houses of Syria Miraiah of Jeremiah Hananiah of Ezra Meshalam of Amaria Jehohanan of Melico Jonathan of Shabanya Joseph of Haram Adna of Miraiah Helka of Ido Zechariah of Jenethon Meshalam of Abijah Zikri of Miniamon of Modia Piltai of Bilga Shamua of Shemaya Jehonathan and of Shwagar of Matina of Jedeah Utzi of Salai Kalai of Amuk Eber of Hilkiah Hashabia of Jedeah Nethanel the Levites in the days of Eliashiv Shwadada and Yohanan and Jadwa were Recorded heads of Fathers' houses also the priests in the reign of Darius the Persian the sons of Levi heads of Fathers' houses were written in the book of the Chronicles even until the days of Yohanan the son of Eliashib and the chiefs of the Levites Hashabia Sherebia and Shua the son of Kadmiel with their brethren over against them to praise and give thanks according to the commandment of David the man of God ward against ward Matania and Bakbukia Obadiah Meshalam Talman Akub were porters keeping the ward at the storehouses of the gates these were in the days of Shwadakim the son of Shua the son of Josadak and in the days of Nehemiah the governor and of Ezra the priest the scribe and at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness both with thanksgivings and with singing with cymbal psalteries and with harps and the sons of the singers gathered themselves together both out of the plain round about Jerusalem and from the villages of the Netophathites also from Beth Gilgal and out of the fields of Geba and Azmaveth for the singers had builded them villages round about Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites purified themselves and they purified the people and the gates and the wall then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall and appointed two great companies that gave thanks and went in procession on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate and after them went Hashiah and half of the princes of Judah and Azariah Ezra and Meshalam Judah and Benjamin and Shemaiah and Jeremiah and certain of the priests sons with trumpets Zechariah the son of Jonathan the son of Shemaiah the son of Matania the son of Micaiah the son of Zachar the son of Azaph and his brethren Shemaiah and Azarel Milalai Jalal Amai Nethanel and Judah Hanani with the musical instruments of David the man of God and Ezra the Scribe was before them and by the fountain gate and straight before them they went up by the stairs of the city of David at the going up of the wall above the house of David even unto the water gate eastward and the other company of them that gave thanks went to meet them and I after them with the half of the people upon the wall above the tower of the furnaces even unto the broad wall and above the gate of Ephraim and by the gate of the old city and by the fish gate and the tower of Hananel and the tower of Hamia even unto the sheep gate and they stood still in the gate of the guard so stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God and I and the half of the rulers with me and the priests Iliakim Masiah Miniam and Micaiah Elioina Zechariah and Hananiah with trumpets and Masiah and Shemaiah and Eliezer and Utzi and Jehohanan and Malchijah and Elam and Ezer and the singers sang loud with Jezreel their overseer and they offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced for God had made them rejoice with great joy and the women also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off and on that day were men appointed over the chambers for the treasures for the heave offerings for the first fruits and for the tithes to gather into them according to the fields of the cities the portions appointed by the law for the priests and Levites for Judah rejoiced for the priests and for the Levites that took 
their stations and they kept the word of their God and the word of the purification and so did the singers and the porters according to the commandment of David and of Solomon his son for in the days of David and Asaph of old there were chief of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God and all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave the portions of the singers and the porters as every day required and they hallowed for the Levites and the Levites. Hallowed for the sons of Aaron Nehemiah chapter on that day they read in the book of Moses in the hearing of the people and therein was found written that an Ammonite and a Moabite should not enter into the assembly of God forever because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water but hired Balaam against them to curse them howbeit our God turned the curse into a blessing and it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the alien mixture now before this Eliashiv the priest who was appointed over the chambers of the house of our God being allied unto Tobiah had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meal offerings the frankincense and the vessels and the tithes of the corn the wine and the oil which were given by commandment to the Levites and the singers and the porters and the heave offerings for the priests but in all this time I was not at Jerusalem for in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes king of Babylon I went unto the king and after certain days asked I leave of the king and I came to Jerusalem and understood the evil that Eliashiv had done for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God and it grieved me sore therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber then I commanded and they cleansed the chambers and thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God with the meal offerings and the frankincense and I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them so that the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled every one to his field then contended I with the rulers and said why is the house of God forsaken and I gathered them together and set them in their place then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the wine and the oil unto the treasuries and I made treasurers over the treasuries Shalemiah the priest and Zadok the scribe and of the Levites Pedaiah and next to them was Hanan the son of Zachar the son of Matania for they were counted faithful and their office was to distribute unto their brethren remember me O my God concerning this and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the wards thereof in those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in heaps of corn and lading asses therewith as also wine grapes and figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day and I forewarned them in the day wherein they sold victuals. there dwelt men of Tyre also therein who brought in fish and all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them what evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day did not your fathers thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon the city yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath and it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath I commanded that the doors should be shut and commanded that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath and some of my servants set I over the gates that there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day so the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice then I forewarned them and said unto them why lodge ye about the wall if ye do so again I will lay hands on you from that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath and I commanded the Levites that they should purify themselves and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day remember unto me O my God this also and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy in those days also saw I the Jews that had married women of Ashdod of Ammon and of Moab and their children spoke half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language but according to the language of each people and I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons nor take their daughters for your sons or for yourselves did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things yet among many nations was there no king like him and he was beloved of his God and God made him king over all Israel nevertheless even him did the foreign women cause to sin shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil to break faith with our God in marrying foreign women and one of the sons of Jehoiada the son of Eliashiv the high priest was son-in-law to Sanballat the Horonite therefore I chased him from me remember them O oh my God because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites thus cleansed I them from everything foreign and appointed wards for the priests and for the Levites every one in his work and for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits remember me O oh my God for good I Chronicles chapter Adam Seth and Ashkenan and Mahalil Jared Enoch Methuselah Lamech Noah Shem Ham and Japheth the sons of Japheth Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tiraz and the sons of Gomer Ashkenaz and Diphath and Togarmah and the sons of Javan Elisha and Tars Hishkitim and Rodanim the sons of Ham Cush and Mizraim put and Canaan and the sons of Cush Seba and Havilah and Sabta and Ramah and Sabteca and the sons of Ramah Sheba and Adon and Cush begot Nimrod he began to be a mighty one in the earth and Mizraim begot Ludim and Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtuhim and Pathrosim and Kasluhim from whence came the Philistines and Kaphtarim and Canaan begot Zidon his firstborn and Hate and the Jebusite and the Amorite and the Girgashite and the Hivite and the Archite and the Sinite and the 
Arvidite and the Zamarite and the Hamathite the sons of Shem Elam and Ashur and Arpakshad and Lud and Aram and Uz and Hul and Gether and Meshech and Arpakshad begot Shela and Shela begot Eber and unto Eber were born two sons the name of the one was Peleg for in his days the earth was divided and his brother's name was Joktan and Joktan begot Almodad and Shalef and Hazar Mabeth and Jera and Hadoram and Uzal and Dikla and Ebel and Abimael and Sheba and Ophir and Havilah and Jabab all these were the sons of Joktan Shem Arpakshad Shela Eber Peleg Rusirig Nahar Tara Abram the same is Abraham the sons of Abraham Isaac and Ishmael these are their generations the firstborn of Ishmael Nebaioth then Kedar and Adbeel and Mipsam Mishma and Duma Masahadad and Tima Jeter Napish and Kedem these are the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Keturah Abraham's concubine she bore Zimran and Jokshan and Madan and Midian and Ishbak and Shuah and the sons of Jokshan Sheba and Adon and the sons of Midian Ephah and Ephor and Hanak and Abida and Eldah all these were the sons of Keturah and Abraham begot Isaac the sons of Isaac Esau and Israel the sons of Esau Eliphaz Ruel and Jush and Jalam and Korah the sons of Eliphaz Taman and Omar Zephi and Gadam Kenaz and Timnah and Amalek the sons of Ruel Nahat Zerah Shammah and Mizah and the sons of Seir Laden and Shobal and Zibian and Anna and Dishan and Ezer and Dishan and the sons of Laden Hori and Homam and Timnah was Laden's sister the sons of Shobalalian and Manahath and Ebel Shephi and Onam and the sons of Zibianea and Anna the sons of Anna Dishan and the sons of Dishan Hamran and Eshban and Ithran and Jerun the sons of Ezer Bilhan and Zavan Jakin the sons of Dishanaz and Aaron now these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel Bela the son of Beer and the name of his city was Dinhab and Bela died and Jabab the son of Zerah of Basra reigned in his stead and Jabab died and Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his stead and Husham died and Hadad the son of Bedad who smote Midian in the field of Moab reigned in his stead and the name of his city was Abath and Hadad died and Samla of Masrika reigned in his stead and Samla died and Shal of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his stead and Shal died and Baal Hanan the son of Akbar reigned in his stead and Baal Hanan died and Hadad reigned in his stead and the name of his city was Pi and his wife's name was Mehedabel the daughter of Matri the daughter of Mazahab and Hadad died and the chiefs of Edom were the chief of Timnah the chief of Alva the chief of Jethet the chief of Ohalabama the chief of Ila the chief of Pinyon the chief of Kenaz the chief of Taman the chief of Mibzar the chief of Magdal the chief of Iram these are the chiefs of Edom my chronicles chapter these are the Sons of Israel Reuben Simeon Levi and Judah Issachar and Zebulun Dan Joseph and Benjamin Naphtali Gad and Asher the sons of Judah Er and Onan and Shelah which three were born unto him of Bath Shua the Canaanites and Er Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of Hashem and he slew him and Tamar his daughter-in-law bore him Purus and Zerah all the sons of Judah were five the sons of Purus Hezron and Hamel and the sons of Zerah Zimri and Ethan and Heman and Calcal and Dara five of them in all and the sons of Carmi Achar the troubler of Israel who committed a trespass concerning the devoted thing and the sons of Ethan Azariah the sons also of Hezron that were born unto him Jeremiel and Ram and Kelebi and Ram begot Ammonadab and Ammonadab begot Nashon prince of the children of Judah and Nashon begot Salma and Salma begot Boaz and Boaz begot Obed and Obed begot Jesse and Jesse begot his firstborn Eliab and Abinadab the second and Shimea the third. Nathanael the fourth Radai the fifth Azam the sixth David the seventh and their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail and the sons of Zeruiah Abishai and Job and Asahel three and Abigail bore Amasa and the father of Amasa was Jether the Ishmaelite and Caleb the son of Hezron begot children of Ajabah his wife and of Jeriath and these were her sons Tshur and Shobab and Arden and Ajabah died and Caleb took unto him Ephrath who bore him her and her begot Uri and Uri begot Bezalel and Afterward Hezron went into the daughter of Machir the father of Gilead whom he took to wife when he was threescore years old and she bore him Segub and Segub begot Jahir who had three and twenty cities in the land of Gilead and Geshur and Aram took Havoth Jahir from them with Kanath and the villages thereof even threescore cities all these were the sons of Machir the father of Gilead and after that Hezron was dead in Caleb Ephrath then Abia Hezron's wife bore him Asher the father of Tekoa and the sons of Jeremiel the firstborn of Hezron were Ram the firstborn and Buna and Oren and Azamahijah and Jeremiel had another wife whose name was Adarah she was the mother of Onam and the sons of Ram the firstborn of Jeremiel were Maz and Jamin and Eker and the sons of Onam were Shammai and Jada and the sons of Shammai Nadab and Abishur and the name of the wife of Abishur was Abihail and she bore him Aban and Molad and the sons of Nadab sealed and Abam but sealed died without children and the sons of Apamishi and the sons of Ishi Sheshan and the sons of Sheshan Alei and the sons of Jada the brother of Shammai Jether and Jonathan and Jether died without children and the sons of Jonathan Pulath and Zaza these were the sons of Jeremiel now Sheshan had no sons but daughters and Sheshan had a servant an Egyptian whose name was Jarha so Sheshan gave his daughter to Jarha his servant to wife and she bore him a tie and a tie begot Nathan and Nathan begot Zabad and Zabad begot Ephlal and Ephlal begot Obad and Obad begot Jehu and Jehu begot Azariah and Azariah begot Helez and Helez begot Eleazar and Eleazar begot Sisamai and Sisamai begot Shalom and Shalom begot Jekamia and Jekamia begot Elishama and the sons of Caleb the brother of Jeremiel were Mesha his firstborn who was the father of Ziv and the sons of Mershah the father of Hebron and the sons of Hebron Korah and Tapwah and Rekam and Shema and Shema.
begot Raham the father of Horkim and Recham begot Shammai and the son of Shammai was Mon and Mon was the father of Beth Zur and Ephah Caleb's concubine bore Haran and Moza and Gazez and Haran begot Gazez and the sons of Yadeh Regem and Jotham and Gazhan and Pulit and Ephah and Shaaf Maka Caleb's concubine bore Sheber and Tiranah and the wife of Shaaf the father of Madmana bore Sheba the father of Machbana and the father of Jibia and the daughter of Caleb was Exodus. Were the sons of Caleb the sons of Hur the firstborn of Ephrath Shobal the father of Kiriath Jerim Salma the father of Bethlehem Harif the father of Bethgader and Shobal the father of Kiriath Jerim had sons Haroi and half of the Menuhoth and the families of Kiriath Jerim the Ithrites and the Puthites and the Shemathites and the Mishrates of them came the Zarathites and the Eshtotalites the sons of Salma Bethlehem and the Netophathites Atroth Beth Job and half of the Manahatites the Zorites and the families of scribes that dwelt at Jabez the Tyrathites the Shemithites the Sukkothites these are the Kenites that came of Hamath the father of the house of Rechab I Chronicles chapter now these were the sons of David that were born unto him in Hebron the firstborn Amnon of Ahinoam the Jezreelites the second Daniel of Abigail the Carmelites the third Absalom the son of Maka the daughter of Talma king of Geshur the fourth Adonijah the son of Hajith the fifth Shephisha of Abidal the sixth Ithrim by Eglah his wife six were born unto him in Hebron and there he reigned seven years and six months and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years and these were born unto him in Jerusalem Shimea and Shobab and Nathan and Solomon four of Bathshua the daughter of Amiel and Abhar and Elishama and Eliphelet and Noga and Nepheg and Japhiah and Elishama and Iliada and Eliphelet nine all these were the sons of David beside. The sons of the concubines and Tamar was their sister and Solomon's son was Rehoboam Abijah his son Asa his son Jehoshaphat his son Joram his son Ahaziah his son Joash his son Amaziah his son Azariah his son Jotham his son Ahaz his son Hezekiah his son Manasseh his son Ammon his son Josiah his son and the sons of Josiah the firstborn Yohanan the second Jehoiakim the third Zedekiah the fourth Shalom and the sons of Jehoiakim Jeconiah his son Zedekiah his son and the sons of Jeconiah the same is Asur Shealtiel his son and Malchiram and Pedeah and Shenitzer Jekamiah Hashima and Nedabiah and the sons of Pedeah Zerubbabel and Shimei and the sons of Zerubbabel Meshalam and Hananiah and Shalamith was their sister and Hashuba and Ohel and Berechiah and Hasadiah Jushav East 5 and the sons of Hananiah Palatia and Jeshiah the sons of Jeshiah Rephiah the sons of Rephiah Arnon the sons of Arnon Obadiah the sons of Obadiah Shekaniah and the sons of Shekaniah Shemaiah and the sons of Shemaiah Hattish and Agal and Beria and Neria and Shaphat 6 and the sons of Neria Elioena and Hizkiah and Azrakam 3 and the sons of Elioena Hodavia and Eliashiv and Pelea and Akub and Yohanan and Delia and Anani 7 I Chronicles chapter the sons of Judah Purus Hezron and Carmi and Hur and Shobal and Rea the son of Shobal begot Hahat and Hahat begot Ahume and Lahad these are the families of the Zorathites and these were the sons of the father of Etam Jezreel and Ishma and Idbash and the name of their sister was Hazlil Pony and Penuel the father of Geder and Ezer the father of Husha these are the sons of Hur the firstborn of Ephrath the father of Bethlehem and Ashur the father of Tekoa had two wives Hela and Nara and Nara bore him Ahuzam and Heper and Timani and Ahashtari these were the sons of Nara and the sons of Hela were Zerath and Zohar and Ethnan and Kaz begotten of and Zobiba and the families of Aharhel the son of Haram and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called his name Jabez saying because I bore him with pain and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my border and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest work deliverance from evil that it may not pain me and God granted him that which he requested and Keelab the brother of Shuha begot Mehir who was the father of Eshton and Eshton begot Bethrapha and Pasi and Tehina the father of Iarnahash these are the men of Rekha and the sons of Kenaz Othnidal and Syria and the sons of Othnidal Hadhat and Meanutai begot Ophra and Syria begot Job the father of Ge Harashim for they were craftsmen and the sons of Caleb the son of Jephunna Iru Ila and Nam and the sons of Ila Kenaz and the sons of Jehalel Zif and Zifatiria and Asarel and the sons of Ezrach Jether and Mird and Ephra and Jalen and she bore Miriam and Shammai and Ishba the father of Eshtimo and his wife Hajgudajab bore Jared the father of Geder and Heber the father of Soko and Jekathiel the father of Zeno and these are the sons of Bithia the daughter of Pharaoh whom Mir took and the sons of the wife of Hodia the sister of Naham were the father of Gila the Garmite and Eshtimo the Mahakathite and the sons of Shimon Amnon and Rinna Ben Hanan and Tilan and the sons of Ishi Zohate and Ben Zohate. The sons of Shelah the son of Judah E are the father of Lecha and Lada the father of Mershah and the families of the house of them that wrought fine linen of the house of Ashbi and Jochim and the men of Kuzba and Joash and Seraph who had dominion in Moab and Jashubi Lehem and the records are ancient these were the potters and those that dwelt among plantations and hedges there they dwelt occupied in the king's work the sons of Simeon Nemuel and Jamim Jerubzira Shal Shalom his son. Mipsam his son Mishma his son and the sons of Mishma Hamuel his son Zachar his son Shimei his son and Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters but his brethren had not many children neither did all their family multiply like to the children of Judah and they dwelt at Beersheba and Molada and Hazarshual and at Bilhah and at Izem and at Tolad and at Bethwil and at Horma and at Ziklag and at Bethmarkaboth and Hazarsuzim and at Bethbiri and at Jaaraim these were their cities.
Unto the reign of David and their villages were Etam and Anruman and Takan and Ashan five cities and all their villages that were round about the same cities unto Baal these were their habitations and they have their genealogy and Meshobab and Jamlek and Joshua the son of Amaziah and Joel and Jehu the son of Joshivia the son of Syria the son of Asiel and Elioena and Jacobah and Shuaiah and Asaiah and Adil and Jezameel and Benaiah and Ziza the son of Shiphi the son of Alon the son of Jedeah the son of Shimri the son of Shimea these mentioned by name were princes in their families and their fathers houses increased greatly and they went to the entrance of Geder even unto the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks and they found fat pasture and good and the land was wide and quiet and peaceable for they that dwelt there aforetime were of Ham and these written by name came in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah and smote there tents and the Munim that were found there and destroyed them utterly unto this day and dwelt in their stead because there was pasture there for their flocks and some of them even of the sons of Simeon five hundred men went to Mount Seir having for their captains Belashia and Neria and Rephiah and Uziel the sons of Ishi and they smote the remnant of the Amalekites that escaped and dwelt there unto this day I Chronicles chapter and the sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel for he was the firstborn but for as much as he defiled his father's couch his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph the son of Israel yet not so that he was to be reckoned in the genealogy as firstborn for Judah prevailed above his brethren and of him came he that is the prince but the birthright was Joseph as the sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel Hanak and Paluhezron and Carmi the sons of Joel Shimea his son Gog his son Shimei his son Micah his son Reah his son Baal his son Bera his son whom Tilligath Pilnazar king of Assyria carried away captive he was prince of the Reubenites and his brethren by their families when the genealogy of their generations was reckoned the chief Jeel and Zechariah and Bela the son of Azaz the son of Shema the son of Joel who dwelt in Aro or even unto Nebo and Baalmian and eastward he dwelt even unto the entrance of the wilderness from the river Euphrates because their cattle were multiplied in the land of Gilead. And in the days of Saul they made war with the Hagrites who fell by their hand and they dwelt in their tents throughout all the land east of Gilead and the sons of Gad dwelt over against them in the land of Bashan unto Salka Joel the chief and Shapham the second and Jana and Shaphat in Bashan and their brethren of their fathers houses Michael and Meshalem and Sheba and Jore and Jachin and Zia and Eber seven these were the sons of Abihail the son of Uri the son of Yero the son of Gilead the son of Michael the son of Jehishai the son of Yahu the son of Buzahi the son of Abdeel the son of Guni chief of their fathers houses and they dwelt in Gilead in Bashan and in the towns thereof and in all the open lands of the plain upon their borders all these were reckoned by genealogies in the days of Jotham king of Judah and in the days of Jeroboam king of Israel the sons of Reuben and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh as many as were valiant men men able to bear buckler and sword and to shoot with bow and skillful in war were forty and four thousand seven hundred and three score that were able to go forth to war and they made war with the Hagrites with Jeter and Napish and Nodab and they were helped against them and the Hagrites were delivered into their hand and all that were with them for they cried to God in the battle and he was entreated of them because they put their trust in him and they took away their cattle of their camels fifty thousand and of sheep two hundred and fifty thousand and of asses two thousand and of souls of men a hundred thousand for there fell many slain because the war was of God and they dwelt in their stead until the captivity and the children of the half tribe of Manasseh dwelt in the land from Bashan unto Baal Hermon and Sinir and Mount Hermon where they increased and these were the heads of their fathers houses Ephor and Ishi and Eliel and Azrael and Jeremiah and Hodavia and Yadiel mighty men of valor famous men heads of their fathers houses and they broke faith with the god of their fathers and went astray after the gods of the peoples of the land whom god destroyed before them and the god of israel stirred up the spirit of pool king of assyria and the spirit of tilligath pilnazar king of assyria and he carried them away even the reubenites and the gadites and the half tribe of manasseh and brought them unto hala and haber and hara and to the river of gozan unto this day the sons of Levi Gershon Kohat and Merari and the sons of Kohat Amram Izar and Hebron and Uziel and the children of Amram Aaron and Moses and Miriam and the sons of Aaron Nadab and Abihu Eliezer and Ithamar Eliezer begot Phinehas Phinehas begot Abishua and Abishua begot Bukai and Bukai begot Uzi and Uzi begot Zeriah and Zeriah begot Miraith Miraith begot Amariah and Amariah begot Ahidab and Ahidab begot Zadok and Zadok begot Ahamaz and Ahamaz begot Azariah and Azariah begot Yohanan and Yohanan begot Azariah he it is that executed the priest's office in the house that Solomon built in Jerusalem and Azariah begot Amariah and Amariah begot Ahidab and Ahidab begot Zadok and Zadok begot Shalom and Shalom begot Hilkiah and Hilkiah begot Azariah and Azariah begot Syria and Syria begot Jehozadak and Jehozadak went into captivity when Hashem carried away Judah and Jerusalem by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar I Chronicles chapter the Sons of Levi Gershom Kohat and Merari and these are the names of the sons of Gershom Libni and Shimei and the sons of Kohat were Amram and Izar and Hebron and Uziel the sons of Merari Mali and Mushi and these are the families of the Levites according to their fathers houses of Gershom Libni his son Hahad his son Tsima his son Joah his son Edo his son Zira his son Jotharai his son the sons of Kohat Amanadab his son Korah his son Asur his son Elkanah his son and 
Ebias of his son and Asur his son Tahat his son Uriel his son Uziah his son and Shal his son and the sons of Elkanah Amase and Ahimoth as for Elkanah the sons of Elkanah Zaphai his son and Nahat his son Eliab his son Jeroham his son Elkanah his son and the sons of Samuel the firstborn Vashni then Abia the sons of Merari Mali Libni his son Shimei his son Uah his son Shimea his son Haggia his son Asaiah his son and these are they whom David set over the service of song. In the house of Hashem after that the ark had rest and they ministered with song before the tabernacle of the tent of meeting until Solomon had built the house of Hashem in Jerusalem and they took their station at their service according to their order and these are they that took their station and their sons of the sons of the Kohathites Heman the singer the son of Joel the son of Samuel the son of Elkanah the son of Jeroham the son of Eliel the son of Toh the son of Zuth the son of Elkanah the son of Mahat the son of Amasai the son of Elkanah the son of Joel the son of Azariah the son of Zephaniah the son of Tahat the son of Asur the son of Ebiasaph the son of Korah the son of Azar the son of Kohat the son of Levi the son of Israel and his brother Azaph who stood on his right hand even Azaph the son of Berechiah the son of Shemia the son of Michael the son of Basia the son of Malchijah the son of Ethni the son of Zerah the son of Adaiah the son of Ethan the son of Tzima the son of Shimei the son of Hahat the son of Gershom the son of Levi and on the left hand their brethren the sons of Merari Ethan the son of Kishi the son of Abdi the son of Malachi the son of Hashabiah the son of Amaziah the son of Hilkiah the son of Amza the son of Bani the son of Shemer the son of Mali the son of Mushi the son of Merari the son of Levi and their brethren the Levites were appointed for all the service of the tabernacle of the house of God but Aaron and his sons offered upon the altar of burnt offering and upon the altar of incense for all the work of the most holy place and to make atonement for Israel according to all that Moses the servant of God had commanded and these are the sons of Aaron Eliezer his son Phinehas his son Abishua his son Bukai his son Utzi his son Zeriah his son Miraith his son Amariah his son Ahitab his son Zadok his son Ahamaz his son now these are their dwelling places according to their encampments in their borders to the sons of Aaron of the families of the Kohathites for theirs was the first lot to them they gave Hebron in the land of Judah and the open land round about it but the fields of the city and the villages thereof they gave to Caleb the son of Jephunneh and to the sons of Aaron they gave the city of refuge Hebron Libna also with the open land about it and Jadir and Eshtimo with the open land about it and Hylan with the open land about it Debir with the open land about it and Ashan with the open land about it and Beth Shemesh with the open land about it and out of the tribe of Benjamin Gaba with the open land about it and Alameth with the open land about it and Anadhoth with the open land about it all their cities throughout their families were thirteen cities and unto the rest of the sons of Kohat were given by lot out of the family of the tribe out of the half tribe the half of Manasseh ten cities and to the sons of Gershom according to their families out of the tribe of Issachar and out of the tribe of Asher and out of the tribe of Naphtali and out of the tribe of Manasseh in Bashan thirteen cities unto the sons of Merari were given by lot according to their families out of the tribe of Reuben and out of the tribe of Gad and out of the tribe of Zebulun twelve cities so the children of Israel gave to the Levites the cities with the open land about them and they gave by lot out of the tribe of the children of Judah and out of the tribe of the children of Simeon and out of the tribe of the children of Benjamin these cities which are mentioned by name and some of the families of the sons of Kohat had cities of their borders out of the tribe of Ephraim and they gave unto them the city of refuge Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim with the open land about it Gezer also with the open land about it and Jachmim with the open land about it and Beth Horon with the open land about it and Ijalan with the open land about it and Gathrim and with the open land about it and out of the half tribe of Manasseh honor with the open land about it and Bilim with the open land about it for the rest of the family of the sons of Kohat unto the sons of Gershom were given out of the family of the half tribe of Manasseh Golan in Bashan with the open land about it and Ashtarod with the open land about it and out of the tribe of Issachar Kadesh with the open land about it Dobrath with the open land about it and Ramoth with the open land about it and Anam with the open land about it and out of the tribe of Asher Mashal with the open land about it and Abdon with the open land about it and Hukok with the open land about it and Rehob with the open land about it and out of the tribe of Naphtali Kadesh in Galilee with the open land about it and Haman with the open land about it and Kiriathaim with the open land about it unto the rest of the Levites the sons of Merari were given. Out of the tribe of Zebulun Rimino with the open land about it Tabor with the open land about it and beyond the Jordan at Jericho on the east side of the Jordan were given them out of the tribe of Reuben Bezer in the wilderness with the open land about it and Hahaz with the open land about it and Kadimoth with the open land about it and Mephoth with the open land about it and out of the tribe of Gad Ramoth in Gilead with the open land about it and Mahanaim with the open land about it and Heshbon with the open land about it and Jazer with the open land about it I Chronicles chapter and of the sons of Issachar Tola and Puah Jashub and Shimron four and the sons of Tola Utzi and Rephiah and Jeriel and Yamei and Ibsam and Shemuel heads of their fathers houses mighty men of valor according to their generations even of Tola their number in the days of David was two and twenty thousand and six hundred and the sons of Utzi Israel and the sons of Israel Michael and 
Obadiah and Joel is high five all of them chief men and with them by their generations after their fathers houses were bands of the host for war six and thirty thousand for they had many wives and sons and their brethren among all the families of Issachar mighty men of valor reckoned in all by genealogy were fourscore and seven thousand the sons of Benjamin Bela and Beecher and Jediel three and the sons of Bela Esben and Utsi and Utsiel and Jerimoth and Iri five heads of fathers. Houses mighty men of valor and they were reckoned by genealogy twenty and two thousand and thirty and four and the sons of Beecher's Amira and Joash and Elizer and Elioina and Omri and Jermoth and Abijah and Anadhoth and Alameth all these were the sons of Beecher and they were reckoned by genealogy after their generations heads of their fathers houses mighty men of valor twenty thousand and two hundred and the sons of Jediel Bilhan and the sons of Bilhan Jush and Benjamin and Ehud. And Chinana and Zethan and Tarshish and Ahishahar all these were sons of Jediel even heads of their fathers houses mighty men of valor seventeen thousand and two hundred that were able to go forth in the host for war Shuppim also and Huppim the sons of Ir Hushim the son of another the sons of Naphtali Yazil and Guni and Jezer and Shalom the sons of Bilhah the sons of Manasseh Asriel whom his wife bore his concubine the Aramites bore Machir the father of Gilead and Machir took a wife of Huppim and Shuppim whose sister's name was Mach and the name of the second was Zelophehad and Zelophehad had daughters and Mach the wife of Machir bore a son and she called his name Perish and the name of his brother was Shurish and his sons were Ulam and Rechem and the sons of Ulam Badan these were the sons of Gilead the son of Machir the son of Manasseh and his sister Hamolechet bore Ishhat and Abizer and Mala and the sons of Shemitah were Ayan and Shechem and Laki and Anayim and the sons of Ephraim Shuthel and Baird was his son and Tahat his son and Elida his son and Tahat his son and Zabad his son and Shuthel his son and Ezer and Elid whom the men of Gath that were born in the land slew because they came down to take away their cattle and Ephraim their father mourned many days and his brethren came to comfort him and he went in to his wife and she conceived and bore a son and he called his name Beria because it went evil with his house and his daughter was Shira who built Beth Haran the nether and the upper and U and Shira and Repha was his son and Reshep and Tela his son and Tayan his son Laden his son Amahud his son Elis Hama his son Nun his son Joshua his son and their possessions and habitations were Bethel and the towns thereof and eastward Naran and westward Gezer with the towns thereof Shechem also and the towns thereof unto Aya and the towns thereof and by the borders of the children of Manasseh Bethshin and the towns thereof Tanach and the towns thereof Megiddo and the towns thereof Dor and the towns thereof in these dwelt the children of Joseph the son of Israel the sons of Asher Imna and Ishva and Ishvi and Beria and Sarah their sister and the sons of Beria Heber and Malchiel who was the father of Berzath and Heber begot Japhlet and Shemur and Hotham and Shua their sister and the sons of Japhlet Basak and Bimhal and Asvath these are the children of Japhlet. And the sons of Shemer Ahi and Roga and Hubba and Aram and the sons of Helam his brother Zapha and Imna and Shalesh and Amal the sons of Zapha Sua and Harnefer and Shal and Beri and Imra Bezer and Hot and Shama and Shilsha and Ithran and Bira and the sons of Jether Jephunna and Pispa and Ara and the sons of Ola Ara and Haniel and Razia all these were the children of Asher heads of the Fathers houses choice and mighty men of valor chief of the princes and the number. Of them reckoned by genealogy for service in war was twenty and six thousand men I Chronicles chapter and Benjamin begot Bela his firstborn Ashbel the second and Ahara the third Noha the fourth and Rapha the fifth and Bela had sons Adar and Gera and Abahut and Abishua and Naaman and Aho and Gera and Shepapan and Huram and these are the sons of Ehud these are the heads of Fathers houses of the inhabitants of Geba and they were carried captive to Manahath and Naaman. And Ahijah and Gera were they that carried them captive and he begot Ua and Ahiyad and Shaharim begot children in the field of Moab after he had sent them away to Widhushim and Bara his wives he begot of Hoj his wife Jabab and Zabiah and Mesha and Malcam and Juz and Sachia and Mirma these were his sons heads of Fathers houses and of Hushim he begot Abitub and Elpal and the sons of Elpal Eber and Misam and Shemd who built Ono and Lod with the towns thereof and Beria. And Shema who were heads of Fathers houses of the inhabitants of Ijalan who put to flight the inhabitants of Gath and Ahio Shashak and Jermoth and Zebediah and Arad and Eder and Michael and Ishba and Yoha were the sons of Beria and Zebediah and Meshalam and Hiski and Heber and Ishmire and Islia and Jabab were the sons of Elpal and Jachim and Zikri and Zabdi and Eliane and Zilathai and Eliel and Adaya and Berea and Shimrath were the sons of Shimei and Ishpan and Eb and Eliel and Abdon and Zikri and Hanan and Hananiah and Elam and Anthothiah and Ephdaya and Penuel were the sons of Shashak and Shamshari and Shehariah and Athaliah and Jarshiah and Elijah and Zikri were the sons of Jeroham these were heads of Fathers houses throughout their generations chief men these dwelt in Jerusalem and in Gibeon there dwelt the father of Gibeon Jeel whose wife's name was Makkah and his firstborn son Abdon and Zur and Kish and Baal and Nadab. And Gedder and Ahio and Zechar and Mikloth begot Shimea and they also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem over against their brethren and No begot Kish and Kish begot Saul and Saul begot Jonathan and Malchishua and Abinadab and Eshbal and the son of Jonathan was Merib Baal and Merib Baal begot Micah and the sons of Micah Pithon and Malek and Tariah and Ahaz and Ahaz begot Jehoda and Jehoda begot Alameth and Azmaveth and Zimri and Zimri begot Moza and Moza begot Binia.
Rafa was his son Eliezer, his son Azel, his son and Azel had six sons whose names are these Azrakam, Bakru and Ishmael and Shariah and Obadiah and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel and the sons of Eshek, his brother Ulam, his firstborn Jush the second and Eliphelet the third. And the sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor archers and had many sons and sons, sons a hundred and fifty. All these were of the sons of Benjamin. I Chronicles chapter so all Israel were reckoned by genealogies and behold they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah was carried away captive to Babylon because of their transgression now the first inhabitants that dwelt in their possessions in their cities were Israelites the priests the Levites and the Nathanim and in Jerusalem dwelt of the children of Judah and of the children of Benjamin and of the children of Ephraim and Manasseh Uthai the son of Amahad the son of Omri the son of Imri the son of Bani of the Children of Purah, the son of Judah, and of the Shilonites, Asaiah the firstborn, and his sons, and of the sons of Zerahjul, and their brethren, six hundred and ninety, and of the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshalam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hassanua, and Ibniah, the son of Jeroham, and Elah, the son of Utzi, the son of Mikri, and Meshalam, the son of Shephishah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibniah, and their brethren, according to their generations, nine hundred and fifty and six. All these men were heads of Fathers' houses by their Fathers' houses and of the priests Jediah and Jehoiarab and Jachin and Azariah the son of Hilkiah the son of Meshalam the son of Zadok the son of Miraith the son of Ahid of the ruler of the house of God and Adaiah the son of Jeroham the son of Pashur the son of Malchijah and Masay the son of Adil the son of Yazarah the son of Meshalam the son of Meshalemith the son of Immer and their brethren heads of their Fathers' houses a thousand and seven hundred and three score very able men for the work of the service of the house of God and of the Levites Shimea the son of Hashab the son of Azrakam the son of Hashabiah of the sons of Merari and Bakbakar Harish and Galal and Matania the son of Micah the son of Zikri the son of Azaf and Obadiah the son of Shimea the son of Galal the son of Jeduthun and Berechiah the son of Asa the son of Elkanah that dwelt in the villages of the Netophathites and the porters. Shalom and Akub and Talman and Ahiman and their brother Shalom the chief who hitherto waited in the king's gate eastward they were the porters for the camp of the children of Levi and Shalom the son of Korah the son of Ebiasif the son of Korah and his brethren of his father's house the Korahites were over the work of the service keepers of the gates of the tent and their fathers had been over the camp of Hashem keepers of the entry and Phinehas the son of Eleazar was ruler over them. In time past Hashem being with him Zechariah the son of Meshalemia was porter of the door of the tent of meeting all these that were chosen to be porters in the gates were two hundred and twelve these were reckoned by genealogy in their villages whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set office so they and their children had the oversight of the gates of the house of Hashem even the house of the tent by wards on the four sides were the porters toward the east west north end. South and their brethren in their villages were to come in every seven days from time to time to be with them for the four chief porters were in a set office these were the Levites they were also over the chambers and over the treasuries in the house of God and they lodged round about the house of God because the charge thereof was upon them and to them pertained the opening thereof morning by morning and certain of them had charge of the vessels of service for by tale were they brought. In and by tale were they taken out some of them also were appointed over the furniture and over all the holy vessels and over the fine flour and the wine and the oil and the frankincense and the spices and some of the sons of the priests prepared the confection of the spices and Mattithai one of the Levites who was the firstborn of Shalom the Korahite had the set office over the things that were baked on griddles and some of their brethren of the sons of the Kohathites were over the showbread to prepare it every Sabbath and these are the singers heads of Fathers houses of the Levites who dwelt in the chambers and were free from other service for they were employed in their work day and night these were heads of Fathers houses of the Levites by their generations chief men these dwelt at Jerusalem and in Gibeon there dwelt the father of Gibeon Jeel whose wife's name was Maka and his firstborn son Abdon and Zur and Kish and Baal and Na and Nadab and Geder and Ahio and Zechariah and Mikloth and Mikloth begot Shemim and they also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem over against their brethren and Noh begot Kish and Kish begot Saul and Saul begot Jonathan and Malchishua and Abinadab and Eshbal and the son of Jonathan was Merib Baal and Merib Baal begot Micah and the sons of Micah Pithon and Malek and Tahariah and Ahaz and Ahaz begot Jerah and Jerah begot Alameth and Azmaveth and Zimri and Zimri begot Moza and Moza begot Binia and Rephiah his son Eliezer his son Azel his son and Azel had six sons whose names are these Azrakam Bakru and Ishmael and Shariah and Obadiah and Hanan these were the sons of Azel I Chronicles chapter now the Philistines fought against Israel and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa and the Philistines followed hard after Saul and after his sons and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Malchishu were the sons of Saul and the Battle went sore against Saul and the archers overtook him and he was in anguish by reason of the archers then said Saul unto his armor bearer draw thy sword and thrust me through there with lest these uncircumcised come and make a mock of me but his armor bearer would not for he was sore afraid therefore Saul took his sword and fell upon it and when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead he likewise fell upon his sword and died so Saul died and his three sons and all his house died. 
together and when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that Israel fled and that Saul and his sons were dead they forsook their cities and fled and the Philistines came and dwelt in them and it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gilboa and they stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to carry the tidings unto their idols and to the people and they put his armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head in the house of Dagon and when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul all the valiant men arose and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons and brought them to Jabesh and buried their bones under the terebinth in Jabesh and fasted seven days so Saul died for his transgression which he committed against Hashem because of the word of Hashem which he kept not and also for that he asked counsel of a ghost to inquire thereby and inquired not of Hashem therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David the son of Jesse I Chronicles chapter then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron saying behold we are thy bone and thy flesh in times past even when Saul was king it was thou that didst lead out and bring in Israel and Hashem thy God said unto thee thou shalt feed my people Israel and thou shalt be prince over my people Israel so all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before Hashem and they anointed David king over Israel according to the word of Hashem by the hand of Samuel and David and all Israel went to Jerusalem the same as Jebus and the Jebusites the inhabitants of the land were there and the inhabitants of Jebus said to David thou shalt not come in hither nevertheless David took the stronghold of Zion the same as the city of David and David said. Whosoever smite the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain and Job the son of Zeruiah went up first and was made chief and David dwelt in the stronghold therefore they called it the city of David and he built the city round about from Milo even round about and Job repaired the rest of the city and David waxed greater and greater for Hashem of hosts was with him now these are the chief of the mighty men whom David had who held strongly with him in his kingdom together with all. Israel to make him king according to the word of Hashem concerning Israel and this is the number of the mighty men whom David had Jashobim the son of Ahachmanite the chief of the captains he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them at one time and after him was Eliezer the son of Dodo the Ahohite who was one of the three mighty men he was with David at Potamim and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle where was a plot of ground full of barley and the people fled from before the Philistines but they stood in the midst of the plot and defended it and slew the Philistines and Hashem saved them by a great victory and three of the thirty chiefs went down to the rock to David unto the cave of Adullam and the host of the Philistines were encamped in the valley of Rephaim and David was then in the stronghold and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem and David longed and said oh that one would give me water to drink of the well of Bethlehem which is by the gate and the three broke through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David but David would not drink thereof but poured it out unto Hashem and said my God forbid it me that I should do this shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy for with the jeopardy of their lives they brought it therefore he would not drink it these things did. The three mighty men and Abishai the brother of Job he was chief of the three for he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them and had a name among the three of the three in the second rank he was the most honorable and was made their captain howbeit he attained not to the first three Beniah the son of Jehoiada the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel who had done mighty deeds he smote the two altar hearths of Moab he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow and he slew an Egyptian a man of great stature five cubits high and in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam and he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear these things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada and had a name among the three mighty men behold he was more honorable than the thirty but he attained not to the first three and David set him over his guard also the mighty men of valor Asahel. The brother of Job Elhanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem Shamoth the Harorite Helez the Pelonite Ira the son of Akish the Techoite Abizer the Anathothite Sabike the Hushathite Ile the Ahohite Mare the Netophathite Heald the son of Bana the Netophathite Ithai the son of Ribai of Jibia of the children of Benjamin Benaiah the Purathonite Hurai of Nahal Gosh Abil the Arbathite Azmavith the Baharumite Ilyaba the Shulbanite the sons of Hashem the Gizonite Jonathan the Son of Shaja the Hararite Ayim the son of Sakar the Hararite Ilifal the son of Orheper the Mekrathite Ahijah the Pelonite Hezro the Carmelite Nare the son of Esbai Joel the brother of Nathan Mibhar the son of Hagrizelik the Ammonite Nare the Barothite the armor bearer of Job the son of Zeruia Ira the Ithrite Gareb the Ithrite Uriah the Hittite Zabad the son of Elai Adina the son of Shiza the Rubenite a chief of the Rubenites and thirty with him Hanan the son of Makkah and Joshaphat the Mithnite Utziah the Ashtarathite Shammah and Jeel the sons of Hotham the Eroerite Jediel the son of Shimri and Yoha his brother the Tizite Eliel the Mahavite and Jerabi and Jashavia the sons of Elnam and Ithma the Moabite Eliel and Obed and Jasiel the Mizabate I Chronicles chapter now these are they that came to David to Ziklag while he was yet shut up because of Saul the son of Kish and they were among the mighty men his helpers in war they 
were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in slinging stones and in shooting arrows from the bow they were of Saul's brethren of Benjamin the chief was Azer then Joash the sons of Shema the Jibathite and Jezeel and Pilat the sons of Ismavath and Barakah and Jehu the Anathothite and Jeremiah and Hahaziel and Yohanan and Josabad the Gadirathite Eluze and Jerimoth and Beliah and Shemariah and Shephesha the Herophite Elkanah and Ishiah and Azarel and Joser and Jashobim the Korahites and Jola and Zebediah the sons of Jeroham of the troop and of the Gadites there separated themselves unto David to the stronghold in the wilderness mighty men of valor men trained for war that could handle shield and spear whose faces were like the faces of lions and they were as swift as the rose upon the mountains as are the chief Obadiah the second Eli of the third Mishmana the fourth Jeremiah the fifth Atai the sixth Eliel the seventh Yohanan the eighth Elzabad the ninth Jeremiah the tenth Machbana the eleventh these of the sons of Gad were captains of the host he that was least was equal to a hundred and the greatest to a thousand these are they that went over the Jordan in the first month when it had overflown all its banks and they put to flight all them of the valleys both toward the east and toward the west and there came of the children of Benjamin and Judah to the stronghold unto David and David went out to meet them and answered and said unto them if ye be come peaceably unto me to help me my heart shall be knit unto you but if ye be come to betray me to mine adversaries seeing there is no wrong in my hands the God of our fathers look thereon and give judgment then the spirit clothed Amase who was chief of the captains thine are we David and on thy side thou son of Jesse peace peace be unto thee and peace be to thy helpers for thy God helpeth thee then David received them and made them captains of the band of Manasseh also there fell away some to David when he came with the Philistines against Saul to battle but they helped them not for the lords of the Philistines upon advisement sent him away saying he will fall away to his master Saul to the jeopardy of our heads as he went to Ziklag there fell to him of Manasseh Adna and Josabad and Jediel and Michael and Josabad and Elihu and Zilathi captains of thousands that were of Manasseh and they helped David against the troop for they were all mighty men of valor and were captains in the host for from day to day men came to David to help him until there was a great host like the host of God and these are the numbers of the heads of them that were armed for war who came to David to Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of Hashem the children of Judah that bore shield and spear were six thousand and eight hundred armed for war of the children of Simeon mighty men of valor. For the war seven thousand and one hundred of the children of Levi four thousand and six hundred and Jehoiada was the leader of the house of Aaron and with him were three thousand and seven hundred and Zadok a young man mighty of valor and of his father's house twenty and two captains and of the children of Benjamin the brethren of Saul three thousand for hitherto the greatest part of them had kept their allegiance to the house of Saul and of the children of Ephraim twenty thousand and eight hundred mighty men of valor famous men in their fathers' houses and of the half-tribe of Manasseh eighteen thousand who were mentioned by name to come and make David king and of the children of Issachar men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do the heads of them were two hundred and all their brethren were at their commandment of Zebulun such as were able to go out in the host that could set the battle in array with all manner of instruments of war. 50,000 and that could order the battle array and were not of double heart and of Naphtali a thousand captains and with them with shield and spear 30 and 7,000 and of the Danites that could set the battle in array 20 and 8,600 and of Asher such as were able to go out in the host that could set the battle in array 40,000 and on the other side of the Jordan of the Reubenites and the Gadites and of the half tribe of Manasseh with all manner of instruments of war for the battle a hundred and twenty thousand all these being men of war that could order the battle array came with a whole heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king and they were there with David three days eating and drinking for their brethren had made preparation for them moreover they that were nigh unto them even as far as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen vittle of meal cakes of figs and clusters of raisins and wine and oil and oxen and sheep in abundance for there was joy in Israel I Chronicles chapter and David consulted with the captains of thousands and of hundreds even with every leader and David said unto all the assembly of Israel if it seem good unto you and if it be of Hashem our God let us send abroad everywhere unto our brethren that are left in all the land of Israel and with them to the priests and levites that are in their cities that have open land about them that they may gather themselves unto us and let us bring back the ark of our God to us for we sought not unto it in the days of Saul and all the assembly said that they would do so for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people so David assembled all Israel together from Shear the brook of Egypt even unto the entrance of Hamath to bring the ark of God from Kiriath Jerim and David went up and all Israel to Baalah that is to Kiriath Jerim which belonged to Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God Hashem that sitteth upon the cherubim whereon is called the name and they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab and Ua and Ahio drove the cart and David and all Israel played before God with all their might even with songs and with harps and with psalteries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets and when they came unto 
the threshing floor of Chidan Ua put forth his hand to hold the ark for the oxen stumbled and the anger of Hashem was kindled against Ua and he smote him because he put forth his hand to the ark and there he died before God and David was displeased because Hashem had broken forth upon Ua and that place was called Purazua unto this day and David was afraid of God that day saying how shall I bring the ark of God home to me so David removed not the ark unto him into the city of David but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite and the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months and Hashem blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had I Chronicles chapter and Huram king of Tyre sent messengers to David and cedar trees and masons and carpenters to build him a house and David perceived that Hashem had established him king over Israel for his kingdom was exalted exceedingly for his people Israel's sake and David took more wives at Jerusalem and David begot more sons and daughters and these are the names of the children whom he had in Jerusalem Shammua and Shobab Nathan and Solomon and Abhar and Elishua and Elpalit and Nogah and Nepheg and Japhiah and Elishama and Beliada and Eliphelet and when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel all the Philistines went up to seek David and David heard of it and went out to meet them now the Philistines had come and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim and David inquired of God saying shall I go up against the Philistines and wilt thou deliver them into my hand and Hashem said unto him go up for I will deliver them into thy hands so they came up to Baal Perazim and David smote them there and David said God hath broken mine enemies by my hand like the breach of waters therefore they called the name of that place Baal Perazim and they left their gods there and David gave commandment and they were burned with fire and the Philistines yet again made a raid in the valley and David inquired again of God and God said unto him thou shalt not go up after them turn away from them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees and it shall be when thou hearest the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees that then thou shalt go out to battle for God is gone out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines and David did as God commanded him and they smote the host of the Philistines from Gibeon even to Gezer and the fame of David went out into all lands and Hashem brought the fear of him upon all nations I Chronicles chapter and David made him houses in the city of David and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent then David said none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites for them hath Hashem chosen to carry the ark of Hashem and to minister unto him forever and David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of Hashem unto its place which he had prepared for it and David gathered together the sons of Aaron and the Levites of the sons of Kohat Uriel the chief and his brethren a hundred and twenty of the sons of Merari Asaiah the chief and his brethren two hundred and twenty of the sons of Gershom Joel the chief and his brethren a hundred and thirty of the sons of Elizaphan Shimea the chief and his brethren two hundred of the sons of Hebron Eliel the chief and his brethren Fourscore of the sons of Uziel Ammonadab the chief and his brethren a hundred and twelve and David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priests and for the Levites for Uriel Asaiah and Joel Shemaiah and Eliel and Ammonadab and said unto them ye are the heads of the fathers houses of the Levites sanctify yourselves both ye and your brethren that ye may bring up the ark of Hashem the God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it for because ye bore it not at the first Hashem. Our God made a breach upon us for that we sought him not according to the ordinance so the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of Hashem the God of Israel and the children of the Levites bore the ark of God upon their shoulders with the bars thereon as Moses commanded according to the word of Hashem and David spoke to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren the singers with instruments of music psalteries and harps and cymbals sounding aloud and Lifting up the voice with joy so the Levites appointed Heman the son of Joel and of his brethren Azaph the son of Berechiah and of the sons of Merari their brethren Ethan the son of Keshiah and with them their brethren of the second degree Zechariah ben and Jaziel and Shemiramoth and Jehiel and Uni Eliab and Benaiah and Masiah and Mattithiah and Eliphalehu and Miniah and Obed-Edom and Jeel the doorkeeper so the singers Heman Azaph and Ethan were appointed with symbols of brass to Sound aloud and Zechariah and Aziel and Shemiramoth and Jehiel and Uni and Eliab and Masiah and Benaiah with Psalteries set to Elamoth and Mattithiah and Eliphalehu and Miniahu and Obed-Edom and Jeel and Azachiah with harps on the Sheminith to lead and Shenaniah chief of the Levites was over the song he was master in the song because he was skillful and Berechiah and Elkanah were doorkeepers for the ark and Shabanya and Joshaphat and Nethanel and Amasai and Zechariah and Benaiah. And Eliezer the priests did blow with the trumpets before the ark of God and Obed-Edom and Jehiah were doorkeepers for the ark so David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of Hashem out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy and it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bore the ark of the covenant of Hashem that they sacrificed seven bullocks and seven rams and David was clothed with a robe of fine linen and all the Levites. That bore the ark and the singers and Shenaniah the master of the singers in the song and David had upon him an ephod of linen thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of Hashem with shouting and with sound of the horn and with trumpets and with cymbals sounding aloud with psalteries and harps and it came to pass as the ark of the covenant of Hashem came to the city of David that Michael the daughter of Saul looked out at the window and saw King David dancing and making merry and 
she despised him in her heart I Chronicles chapter and they brought in the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it and they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God and when David had made an end of offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings he blessed the people in the name of Hashem and he dealt to every one of Israel both man and woman to every one a loaf of bread and a cake made in a pan and a sweet cake and he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of Hashem and to celebrate and to thank and praise Hashem the God of Israel as Ap the chief and second to him Zechariah Jeel and Shemiramoth and Jehiel and Mattithiah and Eliab and Benaiah and Obadidam and Jeel with psalteries and with harps and Azaf with cymbals sounding aloud and Benaiah and Hahaziel the priests with trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God then on that day did David first ordain to give Thanks unto Hashem by the hand of Azaf and his brethren O give thanks unto Hashem call upon his name make known his doings among the people sing unto him sing praises unto him speak ye of all his marvelous works glory ye in his holy name let the heart of them rejoice that seek Hashem seek ye Hashem and his strength seek his face continually remember his marvelous works that he hath done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth O ye seed of Israel his servant ye children of Jacob his chosen ones he is Hashem our God his judgments are in all the earth remember his covenant forever the word which he commanded to a thousand generations the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and he established it unto Jacob for a statute to Israel for an everlasting covenant saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance when ye were but a few men in number ye very few and sojourners in it and when they went about from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people he suffered no man to do them wrong yet for their sake he reproved kings touch not mine anointed ones and do my prophets no harm sing unto Hashem all the earth proclaim his salvation from day to day declare his glory among the nations his marvelous works among all the peoples for great is Hashem and highly to be praised he also is to be feared above all gods for all the gods of the peoples are things of naught but Hashem made the heavens honor and majesty are before him strength and gladness are in his place ascribe unto Hashem ye kindreds of the peoples ascribe unto Hashem glory and strength ascribe unto Hashem the glory due unto his name bring an offering and come before him worship Hashem in the beauty of holiness tremble before him all the earth the world also is established that it cannot be moved let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations the Hashem reigneth let the sea roar and the fullness thereof let the field exult and all that is therein then shall the trees of the wood sing for joy before Hashem for he is come to judge the earth O give thanks unto Hashem for he is good for his mercy endureth forever and say yes save us O God of our salvation and gather us together and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks unto thy holy name that we may triumph in thy praise blessed be Hashem the God of Israel from everlasting even to everlasting and all the people said Amen and praised Hashem so he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of Hashem Azaf and his brethren to minister before the Ark continually as every day's work required and Obed-Edom with their brethren threescore and eight Obed-Edom also the son of Jedithun and Hosah to be doorkeepers and Zadok the priest and his brethren the priests before the tabernacle of Hashem in the high place that was at Gibeon to offer burnt Offerings unto Hashem upon the altar of burnt offering continually morning and evening even according to all that is written in the law of Hashem which he commanded unto Israel and with them Heman and Jeduthun and the rest that were chosen who were mentioned by name to give thanks to Hashem because his mercy endureth forever and with them Heman and Jeduthun to sound aloud with trumpets and cymbals and with instruments for the songs of God and the sons of Jeduthun to be at the gate and all the people departed every man to his house and David returned to bless his house I Chronicles chapter and it came to pass when David dwelt in his house that David said to Nathan the prophet Lo I dwell in a house of cedar but the ark of the covenant of Hashem dwelleth under curtains and Nathan said unto David do all that is in thy heart for God is with thee and it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan saying go and tell David my servant thus saith Hashem thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in for I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day but have gone from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to another in all places wherein I have walked among all Israel spoke I a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people saying why have ye not built me a house of cedar now therefore thus shalt thou say unto my servant David thus saith Hashem of hosts I took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep that thou shouldest be prince over my people Israel and I have been with thee whithersoever thou wentest and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee and I will make thee a name like unto the name of the great ones that are in the earth and I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in their own place and be disquieted no more neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more as at the first even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and I will subdue all thine enemies moreover I tell thee that Hashem will build thee a house and it shall come to pass when thy days are fulfilled that thou must go to be with thy fathers that I will set up thy seed after thee who shall be of thy sons and I will establish his kingdom he shall build me a house and I will establish his throne forever I will be to him for a father and he shall be to me for a son and I will not 
Take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee but I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever and his throne shall be established forever according to all these words and according to all this vision so did Nathan speak unto David then David the king went in and sat before Hashem and he said who am I O Hashem God and what is my house that thou hast brought me thus far and this was a small thing in thine eyes O God but thou hast spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come and hast regarded me after the manner of a man of high degree O Hashem God what can David say yet more unto thee concerning the honor which is done to thy servant for thou knowest thy servant O Hashem for thy servant's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou wrought all this greatness to make known all these great things O Hashem there is none like thee neither is there any God beside thee according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like thy people Israel a nation one in the earth whom God went to redeem unto himself for a people to make thee a name by great and tremendous things in driving out nations from before thy people whom thou didst redeem out of Egypt for thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever and thou Hashem becamest their God and now O Hashem let the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever and do as thou hast spoken. Yea let it be established and let thy name be magnified forever that it may be said Hashem of hosts is the God of Israel even a God to Israel and the house of David thy servant shall be established before thee for thou O my God hast revealed to thy servant that thou wilt build him a house therefore hath thy servant taken heart to pray before thee and now O Hashem thou alone art God and hast promised this good thing unto thy servant and now it hath pleased thee to bless the house of thy servant that it may continue forever before thee for thou O Hashem hast blessed and so let thy servant be blessed forever I Chronicles chapter and after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and its towns out of the hand of the Philistines and he smote Moab and the Moabites became servants to David and brought presents and David smote Hadarezer king of Zebul by Hamath as he went to establish his dominion at the river Euphrates and David took from him a thousand chariots and seven thousand horsemen and twenty thousand footmen and David hoffed all the chariot horses but reserved of them for a hundred chariots and when the Arameans of Damascus came to Succur Hadarezer king of Zeba David smote of the Arameans two and twenty thousand men then David put garrisons in Aram Damascus and the Arameans became servants to David and brought presents and Hashem gave victory to David whithersoever he went and David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadarezer and brought them to Jerusalem and from Tibhut and from Kun cities of Hadarezer David took very much brass wherewith Solomon made the brazen sea and the pillars and the vessels of brass and when Tehu king of Hamath heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadarezer king of Zeba he sent Hadoram his son to king David to salute him and to bless him because he had fought against Hadarezer and smitten him for Hadarezer had wars with Tou and he had with him all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass these also did King David dedicate unto Hashem with the silver and the gold that he carried away from all the nations from Edom and from Moab and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines and from Amalek moreover Abishai the son of Zeruia smote of the Edomites in the valley of Salt 18,000 and he put garrisons in Edom and all the Edomites became servants to David and Hashem gave victory to David whithersoever he went and David reigned over all Israel and he executed justice and righteousness unto all his people and Job the son of Zeruiah was over the host and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilad was recorder and Zadok the son of Ahitab and Abimelech the son of Abiathar were priests and Shavsha was scribe and Beniah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and the Polithites and the sons of David were chief about the king I Chronicles chapter and it came to pass after. This that Nahash the king of the children of Ammon died and his son reigned in his stead and David said El will show kindness unto Hanun the son of Nahash because his father showed kindness to me so David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father and David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon to Hanun to comfort him but the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanun thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father that he hath sent comforters unto thee are not his servants come unto thee to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land so Hanun took David's servants and shaved them and cut off their garments in the middle even to their hips and sent them away then there went certain persons and told David how the men were served and he sent to meet them for the men were greatly ashamed and the king said tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return and when the children of Ammon saw that they had made themselves odious to David Hanun and the children of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them chariots and horsemen out of Aram Naharim and out of Aram Makkah and out of Zeba so they hired them thirty and two thousand chariots and the king of Makkah and his people who came and encamped before Medba and the children of Ammon gathered themselves together from their cities and came to battle and when David heard of it he sent Job and all the host of the mighty men and the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the gate of the city and the kings that were come were by themselves in the field now when Job saw that the battle was set against him before and behind he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Arameans and the rest of the people he committed into the hand of Abishai his brother and they put themselves in array against the children of Ammon and he said if the Arameans be too strong for me then thou shalt help me but if 
the children of Ammon be too strong for thee then I will help thee be of good courage and let us prove strong for our people and for the cities of our God and Hashem do that which seemeth him good so Job and the people that were with him drew nigh unto the battle to meet the Arameans and they fled before him and when the children of Ammon saw that the Arameans were fled they likewise fled before Abishai his brother and entered into the city then Job came to Jerusalem and when they Arameans saw that they were put to the worse before Israel they sent messengers and brought out the Arameans that were beyond the river with Shophach the captain of the host of Hadarezer at their head and it was told David and he gathered all Israel together and passed over the Jordan and came upon them and set the battle in array against them so when David had put the battle in array against the Arameans they fought with him and the Arameans fled before Israel and David slew of the Arameans the men of seven thousand chariots and forty thousand footmen and killed Shophach the captain of the host and when the servants of Hadarezer saw that they were put to the worse before Israel they made peace with David and served him neither would the Arameans help the children of Ammon any more I Chronicles chapter and it came to pass at the time of the return of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that Job led forth the power of the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabbah but David tarried at Jerusalem and Job smote Rabbah and overthrew it and David took the crown of Malcham from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold and there were precious stones in it and it was set upon David's head and he brought forth the spoil of the city exceeding much and he brought forth the people that were therein and cut them with saws and with harrows of iron and with axes and thus did David unto all the cities of the children of Ammon and David and all the people returned to Jerusalem and it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines then Sabike the Hushathite slew Sippa of the sons of the giants and they were subdued and there was again war with the Philistines and Elhan and the son of Jair slew Lamai the brother of Goliath the Gittite the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam and there was again war at Gath where was a man of great stature whose Fingers and toes were four and twenty-six on each hand and six on each foot and he also was born unto the giant and when he taunted Israel Jonathan the son of Shimea David's brother slew him these were born unto the giant in Gath and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants I Chronicles chapter and Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel and David said to Job and to the princes of the people go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan. And bring me word that I may know the sum of them and Job said the Hashem make his people a hundred times so many more as they are but my lord the king are they not all my lord's servants why doth my lord require this thing why will he be a cause of guilt unto Israel nevertheless the king's word prevailed against Job wherefore Job departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem and Job gave up the sum of the numbering of the people unto David and all they of Israel were a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword and Judah was four hundred threescore and ten thousand men that drew sword but Levi and Benjamin he did not number among them for the king's word was abominable to Job and God was displeased with this thing therefore he smote Israel and David said unto God I have sinned greatly in that I have done this thing but now put away I beseech thee the iniquity of thy servant for I have done very foolishly and Hashem spoke unto Gad David seer saying go and speak unto David saying thus saith Hashem I offer thee three things choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee so Gad came to David and said unto him thus saith Hashem take which thou wilt either three years of famine or three months to be swept away before thy foes while the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee or else three days the sword of Hashem even pestilence in the land and the angel of Hashem destroying throughout all the borders of Israel now therefore consider what answer I shall return to him that sent me and David said unto Gad I am in a great strait let me fall now into the hand of Hashem for very great are his mercies and let me not fall into the hand of man so Hashem sent a pestilence upon Israel and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men and God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it and as he was about to destroy Hashem beheld and he repented him of the evil and said to the destroying angel it is enough now stay thy hand and the angel of Hashem was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite and David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of Hashem standing between the earth and the heaven having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem then David and the elders clothed in sackcloth fell upon their faces and David said unto God is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered even I it is that have sinned and done very wickedly but these sheep what? Have they done let thy hand I pray thee O Hashem my God be against me and against my father's house but not against thy people that they should be plagued then the angel of Hashem commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and rear an altar unto Hashem in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite and David went up at the saying of Gad which he spoke in the name of Hashem and Ornan turned back and saw the angel and his four sons that were with him hid themselves now Ornan was threshing wheat and as David came to Ornan Ornan looked and saw David and went out of the threshing floor and bowed down to David with his face to the ground then David said to Ornan give me the place of this threshing floor that I may build thereon an altar unto Hashem for the full price shalt thou give it me that the plague may be stayed from the people and Ornan said unto David take it to thee and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes lo I give thee the oxen for 
burnt offerings and the threshing instruments for wood and the wheat for the meal offering I give it all and King David said to Ornan nay but I will verily buy it for the full price for I will not take that which is thine for Hashem nor offer a burnt offering without cost so David gave to Ornan for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight and David built there an altar unto Hashem and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon Hashem and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering and Hashem commanded the angel and he put up his sword back into the sheath thereof at that time when David saw that Hashem had answered him in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite then he sacrificed there for the tabernacle of Hashem which Moses made in the wilderness and the altar of burnt offering were at that time in the high place at Gibeon but David could not go before it to inquire of God for he was terrified because of the Sword of the angel of Hashem I Chronicles chapter then David said this is the house of Hashem God and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel and David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel and he set masons to he wrought stones to build the house of God and David prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates and for the couplings and brass in abundance without weight and cedar trees without number for the Zidonians and they of Tyre brought cedar trees in abundance to David and David said Solomon my son is young and tender and the house that is to be builded for Hashem must be exceeding magnificent of fame and of glory throughout all countries I will therefore make preparation for him so David prepared abundantly before his death then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for Hashem the God of Israel and David said to Solomon my son as for me it was in my heart to build a house unto the name of Hashem my God but the word of Hashem came to me saying thou hast shed blood abundantly and hast made great wars thou shalt not build a house unto my name because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight behold a son shall be born to thee who shall be a man of rest and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about for his name shall be Solomon and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days he shall build a house for my name and he shall be to me for a son and I will be to him for a father and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever now my son Hashem be with thee and prosper thou and build the house of Hashem thy God as he hath spoken concerning thee only Hashem give thee discretion and understanding and give thee charge concerning Israel that so thou mayest keep the law of Hashem thy God then shalt thou prosper if thou observe to do the statutes and the ordinances which Hashem charged. Moses with concerning Israel be strong and of good courage fear not neither be dismayed now behold in my straits I have prepared for the house of Hashem a hundred thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and of brass and iron without weight for it is in abundance timber also and stone have I prepared and thou mayest add thereto moreover there are workmen with thee in abundance hewers and workers of stone and timber and all men that are skillful in any manner of work. Of the gold the silver and the brass and the iron there is no number arise and be doing and Hashem be with thee. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son is not Hashem your God with you and hath he not given you rest on every side for he hath delivered the inhabitants of the land into my hand and the land is subdued before Hashem and before his people now set your heart and your soul to seek after Hashem your God arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of Hashem God to bring the Ark of the Covenant of Hashem and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of Hashem I Chronicles chapter now David was old and full of days and he made Solomon his son king over Israel and he gathered together all the princes of Israel with the priests and the Levites and the Levites were numbered from thirty years old and upward and their number by their poles man by man was thirty and eight thousand of these twenty and four thousand were to oversee the work of the house of Hashem and six thousand were officers and judges and four thousand were doorkeepers and four thousand praised Hashem with the instruments which I made to praise therewith and David divided them into courses according to the sons of Levi Gershon Kohat and Merari of the Gershonites Laden and Shimei the sons of Laden Jehiel the chief and Zetham and Joel three the sons of Shimei Shalamith and Hazel and Haran three these were the heads of the Fathers houses of Laden and the sons of Shimei Hahad Zina and Jush and Biria these four were the sons of Shimei and Hahad was the chief and Ziza the second but Jush and Biria had not many sons therefore they became a Fathers house in one reckoning the sons of Kohat Amram is our Hebron and Utziel for the sons of Amram Aaron and Moses and Aaron was separated that he should be sanctified as most holy he and his sons forever to offer before Hashem to minister unto him and to bless in his name forever but as for Moses the man of God his sons are named among the tribe of Levi the sons of Moses Gershom and Elizer the sons of Gershom Shavuel the chief and the sons of Elizer were Rehabia the chief and Elizer had no other sons but the sons of Rehabia were very many the sons of Izar Shalamith the chief the sons of Hebron Jeria the chief Amaria the second Hahaziel the third and Jechamim the fourth the sons of Uziel Micah the chief and Ishiavi. Second the sons of Merari Mali and Mushi the sons of Mali Eliezer and Kish and Eliezer died and had no sons but daughters only and their brethren the sons of Kish took them to wife the sons of Mushi Mali and Eder and Jermoth three these were the sons of Levi after their fathers houses even the heads of the fathers houses according to their muster in the number of names by their poles who did the work for the service of the house of Hashem from twenty years old and upward four.
David said the Hashem the God of Israel hath given rest unto his people and he dwelleth in Jerusalem forever and also the Levites shall no more have need to carry the tabernacle and all the vessels of it for the service thereof for by the last ordinances of David the sons of Levi were numbered from twenty years old and upward for their station was at the side of the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of Hashem in the courts and in the chambers and in the purifying of all holy things even the work of the service of the house of God for the showbread also and for the fine flour for a meal offering whether of unleavened wafers or of that which is baked on the griddle or of that which is soaked and for all manner of measure and size and to stand every morning to thank and praise Hashem and likewise at even and to offer all burnt offerings unto Hashem on the Sabbaths on the new moons and in the appointed seasons in number according to the ordinance concerning them continually before Hashem and that they should keep the charge of the tent of meeting and the charge of the holy place and the charge of the sons of Aaron their brethren for the service of the house of Hashem I Chronicles chapter and the courses of the sons of Aaron were these the sons of Aaron Nadab and Abihu Eliezer and Ithamar but Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children therefore Eliezer and Ithamar executed the priest's office and David with Zadok of the Sons of Eliezer and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar divided them according to their ordering in their service and there were more chief men found of the sons of Eliezer than of the sons of Ithamar and thus were they divided of the sons of Eliezer there were sixteen heads of Fathers houses and of the sons of Ithamar according to their Fathers houses eight thus were they divided by lot one sword with another for they were princes of the sanctuary and princes of God both of the sons of Eliezer and of the sons of Ithamar and Shimei the son of Nethanel the scribe who was of the Levites wrote them in the presence of the king and the princes and Zadok the priest and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar and the heads of the fathers houses of the priests and of the Levites one father's house being taken for Eliezer and proportionately for Ithamar now the first lot came forth to Jehoiarab the second to Jedeah the third to Haram the fourth to Sarim the fifth to Malchijah the sixth to Mijamin the seventh to Hakas the eighth to Abijah the ninth to Shua the tenth to Shekaniah the eleventh to Eliashiv the twelfth to Jachim the thirteenth to Huppah the fourteenth to Shabib the fifteenth to Bilgah the sixteenth to Immer the seventeenth to Hezir the eighteenth to Hapitz as the nineteenth to Pethiah the twentieth to Jehezkel the one and twentieth to Jachin the two and twentieth to Gamal the three and twentieth to Deleah the four and twentieth to Maziah these were the orderings of them in their service to come into the house of Hashem according to the ordinance given unto them by the hand of Aaron their father as Hashem the God of Israel had commanded him and of the rest of the sons of Levi of the sons of Amram Shubael of the sons of Shubael Jedeah of Rehabiah of the sons of Rehabiah Ishiah the chief of the Azarites Shalamath of the sons of Shalamath Hahat and Bnei Jeria Amariah the second Hahaziel the third Jechamim the fourth the sons of Uziel Micah of the sons of Micah Shamir the brother of Micah Ishiah of the sons of Ishiah Zechariah the sons of Merari Mali and Mushi the sons of Jaziah his son even the sons of Merari through Jaziah his son Shaham and Zachar and Ibri of Mali Eliezer who had no sons of Kish the sons of Kish Jeremiel and the sons of Mushi Mali and Eder and Jerimoth these were the sons of the Levites after their fathers houses these likewise cast lots even as there. Brethren the sons of Aaron in the presence of David the king and Zadok and Ahimelech and the heads of the fathers houses of the priests and of the Levites the fathers houses of the chief even as those of his younger brother I Chronicles chapter moreover David and the captains of the hosts separated for the service certain of the sons of Azaph and of Heman and of Jeduthun who should prophesy with harps with psalteries and with cymbals and the number of them that did the work according to their service was of the sons of Azaph Zachar and Joseph and Nethaniah and Asarela the sons of Azaph under the hand of Azaph who prophesied according to the direction of the king of Jeduthun the sons of Jeduthun Gedaliah and Zeri and Shia Hashabiah and Mattithiah six under the hands of their father Jeduthun with the harp who prophesied in giving thanks and praising Hashem of Heman the sons of Heman Bukiah Matania Utziel Shavuel and Jerry Moth Hananiah Hanani Iliatha Gedalti and Romam Tiezer Josh Bekasha Malatai Hadir Mahachioth all these were the sons of Heman the king seer in the things pertaining to God to lift up the horn and God gave to Heman fourteen sons and three daughters all these were under the hands of their fathers for song in the house of Hashem with cymbal psalteries and harps for the service of the house of God according to the direction of the king Azaf Jeduthun and Heman and the number of them with their brethren that were instructed in Singing unto Hashem even all that were skillful was two hundred fourscore and eight and they cast lots ward against ward as well the small as the great the teacher as the scholar now the first lot came forth for Azaf to Joseph the second to Gedaliah he and his brethren and sons were twelve the third to Zachar his sons and his brethren twelve the fourth to Isri his sons and his brethren twelve the fifth to Nethaniah his sons and his brethren twelve the sixth to Bukiah his sons and his brethren twelve the seventh to Jezerila his sons and his brethren twelve the eighth to Shia his sons and his brethren twelve the ninth to Matania his sons and his brethren twelve the tenth to Shimei his sons and his brethren twelve the eleventh to Azarel his sons and his brethren twelve the twelfth to Hashabia his sons and his brethren twelve for the thirteenth Shubael his sons and his brethren twelve for the fourteenth Mattithiah his sons and his brethren twelve for the fifteenth to Jeremoth his sons and his brethren twelve for the sixteenth to Hananiah his sons and his brethren twelve for the seventeenth to Josh Bekashah his sons and his brethren twelve for the eighteenth to Hanani his sons and his brethren twelve for the nineteenth to Malatai his sons and his brethren twelve for the twentieth to Eliatha his sons and his brethren twelve for the one and twentieth to Hadir his sons and his brethren twelve for the two and twentieth to 
Gidalti his sons and his brethren twelve for the three and twentieth to Mahachioth his sons and his brethren twelve for the four and twentieth to Romam Deezer his sons and his brethren twelve I Chronicles chapter for the courses of the doorkeepers of the Korahites Meshalemia the son of Korah of the sons of Azaf and Meshalemia had sons Zechariah the firstborn Jediel the second Zebediah the third Jathniel the fourth Elam the fifth Jehohanan the sixth Elihona the seventh. And Obadidim had sons Shimei the firstborn Jehozabad the second Joah the third and Sakar the fourth and Nethanel the fifth Amiel the sixth the Sichar the seventh Pulethi the eighth for God blessed him also unto Shimei his son were sons born that ruled over the house of their father for they were mighty men of valor the sons of Shimei Othni and Rephael and Obed and Elzabad his brethren valiant men Elihu also and Samachia all these were of the sons of Obadidim they and their sons and their brethren able men in strength for the service threescore and two of Obadidim and Meshalemia had sons and brethren valiant men eighteen also Hosea of the children of Merari had sons Shimri the chief for though he was not the firstborn yet his father made him chief Hilkiah the second Tbalia the third Zechariah the fourth all the sons and brethren of Hosea were thirteen these courses of the doorkeepers even the chief men had wards over against their brethren to minister in the house of Hashem and they cast lots as well the small as the great according to their fathers houses for every gate and the lot eastward fell to Shalemia then for Zechariah his son a discreet counselor they cast lots and his lot came out northward to Obed-Edom southward and to his sons the storehouse to Shuppim and Hosea westward by the gate of Shaleshet at the causeway that goeth upward against ward eastward were six levites northward for a day southward for a day and for the storehouse two and two for the precinct westward four at the causeway and two at the precinct these were the courses of the doorkeepers of the sons of the Korahites and of the sons of Merari and of the Levites Ahijah was over the treasuries of the house of God and over the treasuries of the hallowed things the sons of Laden the sons of the Gershonites belonging to Laden the heads of the fathers houses belonging to Laden the Gershonite Jehaeli the sons of Jehaeli Zetham and Joel his brother over the treasuries of the house of Hashem of the Amramites of the Azarites of the Hebronites of the Utzilites Shavuel the son of Gershom the son of Moses was ruler over the treasuries and his brethren by Eliza Rehabia his son and Shia his son and Joram his son and Zikri his son and Shalamith his son this Shalamith and his brethren were over all the treasuries of the dedicated things which David the king and the heads of the fathers houses the Captains over thousands and hundreds and the captains of the host had dedicated out of the spoil one in battles did they dedicate to repair the house of Hashem and all that Samuel the seer and Saul the son of Kish and Abner the son of Na and Job the son of Zeruiah had dedicated whosoever had dedicated anything it was under the hand of Shalamith and of his brethren of the Azarites Chenaniah and his sorts were for the outward business over Israel for officers and judges of the Hebronites Hashabiah and his brethren men of valor a thousand and seven hundred had the oversight of Israel beyond the Jordan westward for all the business of Hashem and for the service of the king of the Hebronites was Jerajah the chief even of the Hebronites according to their generations by Fathers houses in the fortieth year of the reign of David they were sought for and there were found among them mighty men of valor at Jazer of Gilead and his brethren men of valor were too. Thousand and seven hundred heads of Fathers' houses whom King David made overseers over the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of the Monocytes for every matter pertaining to God and for the affairs of the King I Chronicles chapter Now the children of Israel after their number to wit the heads of Fathers' houses and the captains of thousands and of hundreds and their officers that served the King in any matter of the courses which came in and went out month by month throughout. All the months of the year of every course were twenty and four thousand over the first course for the first month was Jashobim the son of Zabdil and in his course were twenty and four thousand of the children of Perez was he and the chief of all the captains of the host for the first month and over the course of the second month was Doday the Ahohite and his course and Miklath the ruler and in his course were twenty and four thousand the third captain of the host for the third month was Benaiah the son of Jehoiada the priest chief and in his course were twenty and four thousand this is that Benaiah who was the mighty man of the thirty and over the thirty and of his course was Amizabad his son the fourth captain for the fourth month was Asahel the brother of Job and Zebediah his son after him and in his course were twenty and four thousand the fifth captain for the fifth month was Shamhuth the Israelite and in his course were twenty and four thousand the sixth Captain for the sixth month was Ira the son of Akish the Tekoit and in his course were twenty and four thousand the seventh captain for the seventh month was Hel as the Pelonite of the children of Ephraim and in his course were twenty and four thousand the eighth captain for the eighth month was Sabike the Hushathite of the Zarahites and in his course were twenty and four thousand the ninth captain for the ninth month was Abizer the Anathothite of the Benjamites and in his course were twenty and four thousand the tenth captain for the tenth month was Mare the Netophathite of the Zarahites and in his course were twenty and four thousand the eleventh captain for the eleventh month was Benaiah the Purathonite of the children of Ephraim and in his course were twenty and four thousand the twelfth captain for the twelfth month was Helday the Netophathite of Othniel and in his course were twenty and four thousand furthermore over the tribes of Israel of the Reubenites was 
Elizur the son of Zikri the ruler of the Simeonites Shephesha the son of Makkah of Levi Hashabiah the son of Kemuel of Aaron Zadok of Judah Elihu one of the brethren of David of Issachar Omri the son of Michael of Zebulun Ishmael the son of Obadiah of Naphtali Jerimoth the son of Israel of the children of Ephraim Hashia the son of Ezechiah of the half tribe of Manasseh Joel the son of Pedaiah of the half tribe of Manasseh in Gilead Ido the son of Zechariah of Benjamin Jasiel the Son of Abner of Dan Azarel the son of Jeroham these were the captains of the tribes of Israel but David took not the number of them from twenty years old and under because Hashem had said he would increase Israel like to the stars of heaven Job the son of Zeruiah began to number but finished not and there came wrath for this upon Israel neither was the number put into the account in the chronicles of King David and over the king's treasuries was Ismaveth the son of Adil and over the treasuries in the fields in the cities and in the villages and in the towers was Jonathan the son of Uziah and over them that did the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezri the son of Kelob and over the vineyards was Shimei the Ramadhite and over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi the Shipmite and over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the lowland was Baal Hanan the Gedrite and over the cellars of oil was Joash and over the herds that fed in Sharon was Shurta the Sharonite and over the herds that were in the valleys was Shaphat the son of Adlai and over the camels was Obil the Ishmaelite and over the asses was Jedeah the Moronathite and over the flocks was Jazize the Hagrite all these were the rulers of the substance which was King David's also Jonathan David's uncle was a counselor a man of understanding and a scribe and Jehiel the son of Hachmani was with the king's sons and Ahithophel was the king's Counselor and Hushai the archite was the king's friend and after Ahithophel was Jehoiada the son of Benaiah and Abiathar and the captain of the king's host was Job I Chronicles chapter and David assembled all the princes of Israel the princes of the tribes and the captains of the companies that served the king by course and the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds and the rulers over all the substance and cattle of the king and of his sons with the officers and the Mighty men even all the mighty men of valor unto Jerusalem then David the king stood up upon his feet and said hear me my brethren and my people as for me it was in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of Hashem and for the footstool of our God and I had made ready for the building but God said unto me thou shalt not build a house for my name because thou art a man of war and hast shed blood howbeit Hashem the God of Israel chose me out of all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever for he hath chosen Judah to be prince and in the house of Judah the house of my father and among the sons of my father he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel and of all my sons for Hashem hath given me many sons he hath chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of Hashem over Israel and he said unto me Solomon thy son he shall build my house and my courts for I have chosen him to be to me for a son and I will be to him for a father and I will establish his kingdom forever if he be constant to do my commandments and mine ordinances as at this day now therefore in the sight of all Israel the congregation of Hashem and in the hearing of our God observe and seek out all the commandments of Hashem your God that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever and thou Solomon my son know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind for Hashem searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts if thou seek him he will be found of thee but if thou forsake him he will cast thee off forever take heed now for Hashem hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary be strong and do it then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch of the temple and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper rooms thereof and of the inner chambers thereof and of the place of the ark cover and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit for the courts of the house of Hashem and for all the chambers round about for the treasuries of the house of God and for the treasuries of the hallowed things also for the courses of the priests and the levites and for all the work of the service of the house of Hashem and for all the vessels of service in the house of Hashem of gold by weight for the vessels of gold for all vessels of every kind of service of Silver for all the vessels of silver by weight for all vessels of every kind of service by weight also for the candlesticks of gold and for the lamps thereof of gold by weight for every candlestick and for the lamps thereof and for the candlesticks of silver silver by weight for every candlestick and for the lamps thereof according to the use of every candlestick and the gold by weight for the tables of showbread for every table and silver for the tables of silver and the flesh hooks and the basins and the jars of pure gold and for the golden bowls by weight for every bowl and for the silver bowls by weight for every bowl and for the altar of incense refined gold by weight and gold for the pattern of the chariot even the cherubim that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of Hashem all this do I give thee in writing as Hashem hath made me wise by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern and David said to Solomon his son be strong and of Good courage and do it fear not nor be dismayed for Hashem God even my God is with thee he will not fail thee nor forsake thee until all the work for the service of the house of Hashem be finished and behold there are the courses of the priests and the levites for all the service of the house of God and there shall be with thee in all manner of work every willing man that hath skill for any manner of service also the captains and all the people will be holy at thy commandment I. 
Chronicles chapter and David the king said unto all the congregation Solomon my son whom alone God hath chosen is yet young and tender and the work is great for the palace is not for man but for Hashem God now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for the things of gold and the silver for the things of silver and the brass for the things of brass the iron for the things of iron and wood for the things of wood onyx stones and stones to be set glistering stones and of divers colors and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance moreover also because I have set my affection on the house of my God seeing that I have a treasure of mine own of gold and silver I give it unto the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house even three thousand talents of gold of the gold of Ophir and seven thousand talents of refined silver wherewith to overlay the walls of the houses of gold for the things of gold and of silver for the things of silver and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers who then offereth willingly to consecrate himself this day unto Hashem then the princes of the fathers houses and the princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers over the king's work offered willingly and they gave for the service of the house of God of gold five thousand talents and ten thousand derricks and of silver ten thousand talents and of brass eighteen thousand talents and of iron a hundred thousand talents and they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of Hashem under the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly because with a whole heart they offered willingly to Hashem and David the king also rejoiced with great joy wherefore David blessed Hashem before all the congregation and David said blessed be thou O Hashem the God of Israel. Our father forever and ever thine O Hashem is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom O Hashem and thou art exalted as head above all both riches and honor come of thee and thou rulest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all now therefore our God we thank thee and praise thy glorious name but who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after the sword for all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee for we are strangers before thee and sojourners as all our fathers were our days on the earth are as a shadow and there is no abiding O Hashem our God all the store that we have prepared to build thee a house for thy holy name cometh of thy hand and is all thine own I know also my God that thou treest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness as for me in the uprightness of my heart I have willingly offered all these things and now have I seen with joy thy people that are present here offer willingly unto thee O Hashem the God of Abraham of Isaac and of Israel our fathers keep this forever even the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and direct their heart unto thee and give unto Solomon my son a whole heart to keep thy commandments thy testimonies and thy statutes and to do all these things and to build thee palace for which I have made provision and David said to all the congregation now bless Hashem your God and all the congregation blessed Hashem the God of their fathers and bowed down their heads and prostrate themselves before Hashem and before the king and they sacrificed sacrifices unto Hashem and offered burnt offerings unto Hashem on the morrow after that day even a thousand bullocks a thousand rams and a thousand lambs with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all. Israel and did eat and drink before Hashem on that day with great gladness and they made Solomon the son of David king the second time and anointed him unto Hashem to be prince and Zadok to be priest then Solomon sat on the throne of Hashem as king instead of David his father and prospered and all Israel here came to him and all the princes and the mighty men and all the sons likewise of king David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king and Hashem magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel now David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel and the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years seven years reigned he in Hebron and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem and he died in a good old age full of days riches and honor and Solomon his son reigned in his stead now the acts of David the king first and last behold they are written in the words of Samuel the seer and in the words of Nathan the prophet and in the words of Gad the seer with all his reign and his might and the times that went over him and over Israel and over all the kingdoms of the countries 2 Chronicles chapter and Solomon the son of David was strengthened in his kingdom and Hashem his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly and Solomon spoke unto all Israel to the captains of thousands and of hundreds and to the judges and to every prince in all. Israel the heads of the fathers houses so Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon for there was the tent of meeting of God which Moses the servant of Hashem had made in the wilderness but the ark of God had David brought up from Kiriath Jerim to the place that David had prepared for it for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem moreover the brazen altar that Bezalel the son of Uri the son of Hur had made had been put before the tabernacle of Hashem and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it and Solomon offered there upon the brazen altar before Hashem which was at the tent of meeting he offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it in that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him ask what I shall give thee and Solomon said unto God thou hast shown great kindness unto David my father and hast made me king in his stead now O Hashem God let thy promise unto David my father be established for thou hast made 
Me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this thy people that is so great and God said to Solomon because this was in thy heart and thou hast not asked riches wealth or honor nor the life of them that hate thee neither yet hast asked long life but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee neither shall there any after thee have the like so Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon from before the tent of meeting unto Jerusalem and he reigned over Israel and Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen that he placed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem and the king made silver and gold to be in Jerusalem as stones and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland for abundance and the horses which Solomon had were brought out of Egypt also out of Kiev the king's merchants buying them of the men of Kiev at a price and they fetched up and brought out of Egypt a chariot for six hundred shekels of silver and a horse for a hundred and fifty and so for all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram did they bring them out by their means now Solomon purposed to build a house for the name of Hashem and a house for his kingdom 2 Chronicles chapter and Solomon counted out threescore and ten thousand men to bear burdens and fourscore thousand men that were hewers in the mountains and three thousand and six hundred to oversee them and Solomon sent to Huram the king of Tyre saying as thou didst deal with David my father and didst send him cedars to build him a house to dwell therein even so deal with me behold I am about to build a house for the name of Hashem my God to dedicate it to him and to burn before him incense of sweet spices and for the continual showbread and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the sabbaths and on the new moons and on the appointed seasons of Hashem our God this is an ordinance forever to Israel and the house which I build is great for great is our God above all gods but who is able to build him a house seeing the Heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him who am I then that I should build him a house save only to offer before him now therefore send me a man skillful to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in iron and in purple and crimson and blue and that hath skill to grave all manner of gravings to be with the skillful men that are with me in Judah and in Jerusalem whom David my father did provide send me also cedar trees cypress trees and sandalwood out of Lebanon for I know that. Thy servants have skill to cut timber in Lebanon and behold my servants shall be with thy servants even to prepare me timber in abundance for the house which I am about to build shall be great and wonderful and behold I will give to thy servants the hewers that cut timber twenty thousand measures of beaten wheat and twenty thousand measures of barley and twenty thousand baths of wine and twenty thousand baths of oil then Huram the king of Tyre answered in writing which he sent to Solomon. Because Hashem loveth his people he hath made thee king over them Huram said moreover blessed be Hashem the God of Israel that made heaven and earth who hath given to David the king a wise son endued with discretion and understanding that should build a house for Hashem and a house for his kingdom and now I have sent a skillful man endued with understanding even Huram my master craftsman the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan and his father was a man of Tyre skillful to work in gold and in silver in brass in iron in stone and in timber in purple in blue and in fine linen and in crimson also to grave any manner of graving and to devise any device to do whatever may be set before him with thy skillful men and with the skillful men of my lord David thy father now therefore the wheat and the barley the oil and the wine which my lord hath spoken of let him send unto his servants and we will cut wood out of Lebanon as much as thou shalt need and we will bring it to thee in floats by sea to Joppa and thou shalt carry it up to Jerusalem and Solomon numbered all the strangers that were in the land of Israel after the numbering wherewith David his father had numbered them and they were found a hundred and fifty thousand and three thousand and six hundred and he set threescore and ten thousand of them to bear burdens and fourscore thousand to be hewers in the mountains and three thousand and six hundred overseers to set the people at work 2 Chronicles chapter then Solomon began to build the house of Hashem at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah where Hashem appeared unto David his father for which provision had been made in the place of David in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite and he began to build in the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign now these are the foundations which Solomon laid for the building of the house of God the length by cubits after the ancient measure was three score cubits and the breadth twenty cubits and the porch that was before the house the length of it according to the breadth of the house was twenty cubits and the height a hundred and twenty and he overlaid it within with pure gold and the greater house he covered with cypress wood which he overlaid with fine gold and wrought thereon palm trees and chains and he garnished the house with precious stones for beauty and the gold was gold of parvaim he overlaid also the house the beams the thresholds and the walls thereof and the doors thereof with gold and grave cherubim on the walls and he made the most holy place the length thereof according to the breadth of the house was twenty cubits and the breadth thereof twenty cubits and he overlaid it with fine gold amounting to six hundred talents and the weight of the nails was fifty shekels of gold and he overlaid the upper chambers with gold and in the most holy place he made two cherubim of image work and they overlaid them with gold and the wings of the 
cherubim were 20 cubits long the wing of the one cherub was 5 cubits reaching to the wall of the house and the other wing was likewise 5 cubits reaching to the wing of the other cherub and the wing of the other cherub was 5 cubits reaching to the wall of the house and the other wing was 5 cubits also joining to the wing of the other cherub the wings of these cherubim spread themselves forth 20 cubits and they stood on their feet and their faces were inward and he made the veil of blue and purple and crimson and fine linen and raw cherubim thereon also he made before the house two pillars of thirty and five cubits high and the capital that was on the top of each of them was five cubits and he made chains in the sanctuary and put them on the tops of the pillars and he made a hundred pomegranates and put them on the chains and he set up the pillars before the temple one on the right hand and the other on the left and called the name of that on the Right hand Jachin and the name of that on the left bow as 2 Chronicles chapter moreover he made an altar of brass 20 cubits the length thereof and 20 cubits the breadth thereof and 10 cubits the height thereof also he made the molten sea of 10 cubits from brim to brim round in compass and the height thereof was 5 cubits and a line of 30 cubits did compass it round about and under it was the similitude of oxen which did compass it round about for 10 cubits compassing. The sea round about the oxen were in two rows cast when it was cast it stood upon twelve oxen three looking toward the north and three looking toward the west and three looking toward the south and three looking toward the east and the sea was set upon them above and all their hinder parts were inward and it was a hand breadth thick and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup like the flower of a lily it received and held three thousand baths he made also ten lavers and put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them such things as belonged to the burnt offering they washed in them but the sea was for the priests to wash in and he made the ten candlesticks of gold according to the ordinance concerning them and he set them in the temple five on the right hand and five on the left he made also ten tables and placed them in the temple five on the right side and five on the left and he made a hundred basins of gold furthermore he made the court of the priests and the great court and doors for the court and overlaid the doors of them with brass and he set the sea on the right side of the house eastward toward the south and Huram made the pots and the shovels and the basins so Huram made an end of doing the work that he wrought for King Solomon in the house of God the two pillars and the bowls and the two capitals which were on the top of the pillars and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the top of the pillars and the four hundred pomegranates for the two networks two rows of pomegranates for each network to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were upon the top of the pillars he made also the bases and the labors made he upon the bases one sea and the twelve oxen under it the pots also and the shovels and the flesh hooks and all the vessels thereof did Huram his master craftsman make for King Solomon for the house of Hashem of bright brass in the plain of the Jordan did. The king cast them in the clay ground between Sukkah and Zirda thus Solomon made all these vessels in great abundance for the weight of the brass could not be found out and Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of God the golden altar also and the tables whereon was the showbread and the candlesticks with their lamps that they should burn according to the ordinance before the sanctuary of pure gold and the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold and that perfect gold and the snuffers and the basins and the pans and the fire pans of pure gold and as for the entry of the house the inner doors thereof for the most holy place and the doors of the house that is of the temple were of gold 2 chronicles chapter thus all the work that Solomon wrought for the house of Hashem was finished and Solomon brought in the things that David his father had hallowed even the silver and the gold and all the vessels and put them in the treasuries of the house of God then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes the princes of the fathers houses of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of Hashem out of the city of David which is Zion and all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king at the feast which was in the seventh month and all the elders of Israel came and the Levites took up the ark and they brought up the ark and the tent of meeting and all the holy vessels that were in the tent these did the priests and the Levites bring up and King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were before the ark sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted nor numbered for multitude and the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of Hashem unto its place into the sanctuary of the house to the most holy place even under the wings of the cherubim for the cherubim spread forth their wings over the place of the ark and the cherubim covered the ark and the staves thereof above and the staves were so long that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the sanctuary but they could not be seen without and there they are unto this day there was nothing in the ark save the two tables which Moses put there at Horeb when Hashem made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place for all the priests that were present had sanctified themselves and did not keep their courses also the Levites who were the singers all of them even as Afheman Jeduthun and their sons and their brethren arrayed in fine linen with cymbals and psalteries and harps stood at the east end of the altar and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets it came even to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Hashem and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised Hashem for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of Hashem so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of Hashem filled the house of God 2 Chronicles chapter then spoke Solomon Hashem hath said that he would dwell in the thick darkness but I have built thee a house of habitation and a place for thee to dwell in. 
forever and the king turned his face and blessed all the congregation of Israel and all the congregation of Israel stood and he said blessed be Hashem the God of Israel who spoke with his mouth unto David my father and hath with his hands fulfilled it saying since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house in that my name might be there neither chose I any man to be prince over my people Israel but I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of Hashem the God of Israel but Hashem said unto David my father whereas it was in thy heart to build a house for my name thou didst well that it was in thy heart nevertheless thou shalt not build the house but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins he shall build the house for my name and Hashem hath established his word that he spoke for I am risen up in the room of David my father and sit on the throne of Israel as Hashem promised and have built the house for the name of Hashem the God of Israel and there have I set the ark wherein is the covenant of Hashem which he made with the children of Israel and he stood before the altar of Hashem in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands for Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court and upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven and he said O Hashem the God of Israel there is no God like thee in the heaven or in the earth who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart who hast kept with thy servant David my father that which thou didst promise him yet thou spokest with thy mouth and hast fulfilled it with thy hand as it is this day now therefore O Hashem the God of Israel keep with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him saying there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel if only thy children take heed to their way to walk in my law as thou hast walked before me now therefore O Hashem the God of Israel let thy word be verified which thou spokest unto thy servant David but will God in very truth dwell with men on the earth behold heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee how much less this house which I have builded yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication O Hashem my God to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prith before thee that thine eyes may be open toward this house day and night even toward the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall pray toward this place and hearken thou to the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they shall pray toward this place yet hear thou from thy dwelling place even from heaven and when thou hearest forgive if a man sin against his neighbor and an oath be exacted of him to cause him to swear and he come and swear before thine altar in this house then hear thou from heaven and do and judge thy servants requiting the wicked to bring his way upon his own head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness and if thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy when they sin against thee and shall turn again and confess thy name and pray and make supplication before thee in this house then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them back unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain when they sin against thee if they pray toward this place and confess thy name turning from their sin when thou dost afflict them then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel when thou dost direct them on the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance if there be in the land famine if there be pestilence if there be blasting or mildew locust or caterpillar if their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities whatsoever plague or whatsoever sickness there be what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel who shall know every man his own plague and his own pain and shall spread forth his hands toward this house then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according to all his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou even thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers moreover concerning the stranger that is not of thy people Israel when be shall come out of a far country for thy great name's sake and thy mighty hand and thine outstretched arm when they shall come and pray toward this house then hear thou from heaven even from thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all the peoples of the earth may know thy name and fear thee as doth thy people Israel and that they may know that thy name is called upon this house which I have built if thy people go out to battle against their enemies by whatsoever way thou shalt send them and they pray unto thee toward the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name then hear thou from heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause if they sin against thee for there is no man that sinneth not and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captive unto a land far off or near yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive and turn and make supplication unto thee in the land of their captivity saying we have sinned we have done iniquitously and have dealt wickedly if they return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity whither they have carried them captive and pray toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers and the city which thou hast chosen and toward the house which I have built for thy name then hear thou from heaven even from thy dwelling place their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people who have sinned against thee now O my God let I beseech thee thine eyes be open and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place now therefore arise O Hashem God into thy resting place thou and the ark of thy strength let 
Thy priests O Hashem God be clothed with salvation and let thy saints rejoice in good O Hashem God turn not away the face of thine anointed remember the good deeds of David thy servant 2 Chronicles chapter now when Solomon had made an end of praying the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of Hashem filled the house and the priests could not enter into the house of Hashem because the glory of Hashem filled Hashem's house and all the children of Israel looked on when the fire came down and the glory of Hashem was upon the house and they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and prostrated themselves and gave thanks unto Hashem for he is good for his mercy endureth forever and the king and all the people offered sacrifice before Hashem and King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep so the king and all the people dedicated the house of God and the priests stood according to their offices the Levites also with instruments of music of Hashem which David the king had made to give thanks unto Hashem for his mercy endureth forever with the praises of David by their hand and the priests sounded trumpets over against them and all Israel stood moreover Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of Hashem for there he offered the burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offering and the meal offering and the fat so Solomon held the feast at that time seven days and all Israel with him a very great congregation from the entrance of Hamath unto the brook of Egypt and on the eighth day they held a solemn assembly for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days and on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month he sent the people away unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for the goodness that Hashem had shown unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people thus Solomon finished the house of Hashem and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of Hashem and in his own house he prosperously effected and Hashem appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice if I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locust to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people if my people upon whom my name is called shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place for now have I chosen and hallowed this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually and as for thee if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked and do according to all that I have commanded thee and wilt keep my statutes and mine ordinances then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I covenanted with David thy father saying there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel but if yet turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them then. Will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples and this house which is so high every one that passeth by it shall be astonished and shall say why hath Hashem done thus unto this land and to this house and they shall answer because they forsook Hashem the God of their fathers who brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worship them and serve them therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them 2 Chronicles chapter and it came to pass at the end of twenty years wherein Solomon had built the house of Hashem and his own house that the cities which Huram had given to Solomon Solomon built them and caused the children of Israel to dwell there and Solomon went to Hamath Zabah and prevailed against it and he built Tadmor in the wilderness and all the store cities which he Built in Hamath also he built Beth Haran the upper and Beth Haran the nether fortified cities with walls gates and bars and Baalath and all the store cities that Solomon had and all the cities for his chariots and the cities for his horsemen and all that Solomon desired to build for his pleasure in Jerusalem and in Lebanon and in all the land of his dominion as for all the people that were left of the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites who were not of Israel of their children that were left after them in the land whom the children of Israel consumed not of them did Solomon raise a levy of bond servants unto this day but of the children of Israel did Solomon make no servants for his work but they were men of war and chief of his captains and rulers of his chariots and of his horsemen and these were the chief officers of King Solomon even two hundred and fifty that bore rule over the people and Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David unto the house that he had built for her for he said no wife of mine shall dwell in the house of David king of Israel because the places are holy where unto the ark of Hashem hath come then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto Hashem on the altar of Hashem which he had built before the porch even as the duty of every day required offering according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbaths and on the new moons and on the appointed seasons three times in the year even in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and he appointed according to the ordinance of David his father the courses of the priests to their service and the levites to their charges to praise and to minister before the priests as the duty of every day required the doorkeepers also by their courses at every gate for so had David the man of God commanded and they departed not from the commandment of the king unto the priests and 
Levites concerning any matter or concerning the treasures so all the work of Solomon was set in order from the day of the foundation of the house of Hashem and until it was finished so the house of Hashem was perfected then went Solomon to Ezion Geber and to Elith on the seashore in the land of Edom and Huram sent him by the hands of his servants ships and servants that had knowledge of the sea and they came with the servants of Solomon to Ophir and fetched from thence four hundred and fifty talents of gold and brought them to King Solomon 2 Chronicles chapter and when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great train and camels that bore spices and gold in abundance and precious stones and when she was come to Solomon she spoke with him of all that was in her heart and Solomon told her all her questions and there was not anything hid from Solomon which he told her not and when they Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built and the food of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel his cupbearers also and their apparel and his ascent by which he went up into the house of Hashem there was no more spirit in her and she said to the king it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom howbeit I believed not their words until I came and mine eyes had seen it and behold the half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me thou exceedest the fame that I heard happy are thy men and happy are these thy servants that stand continually before thee and hear thy wisdom blessed be Hashem thy God who delighted in thee to set thee on his throne to be king for Hashem thy God because thy God loved Israel to establish them forever therefore made he thee king over them to do justice and righteousness and she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold and spices in great abundance and precious stones neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon and the servants also of Huram and the servants of Solomon that brought gold from Ophir brought sandalwood and precious stones and the king made of the sandalwood paths for the house of Hashem and for the king's house and harps and psalteries for the singers and there were none such seen before in the land of Judah and King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire whatsoever she asked beside that which she had brought unto the king so she turned and went to her own land she and her servants now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and three score and six talents of gold beside that which the traffickers and merchants brought and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon and King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold six. Hundred shekels of beaten gold went to one target three hundred shields of beaten gold also three hundred shekels of gold went to one shield and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon moreover the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold and there were six steps to the throne with a footstool of gold which were fastened to the throne and arms on either side by the place of the seat and two lions standing beside the arms and twelve lions stood. There on the one side and on the other upon the six steps there was not the like made in any kingdom and all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold silver was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon for the king had ships that went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram once every three years came the ships of Tarshish bringing gold and silver ivory and apes and peacocks so King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom and all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart and they brought every man his present vessels of silver and vessels of gold and raiment armor and spices horses and mules arrayed year by year and Solomon had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots and twelve thousand horsemen that he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem and he ruled over all the kings from the river even unto the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt and the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland for abundance and they brought horses for Solomon out of Egypt and out of all lands now the rest of the acts of Solomon first and last are they not written in the words of Nathan the prophet and in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite and in the visions of Jeddo the seer concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat and Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years and Solomon slept with his fathers they buried him in the city of David his father and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead 2 Chronicles chapter and Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king and it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard of it for he was in Egypt whither he had fled from the presence of King Solomon that Jeroboam returned out of Egypt and they sent and called him and Jeroboam and all Israel came and they spoke to Rehoboam saying thy father made our yoke grievous now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter and we will serve thee and he said unto them come again unto me after three days and the people departed and King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived saying what counsel give ye me to return answer to this people and they spoke unto him saying if thou be kind to this people and please them and speak good words to them then they will be thy servants forever but he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and took counsel with the young men that were grown up with him that stood before him and he said unto them what counsel give ye that we may return answer to this people who have spoken to me saying make the yoke that thy father did put upon 
us lighter and the young men that were grown up with him spoke unto him saying thus shalt thou say unto the people that spoke unto thee saying thy father made our yoke heavy but make thou it lighter unto us thus shalt thou say unto them my little finger is thicker than my father's loins and now whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke I will add to your yoke my father chastised you with whips but I will chastise you with scorpions so Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam. The third day as the king bade saying come to me again the third day and the king answered them roughly and king Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men and spoke to them after the counsel of the young men saying my father made your yoke heavy but I will add thereto my father chastised you with whips but I will chastise you with scorpions so the king hearkened not unto the people for it was brought about of God that Hashem might establish his word which he spoke by the hand of Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat and when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them the people answered the king saying what portion have we in David neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse every man to your tents O Israel now see to thine own house David so all Israel departed unto their tents but as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah Rehoboam reigned over them then king Rehoboam sent Hadoram who was over the levy and the children of Israel stoned him with stones so that he died and King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem so Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day 2 Chronicles chapter and when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem he assembled the house of Judah and Benjamin a hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men that were warriors to fight against Israel to bring the kingdom back to Rehoboam but the word of Hashem came to Shimei the man of God saying speak unto Rehoboam the son of Solomon king of Judah and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin saying thus saith Hashem ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren return every man to his house for this thing is of me so they hearkened unto the words of Hashem and returned from going against Jeroboam and Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah he built even Bethlehem and Etam and Tekoa and Bethzur and Soko and Adullam and Gath and Mersha and Ziph and Adoram and Lachish and Azekah and Zorah and Ijalan and Hebron which are in Judah and in Benjamin fortified cities and he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them and store of victual and oil and wine and in every city he put shields and spears and made them exceeding strong and Judah and Benjamin adhered to him and the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel presented themselves to him out of all their border for the Levites left their open land and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem for Jeroboam and his sons cast them off that they should not execute the priest's office unto Hashem and he appointed him priests for the high places and for the satyrs and for the calves which he had made and after them out of all the tribes of Israel such as set their hearts to seek Hashem the God of Israel came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto Hashem the God of their fathers so they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam the Son of Solomon strong three years for they walked three years in the way of David and Solomon and Rehoboam took him a wife Mahalath the daughter of Jerimoth the son of David and of Abihail the daughter of Eliab the son of Jesse and she bore him sons Jush and Shemariah and Zaham and after her he took Makah the daughter of Absalom and she bore him Abijah and Atai and Ziza and Shalamith and Rehoboam loved Makah the daughter of Absalom above all his wives and his concubines for he took 18 wives and threescore concubines and begot twenty and eight sons and threescore daughters and Rehoboam appointed Abijah the son of Makah to be chief even the prince among his brethren for he was minded to make him king and he dealt wisely and dispersed of all his sons throughout all the lands of Judah and Benjamin unto every fortified city and he gave them victual in abundance and he sought for them many wives 2 Chronicles chapter and it came to pass when the kingdom of Rehoboam was established and he was strong that he forsook the law of Hashem and all Israel with him and it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem because they had dealt treacherously with Hashem with twelve hundred chariots and threescore thousand horsemen and the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt the Lubim the Sukim and the Ethiopians and he took the fortified cities which pertained to Judah and came unto Jerusalem now Shimei the prophet came to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak and said unto them thus saith Hashem ye have forsaken me therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak then the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves and they said the Hashem is righteous and when Hashem saw that they humbled themselves the word of Hashem came to Shimei saying they have humbled themselves I will not destroy them but I will grant them some deliverance and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak nevertheless they shall be his servants that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries so Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of Hashem and the treasures of the king's house he took all away he took away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made and king Rehoboam made in their stead shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard that kept the door of the king's house and it was so that as oft as the king entered into the house of Hashem the guard came and bore them and brought them back into the guard chamber and when he humbled himself the anger of Hashem turned from him that he would not destroy him altogether and moreover in Judah there were good things found so king Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and 
reigned for Rehoboam was forty and one years old when he began to reign and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem the city which Hashem had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there and his mother's name was Namah the Ammonites and he did that which was evil because he set not his heart to seek Hashem now the acts of Rehoboam first and last are they not written in the histories of Shimei the prophet and of Ido the seer after the manner of genealogies and there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually and Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David and Abijah his son reigned in his stead 2 Chronicles chapter in the 18th year of King Jeroboam began Abijah to reign over Judah 3 years reigned he in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Micaiah the daughter of Uriel of Jibiah and there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam and Abijah joined battle with an army of valiant men of war even 400 thousand chosen men and Jeroboam set the battle in array against him with eight hundred thousand chosen men who were mighty men of valor and Abijah stood up upon Mount Zemarim which is in the hill country of Ephraim and said hear me O Jeroboam and all Israel ought ye not to know that Hashem the God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt yet Jeroboam the son of Nebat the servant of Solomon the son of David rose up and rebelled against his lord and there were gathered unto him vain men base fellows that strengthened themselves against Rehoboam the son of Solomon when Rehoboam was young and faint-hearted and could not withstand them and now ye think to withstand the kingdom of Hashem in the hand of the sons of David and ye are a great multitude and there are with you the golden calves which Jeroboam made you for gods have ye not driven out the priests of Hashem the sons of Aaron and the Levites and have made you priests after the manner of the peoples of other lands so that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams the same Bekometh a priest of them that are no gods but as for us Hashem is our God and we have not forsaken him and we have priests ministering unto Hashem the sons of Aaron and the Levites in their work and they burn unto Hashem every morning and every evening burnt offerings and sweet incense the showbread also set they in order upon the pure table and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof to burn every evening for we keep the charge of Hashem our God but ye have forsaken him and behold God is with us at our head and his priests with the trumpets of alarm to sound an alarm against you O children of Israel fight ye not against Hashem the God of your fathers for ye shall not prosper but Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them so they were before Judah and the ambushment was behind them and when Judah Looked back behold the battle was before and behind them and they cried unto Hashem and the priests sounded with the trumpets then the men of Judah gave a shout and as the men of Judah shouted it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah and the children of Israel fled before Judah and God delivered them into their hand and Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter so there fell down slain of Israel five hundred thousand chosen men thus the Children of Israel were brought under at that time and the children of Judah prevailed because they relied upon Hashem the God of their fathers and Abijah pursued after Jeroboam and took cities from him Bethel with the towns thereof and Shinah with the towns thereof and Ephron with the towns thereof neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah and Hashem smote him and he died but Abijah waxed mighty and took unto himself fourteen wives and begot twenty and two sons and sixteen daughters and the rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways and his sayings are written in the commentary of the prophet Ido so Abijah slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David and Asa his son reigned in his stead in his days the land was quiet ten years two chronicles chapter and Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of Hashem his God for he took away the strange altars and the high places and broke down the pillars and hewed down the Asherim and commanded Judah to seek Hashem the God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the sun images and the kingdom was quiet before him and he built fortified cities in Judah for the land was quiet and he had no war in those years because Hashem had given him rest for he said unto Judah let us build these cities and make about them walls and towers gates and bars the land is yet before us because we have sought Hashem our God we have sought him and he hath given us rest on every side so they built and prospered and Asa had an army that bore bucklers and spears out of Judah three hundred thousand and out of Benjamin that bore shields and drew bows two hundred and fourscore thousand all these were mighty men of valor and there came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian with an army of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and he came unto Mersha then Asa went out to meet him and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephath at Mersha and Asa cried unto Hashem his God and said Hashem there is none beside thee to help between the mighty and him that hath no strength help us O Hashem our God for we rely on thee and in thy name are we come against this multitude thou art Hashem our God let not man prevail against thee so Hashem smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah and the Ethiopians fled and Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar and there fell of the Ethiopians so that none remained alive for they were shattered before Hashem and before his host and they carried away very much booty and they smote all the cities round about Gerar for a terror from Hashem came upon them and they spoiled all the cities for there was much spoil in them they smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep in abundance and camels and returned to Jerusalem 2 Chronicles chapter and the Spirit of God.
came upon Azariah the son of Odet and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him Hear ye me Asa and all Judah and Benjamin Hashem is with you while ye are with him and if ye seek him he will be found of you but if ye forsake him he will forsake you now for long seasons Israel was without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law but when in their distress they turned unto Hashem the God of Israel and sought him he was found of them and in those times there was no peace. To him that went out nor to him that came in but great discomfitures were upon all the inhabitants of the lands and they were broken in pieces nation against nation and city against city for God did discomfit them with all manner of adversity but be ye strong and let not your hands be slack for your work shall be rewarded and when Asa heard these words even the prophecy of Odette the prophet he took courage and put away the detestable things out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from the hill country of Ephraim and he renewed the altar of Hashem that was before the porch of Hashem and he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and them that sojourned with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that Hashem his God was with him so they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa and they sacrificed unto Hashem in that day of the spoil which they had brought seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep and they entered into the covenant to seek Hashem the God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul and that whosoever would not seek Hashem the God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman and they swore unto Hashem with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with horns and all Judah rejoiced at the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them and Hashem gave them rest round about and also Maka the mother of Asa the king he removed her from being queen because she had made an abominable image for an Asherah and Asa cut down her image and made dust of it and burnt it at the brook Kidron but the high places were not taken away out of Israel nevertheless the heart of Asa was whole all his days and he brought into the house of God the things that his father had hallowed and that he himself had hallowed silver and gold and vessels and there was no more war unto the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa 2 Chronicles chapter in the six and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa Basa king of Israel went up against Judah and built Ramah that he might not suffer any to go out or come in to Asa king of Judah then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of Hashem and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad king of Aram that dwelt at Damascus saying there is a league between me and thee as there was between my father and thy father behold I have sent thee silver and gold go break thy league with Basa king of Israel that he may depart from me and Ben-Hadad hearkened unto king Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel and they smote Ijan and Dan and Abel Mame and all the store cities of Naphtali and it came to pass when Basa heard thereof that he left off building Ramah and let his work cease then Asa the king took all Judah and they carried away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof wherewith Basa had built it and he built there with Geba and Mizpah and at that time Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah and said unto him because thou hast relied on the king of Aram and hast not relied on Hashem thy God therefore is the host of the king of Aram escaped out of thy hand were not the Ethiopians and the Lubim a huge host with chariots and horsemen exceeding many yet because thou didst rely on Hashem he delivered them into thy hand for the eyes of Hashem run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is whole toward him herein thou hast done foolishly for from henceforth thou shalt have wars then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in the prison house for he was in a rage with him because of this thing and Asa oppressed some of the people the same time and behold the acts of Asa first and last lo they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel and in the thirty and ninth year of his reign Asa was diseased in his feet his disease was exceeding great yet in his disease he sought not to Hashem but to the physicians and Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign and they buried him in his own sepulchres which he had hewn out for himself in the city of David and laid him in the bed which was filled with sweet odors and divers kinds of spices prepared by the perfumer's art and they made a very great burning for him 2 Chronicles chapter and Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel and he placed forces in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim which Asa his father had taken and Hashem was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto the Baalim but sought to the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel therefore Hashem established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents and he had riches and honor in abundance and his heart was lifted up in the ways of Hashem and furthermore he took away the high places and the Asherim out of Judah also in the third year of his reign he sent his princes even Ben-Hale and Obadiah and Zechariah and Nethanel and Micaiah to teach in the cities of Judah and with them the Levites even Shemaiah and Nethaniah and Zebadiah and Asahel and Shemiramoth and Jehonathan and Adonijah and Tobijah and Tabadonijah the Levites and with them Elisham and Jehoram the priests and they taught in Judah having the book of the law of Hashem with them and they went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught among the people and a terror from Hashem fell upon all the kingdoms of the lands that were 
round about Judah so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat and some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and silver for tribute the Arabians also brought him flocks 7,700 rams and 7,700 he goats and Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly and he built in Judah castles and cities of store and he had many works in the cities of Judah and men of war mighty men of valor in Jerusalem and this was the numbering of them. According to their fathers houses of Judah the captains of thousands Adna the captain and with him mighty men of valor three hundred thousand and next to him Jehohanan the captain and with him two hundred and fourscore thousand and next to him Amasia the son of Zikri who willingly offered himself unto Hashem and with him two hundred thousand mighty men of valor and of Benjamin Iliad a mighty man of valor and with him two hundred thousand armed with bow and shield and next to him. Jehozabad and with him a hundred and fourscore thousand ready prepared for war these were they that waited on the king beside those whom the king put in the fortified cities throughout all Judah 2 Chronicles chapter now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and he allied himself with Ahab by marriage and after a lapse of years he went down to Ahab to Samaria and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that were with him and persuaded him to go up. With him to Ramoth Gilead and Ahab king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat king of Judah wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead and he answered him I am as thou art and my people as thy people and we will be with thee in the war and Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel inquire I pray thee at the word of Hashem today then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together four hundred men and said unto them shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear and they said go. Up for God will deliver it into the hand of the king but Jehoshaphat said is there not here besides a prophet of Hashem that we might inquire of him and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of Hashem but I hate him for he never prophesieth good concerning me but always evil the same is Micaiah the son of Imla and Jehoshaphat said let not the king say so then the king of Israel called an officer and said fetch quickly Micaiah the son of Imla now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah sat each on his throne arrayed in their robes and they sat in a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria and all the prophets were prophesying before them and Zedekiah the son of Chenana made him horns of iron and said thus saith Hashem with these shalt thou gore the Arameans until they be consumed and all the prophets prophesied so saying go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper for Hashem will deliver it into the hand of the king and the messenger that went to call Micaiah spoke to him saying behold the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one mouth let thy word therefore I pray thee be like one of theirs and speak thou good and Micaiah said as Hashem liveth what my God saith that will I speak and when he was come to the king the king said unto him Micaiah shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear and he said go ye up and prosper and they shall be delivered into your hand and the king said to him how many times shall I adjure thee that thou speak unto me nothing but the truth in the name of Hashem and he said I saw all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd and Hashem said these have no master let them return every man to his house in peace and the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil and he said therefore hear ye the word of Hashem I saw Hashem sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left and Hashem said who shall entice Ahab king of Israel that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead and one spoke saying after this manner and another saying after that manner and there came forth the spirit and stood before Hashem and said I will entice him and Hashem said unto him wherewith and he said I will go forth and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said thou shalt entice him and shalt prevail also go forth and do so now therefore behold Hashem hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets and Hashem hath spoken evil concerning thee then Zedekiah the son of Chenana came near and smote Micaiah upon the check and said which way went the spirit of Hashem from me to speak unto thee and Micaiah said behold thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself and the king of Israel said take ye Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon the governor of the city and to Joash the king's son and say thus saith the king put this fellow in the prison and feed him with scant bread and with scant water until I return in peace and Micaiah said if thou return at all in peace Hashem hath not spoken by me and he said hear ye peoples all of you so the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the kind of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat I will disguise myself and go into the battle but put thou on thy robe so the king of Israel disguised himself and they went into the battle now the king of Aram had commanded the captains of his chariots saying fight neither with small nor great save only with the king of Israel and it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said it is the king of Israel therefore they turned about to fight against him but Jehoshaphat cried out and Hashem helped him and God moved them to depart from him and it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursuing him and a certain man drew his bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the lower armor and the breastplate wherefore he said to the driver of the chariot turn thy hand and carry me out of the host for I am sore wounded and the battle increased that day howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up.
in his chariot against the Arameans until the even and about the time of the going down of the sun he died 2 Chronicles chapter and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem and Jehu the son of Hanani the seer went out to meet him and said to king Jehoshaphat shouldest thou help the wicked and love them that hate Hashem for this thing wrath is upon thee from before Hashem nevertheless there are good things found in thee in that thou hast put away the Ashroth out of the land and hast set thy heart to seek God and Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and brought them back unto Hashem the God of their fathers and he set judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah city by city and said to the judges consider what ye do for ye judge not for man but for Hashem and he is with you in giving judgment now therefore let the fear of Hashem be upon you take heed and do it for there is no iniquity with Hashem our God nor respect of persons nor taking of bribes moreover in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat said of the Levites and the priests and of the heads of the fathers houses of Israel for the judgment of Hashem and for controversies and they returned to Jerusalem and he charged them saying thus shall ye do in the fear of Hashem faithfully and with a whole heart and whensoever any controversy shall come to you from your brethren that dwell in their cities between blood and blood between law and commandment statutes and ordinances ye shall warn them that they be not guilty towards Hashem and so wrath come upon you and upon your brethren thus shall ye do and ye shall not be guilty and behold Amariah the chief priest is over you in all matters of Hashem and Zebediah the son of Ishmael the ruler of the house of Judah in all the king's matters also the officers of the Levites before you deal courageously and Hashem be with the good 2 Chronicles chapter and it came to pass after this that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them some of the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea from Aram and behold they are in Hazazontamur the same as Engadi and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek unto Hashem and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah and Judah gathered themselves together to seek help of Hashem even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek Hashem and Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of Hashem before the new court and he said O Hashem the God of our fathers art not thou alone God in heaven and art not thou ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations and in thy hand is power and might so that none is able to withstand thee didst not thou O our God drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name saying if evil come upon us the sore judgment or pestilence or famine we will stand before this house and before thee for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction and thou wilt hear and save and now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt but they turned aside from them and destroyed them not behold they render unto us evil to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit O our God wilt thou not execute judgment on them for we have no might against this great multitude that cometh against us neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon thee and all Judah stood before Hashem with their little ones their wives and their children then upon Hahaziel the son of Zechariah the son of Benaiah the son of Jeel the son of Mataniah the Levite of the sons of Asaph came the spirit of Hashem in the midst of the congregation and he said hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king Jehoshaphat thus saith Hashem unto you fear not ye neither be dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's tomorrow go ye down against them behold they come up by the ascent of Ziz and ye shall find them at the end of the valley before the wilderness of Jeruel ye shall not need to fight in this battle set yourselves stand ye still and see the salvation of Hashem with you O Judah and Jerusalem fear not nor be dismayed tomorrow go out against them for Hashem is with you and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before Hashem worshipping Hashem and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise Hashem the God of Israel with an exceeding loud voice and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in Hashem your God so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper and when he had taken counsel with the people he appointed them that should sing unto Hashem and praise in the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and say give thanks unto Hashem for his mercy endureth forever and when they began to sing and to praise Hashem set liars in wait against the children of Ammon Moab and Mount Seir that were come against Judah and they were smitten for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir every one helped to destroy another and when Judah came to the watch tower of the wilderness they looked upon the multitude and behold they were dead bodies fallen to the earth and there were none that escaped and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take the spoil of them they found among them in abundance both riches and dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away and they were three days in taking the spoil it was so much and on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka. 
therefore there they blessed Hashem therefore the name of that place was called the valley of Barakah unto this day then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy for Hashem had made them to rejoice over their enemies and they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of Hashem and a terror from God was on all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard that Hashem fought against the enemies of Israel so the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest round about and Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah he was thirty and five years old when he began to reign and he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Ashabah the daughter of Shilhai and he walked in the way of Asa his father and turned not aside from it doing that which was right in the eyes of Hashem howbeit the high places were not taken away neither as yet had the people set their hearts unto the God of their fathers now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat first and last behold they are written in the words of Jehu the son of Hanani which is inserted in the book of the kings of Israel and after this did Jehoshaphat king of Judah join himself with Ahaziah king of Israel the same did very wickedly and he joined him with himself to make ships to go to Tarshish and they made the ships in Ezi and Jeber then Elizer the son of Dodeva who of Mershah prophesied against Jehoshaphat saying because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah Hashem hath made a breach in thy works and the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tarshish 2 Chronicles chapter and Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David and Jehoram his son reigned in his stead and he had brethren the sons of Jehoshaphat Azariah and Jehiel and Zechariah and Azariah and Michael and Shephesha all these were the sons of Jehoshaphat king of Israel and their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and of precious things with fortified cities in Judah but the kingdom gave he to Jehoram because he was the firstborn now when Jehoram was risen up over the kingdom of his father and had strengthened himself he slew all his brethren with the sword and divers also of the princes of Israel Jehoram was thirty and two years old when he began to reign and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem and he walked in the way of the kings of Israel as did the house of Ahab for he had the daughter of Ahab to wife and he did that which was evil in the sight of Hashem howbeit Hashem would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David and as he promised to give a lamp to him and to his children alway in his days Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves then Jehoram passed over with his captains and all his chariots with him and he rose up by night and smote the Edomites that compassed him about and the captains of the chariots so Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day then did Libna revolt at the same time from under his hand because he had forsaken Hashem the god of his fathers moreover he made high places in the mountains of Judah and made the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go astray and drew Judah away and there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet saying thus saith Hashem the god of David thy father because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go astray like as the house of Ahab made Israel to go astray and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house who were better than thyself behold Hashem will smite with a great plague thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy substance and thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day and Hashem stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians that are beside the Ethiopians and they came up against Judah and broke into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house and his sons also and his wives so that there was never a son left him save Jehoahaz the youngest of his sons and after all this Hashem smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease and it came to pass that in process of time at the end of two years his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness and he died of sore diseases and his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years and he departed joyless and they buried him in the city of David but not in the sepulchres of the kings 2 Chronicles chapter and the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah his youngest son king in his stead for the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest so Ahaziah the son of Jehoram king of Judah reigned forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign and he reigned one year in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Athaliah the daughter of Omri he also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly and he did that which was evil. In the sight of Hashem as did the house of Ahab for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction he walked also after their counsel and went with Jehoram the son of Ahab king of Israel to war against Hazael king of Aram at Ramoth Gilead and the Arameans wounded Joram and he returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which they had given him at Ramah when he fought against Hazael king of Aram and Azariah the son of Jehoram king of Judah went down to see. Jehoram the son of Ahab in Jezreel because he was sick now the downfall of Ahaziah was of God in that he went unto Joram for when he was come he went out with Jehoram against Jehu the son of Nimshi whom Hashem had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab and it came to pass when Jehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab that he found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah ministering to Ahaziah and slew them and he sought Ahaziah and they caught him now he was 
hiding in Samaria and they brought him to Jehu and slew him and they buried him for they said he is the son of Jehoshaphat who sought Hashem with all his heart and there was none of the house of Ahaziah that had power to hold the kingdom now when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah but Jehoshabeth the daughter of the king took Joash the son of Ahaziah and stole him away from among the king's sons that were slain and put him and his nurse in the bedchamber so Jehoshabeth the daughter of King Jehoram the wife of Jehoiada the priest for she was the sister of Ahaziah hid him from Athaliah so that she slew him not and he was with them hid in the house of God six years and Athaliah reigned over the land 2 Chronicles chapter and in the seventh year Jehoiada strengthened himself and took the captains of hundreds Azariah the son of Jeroham and Ishmael the son of Jehohanan and Azariah the son of Obed and Masiah the son of Adaiah and Elishaphat the son of Zikri into covenant with him and they went about in Judah and gathered the Levites out of all the cities of Judah and the heads of Fathers houses of Israel and they came to Jerusalem and all the congregation made a covenant with the king in the house of God and he said unto them behold the king's son shall reign as Hashem hath spoken concerning the sons of David this is the thing that ye shall do a third part of you that come in on the Sabbath of the priests and of the Levites shall be porters of the doors and a third part shall be at the king's house and a third part at the gate of the foundation and all the people shall be in the courts of the house of Hashem but let none come into the house of Hashem save the priests and they that minister of the Levites they shall come in for they are holy but all the people shall keep the charge of Hashem and the Levites shall compass the king round about every man with his weapons in his hand and whosoever cometh into the house let him be slain and be ye with the king when he cometh in and when he goeth out so the Levites and all Judah did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded and they took every man his men those that were to come in on the Sabbath with those that were to go out on the Sabbath for Jehoiada the priest dismissed not the courses and Jehoiada the priest delivered to the captains of hundreds the spears and bucklers and shields that had been King David's which were in the house of God and he set all the people every man with his weapon in his hand from the right side of the house to the left side of the house along by the altar and the house by the king round about then they brought out the king's son and put upon him the crown and the insignia and made him king and Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and they said long live the king and when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king she came to the people into the house of Hashem and she looked and behold the king stood on his platform at the entrance and the captains and the trumpets by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets the singers also played on instruments of music and led the singing of praise then Athaliah rent her clothes and said treason treason and Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds that were set over the host and said unto them have her forth between the ranks and whoso followeth her let him be slain with the sword for the priest said slay her not in the house of Hashem so they made way for her and she went to the entry of the horse gate to the king's house and they slew her there and Jehoiada made a covenant between himself and all the people and the king that they should be Hashem's people and all the people went to the house of Baal and broke it down and broke his altars and his images in pieces and slew Matan the priest of Baal before the altars and Jehoiada appointed the offices of the house of Hashem under the hand of the priests the Levites whom David had distributed in the house of Hashem to offer the burnt offerings of Hashem as it is written in the law of Moses with rejoicing and with singing according to the direction of David and he set the porters at the gates of the house of Hashem that none that was unclean in anything should enter in and he took the captains of hundreds and the nobles and the governors of the people and all the people of the land and brought down the king from the house of Hashem and they came through the upper gate unto the king's house and set the king upon the throne of the kingdom so all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet and they slew Athaliah with the sword 2 Chronicles chapter Joash was seven years old when he began to reign and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Zabiah of Beersheba and Joash did that which was right in the eyes of Hashem all the days of Jehoiada the priest and Jehoiada took for him two wives and he begot sons and daughters and it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to restore the house of Hashem and he gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them go out unto the cities of Judah and gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year and see that ye hasten the matter howbeit the Levites hastened it not. And the king called for Jehoiada the chief and unto him why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the tax of Moses the servant of Hashem and of the congregation of Israel for the tent of the testimony for the sons of Athaliah that wicked woman had broken up the house of God and also all the hallowed things of the house of Hashem did they bestow upon the Baalim so the king commanded and they made a chest and set it without at the gate of the house of Hashem and they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in for Hashem the tax that Moses the servant of God laid upon Israel in the wilderness and all the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they had made an end and it was so that at what time the chest was brought unto the king's officers by the hand of the Levites and when they saw that there was much money the king's scribe and the chief priest's officer came and emptied the chest and took it and carried it back to its place thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance and the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of Hashem and they hired masons and carpenters to restore the house of Hashem and also such as wrought iron and brass to repair the house of Hashem so the workmen wrought and the work was perfected by them and they set up the house of God in its state and strengthened it and when they 
had made an end they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada whereof were made vessels for the house of Hashem even vessels wherewith to minister and buckets and pans and vessels of gold and silver and they offered burnt offerings in the house of Hashem continually all the days of Jehoiada but Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days and he died a hundred and thirty years old was he when he died and they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel and toward God and his house now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and prostrate themselves before the king then the king hearkened unto them and they forsook the house of Hashem the God of their fathers and served the Asherim and the idols and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their guiltiness yet he sent prophets to them to bring them back unto Hashem and they admonished them but they would not give ear and the spirit of God clothed. Zechariah the son of Jehoiada the priest and he stood above the people and said unto them thus saith God why transgress ye the commandments of Hashem that ye cannot prosper because ye have forsaken Hashem he hath also forsaken you and they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of Hashem thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him but slew his son and when he died he said the Hashem look upon it and require it and it came to pass when the year was come about that the army of the Arameans came up against him and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus for the army of the Arameans came with a small company of men and Hashem delivered a very great host into their hand because they had forsaken Hashem the god of their fathers so they executed judgment. Upon Joash and when they were departed from him for they left him in great diseases his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest and slew him on his bed and he died and they buried him in the city of David but they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings and these are they that conspired against him Zabad the son of Shemith the Ammonites and Jehozabad the son of Shimrith the Moabites now concerning his sons and the multitude of the burdens against him and the rebuilding of the house of God behold they are written in the commentary of the book of the kings and Amaziah his son reigned in his stead 2 chronicles chapter Amaziah was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jehoden of Jerusalem and he did that which was right in the eyes of Hashem but not with a whole heart now it came to pass when the kingdom was established unto him that he slew his servants who had killed the king his father but he put not their children to death but did according to that which is written in the law in the book of Moses as Hashem commanded saying the fathers shall not die for the children neither shall the children die for the fathers but every man shall die for his own sin moreover Amaziah gathered Judah together and ordered them according to their fathers houses under captains of thousands and captains of hundreds even all. Judah and Benjamin and he numbered them from twenty years old and upward and found them three hundred thousand chosen men able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield he hired also a hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for a hundred talents of silver but there came a man of God to him saying O king let not the army of Israel go with thee for Hashem is not with Israel even with all the children of Ephraim but if thou wilt go and do engage never so valiantly. In battle God will cast thee down before the enemy for God hath power to help and to cast down and Amaziah said to the man of God but what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel and the man of God answered the Hashem is able to give thee much more than this then Amaziah separated them to with the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go back home wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah and they returned home in fierce anger. And Amaziah took courage and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote of the children of Seir ten thousand and other ten thousand did the children of Judah carry away alive and brought them unto the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock that they all were broken in pieces but the men of the army whom Amaziah sent back that they should not go with him to battle fell upon the cities of Judah from Samaria even unto Beth Haran and smote of them three thousand and took much spoil now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and prostrate himself before them and offered unto them wherefore the anger of Hashem was kindled against Amaziah and he sent unto him a prophet who said unto him why hast thou sought after the gods of the people which have not delivered their own people out of thy hand and it came to pass as he talked with him that the king said unto him have we made thee of the king's counsel forbear why shouldest thou be smitten then the prophet forbore and said I know that God hath determined to destroy thee because thou hast done this and hast not hearkened unto my counsel then Amaziah king of Judah took advice and sent to Joash the son of Jehoahaz the son of Jehu king of Israel saying come let us look one another in the face and Joash king of Israel sent to Amaziah king of Judah saying the thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon saying give thy daughter to my son to wife and there passed by the wild beasts that were in Lebanon and trod down the thistle thou sayest lo thou hast smitten Edom will thy heart therefore lift thee up to glory therein abide now at home why shouldest thou meddle with evil that thou shouldest fall even thou and Judah with thee but Amaziah would not hear for it was of God that he might deliver them into the hand of their 
enemies because they had sought after the gods of Edom so Joash king of Israel went up and he and Amaziah king of Judah looked one another in the face at Beth Shemesh which Belangath to Judah and Judah was put to the worse before Israel and they fled every man to his tent and Joash king of Israel took Amaziah king of Judah the son of Joash the son of Jehoahaz at Beth Shemesh and brought him to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim unto the corner gate. 400 cubits and he took all the gold and silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom and the treasures of the king's house the hostages also and returned to Samaria and Amaziah the son of Joash king of Judah lived after the death of Joash son of Jehoahaz king of Israel fifteen years now the rest of the acts of Amaziah first and last behold are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel now from the time that Amaziah did turn away from following Hashem they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem and he fled to Lachish but they sent after him to Lachish and slew him there and they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah 2 Chronicles chapter and all the people of Judah took Uzziah who was 16 years old and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah he built Ilith and restored it to Judah after that the king slept with his father 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jkala of Jerusalem and he did that which was right in the eyes of Hashem according to all that his father Amaziah had done and he set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the vision of God and as long as he sought Hashem God made him to prosper and he went forth and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabna and the wall of Ashdod and he built cities in the country of Ashdod and among the Philistines and God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbael and the Munim and the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah and his name spread abroad even to the entrance of Egypt for he waxed exceeding strong moreover Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning and fortified them and be built towers in the wilderness and hewed out many cisterns for he had much cattle in the lowland also and in the tableland and he had husbandmen and vine dressers in the mountains and in the fruitful fields for he loved husbandry moreover Uzziah had an army of fighting men that went out to war by bands according to the number of their reckoning made by Jeel the scribe and Masiah the officer under the hand of Hananiah one of the king's captains the whole number of the heads of Fathers houses even the mighty men of valor was two thousand and six hundred and under their hand was a trained army three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy and Uzziah prepared for them even for all the host shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and stones for slinging and he made in Jerusalem engines invented by skillful men to be on the towers and upon the corners wherewith to shoot arrows and great stones and his name spread far abroad for he was marvelously helped till he was strong but when he was strong his heart was lifted up so that he did corruptly and he trespassed against Hashem his God for he went into the temple of Hashem to burn incense upon the altar of incense and Azariah the priest went in after him and with him fourscore priests of Hashem that were valiant men and they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him it pertaineth not unto the Uzziah to burn incense unto Hashem but to the priests. The sons of Aaron that are consecrated it pertaineth to burn incense go out of the sanctuary for thou hast trespassed neither shall it be for thy honor from Hashem God then Uzziah was wroth and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense and while he was wroth with the priests the leprosy broke forth in his forehead before the priests in the house of Hashem beside the altar of incense and Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him and behold he was leprous in his forehead and they thrust him out quickly from thence he himself made haste also to go out because Hashem had smitten him and Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death and dwelt in a house set apart being a leper for he was cut off from the house of Hashem and Jotham his son was over the king's house judging the people of the land now the rest of the acts of Uzziah first and last did Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos write so Uzziah slept with his fathers and they buried him with his fathers in the field of burial which belonged to the kings for they said he is a leper and Jotham his son reigned in his stead 2 Chronicles chapter Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jerusha the daughter of Zadok and he did that which was right in the eyes of Hashem according to all that his father Uzziah had done howbeit he entered not into the temple of Hashem and the people did. Yet corruptly he built the upper gate of the house of Hashem and on the wall of Ophel he built much moreover he built cities in the hill country of Judah and in the forest he built castles and towers he fought also with the king of the children of Ammon and prevailed against them and the children of Ammon gave him the same year a hundred talents of silver and ten thousand measures of wheat and ten thousand of barley so much did the children of Ammon render unto him in the second year also. And in the third so Jotham became mighty because he ordered his ways before Hashem his God now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars and his ways behold they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah he was five and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem and Jotham slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David and Ahaz his son reigned in his stead 2 Chronicles chapter Ahaz was twenty years old when. 
he began to reign and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem and he did not that which was right in the eyes of Hashem like David his father but he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for the Baalim moreover he offered in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burned his children in the fire according to the abominations of the heathen whom Hashem cast out before the children of Israel and he sacrificed and offered in the high places and on the hills and under every leafy tree wherefore Hashem his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Aram and they smote him and carried away of his a great multitude of captives and brought them to Damascus and he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel who smote him with a great slaughter for Pekah the son of Remaliah slew in Judah a hundred and twenty thousand in one day all of them valiant men because they had forsaken Hashem the God of their fathers and Zikri a mighty man of Ephraim. Slo Masiah the king's son and Azrakam the ruler of the house and Elkanah that was next to the king and the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren two hundred thousand women sons and daughters and took also away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria but a prophet of Hashem was there whose name was Odet and he went out to meet the host that came to Samaria and said unto them behold because Hashem the God of your fathers was wroth with Judah he hath delivered them into your hand and ye have slain them in a rage which hath reached up unto heaven and now ye purpose to bring the children of Judah and Jerusalem into subjection for bondmen and bondwomen unto you but are there not even with you acts of guilt of your own against Hashem your God now hear me therefore and send back the captives that ye have taken captive of your brethren for the fierce wrath of Hashem is upon you then certain of the heads of the children of Ephraim Azariah. The son of Jehohan and Berechiah the son of Meshalemeth and Jehizkiah the son of Shalom and Amasa the son of Hadlai stood up against them that came from the war and said unto them Ye shall not bring in the captives hither for ye purpose that which will bring upon us guilt against Hashem to add unto our sins and to our guilt for our guilt is great and there is fierce wrath against Israel so the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the congregation and the men that have been mentioned by name rose up and took the captives and with the spoil clothed all that were naked among them and arrayed them and shod them and gave them to eat and to drink and anointed them and carried all the feeble of them upon asses and brought them to Jericho the city of palm trees unto their brethren then they returned to Samaria at that time did king Ahaz send unto the kings of Assyria to help him for again the Edomites had come and smitten Judah and carried away captives the Philistines also had invaded the cities of the lowland and of the south of Judah and had taken Beth Shemesh and Ijalan and Gedroth and Soko with the towns thereof and Timna with the towns thereof Gimzo also and the towns thereof and they dwelt there for Hashem brought Judah low because of Ahaz king of Israel for he had cast away restraint in Judah and acted treacherously against Hashem and Tilligath Pilnazar king of Assyria came unto him and distressed him but strengthened him not for Ahaz stripped the house of Hashem and the house of the king and the princes and gave thereof unto the king of Assyria but it helped him not and in the time of his distress did he act even more treacherously against Hashem this same king Ahaz for he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus which smote him and he said because the gods of the kings of Aram helped them therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me but they were the ruin of him and of all Israel and Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God and shut up the doors of the house of Hashem and he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem and in every city of Judah he made high places to offer unto other gods and provoked Hashem the God of his fathers now the rest of his acts and all his ways first and last behold they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel and Ahaz slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city even in Jerusalem for they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel and Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead 2 Chronicles chapter Hezekiah began to reign when he was 5 and 20 years old and he reigned 9 and 20 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Abijah the daughter of Zechariah and he did that which was right in the eyes of Hashem according to all that David his father had done he in the first year of his reign in the first month opened the doors of the house of Hashem and repaired them and he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together into the broad place on the east and said unto them hear me ye Levites now sanctify yourselves and sanctify the house of Hashem the God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place for our fathers have acted treacherously and done that which was evil in the sight of Hashem our God and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of Hashem and turned their backs also they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel wherefore the wrath of Hashem was upon Judah and Jerusalem and he hath delivered them to be a horror and astonishment and a hissing as ye see with your eyes for lo our fathers have fallen by the sword and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with Hashem the God of Israel that his fierce anger may turn away from us my sons be not now negligent for Hashem hath chosen you to stand before him to minister unto him and that ye should be his ministers and offer unto him then the Levites arose Mahat the son of Amase and Joel the son of Azariah of the sons of the Kohathites and of the sons of Merari Kish the son of Abdi and Azariah the son of Jehalel and of the Gershonites Joah the son of 
Chsima and Eden the son of Joah and of the sons of Elizaphan Shimri and Jeel and of the sons of Azaf Zechariah and Matania and of the sons of Heman Jehiel and Shimei and of the sons of Jeduth and Shimei and Uziel and they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves and went in according to the commandment of the king by the words of Hashem to cleanse the house of Hashem and the priests went in unto the inner part of the house of Hashem to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of Hashem into the court of the house of Hashem and the Levites took it to carry it out abroad to the brook Kidron now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify and on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of Hashem and they sanctified the house of Hashem in eight days and on the sixteenth day of the first month they made an end and they went into Hezekiah the king within the palace and said we have cleansed all the house of Hashem even the altar of burnt offering with all the vessels thereof and the table of showbread with all the vessels thereof moreover all the vessels which King Ahaz in his reign did cast away when he acted treacherously have we prepared and sanctified and behold they are before the altar of Hashem then Hezekiah the king arose early and gathered the princes of the city and went up to the house of Hashem and they brought seven bullocks and seven rams and seven lambs and seven he goats for a sin offering for the kingdom and for the sanctuary and for Judah and he commanded the priests the sons of Aaron to offer them on the altar of Hashem so they killed the bullocks and the priests received the blood and dashed it against the altar and they killed the rams and dashed the blood against the altar they killed also the lambs and dashed the blood against the altar and they brought near the he goats for the sin offering before the king and the congregation and they laid their hands upon them and the priests killed them and they made a sin offering with their blood upon the altar to make atonement for all Israel for the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel and he set the Levites in the house of Hashem with cymbals with psalteries and with harps according to the commandment of David and of Gad the king seer and Nathan the prophet for the commandment was of Hashem by his prophets and the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets and Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar and when the burnt offering began the song of Hashem began also and the trumpets together with the instruments of David king of Israel and all the congregation prostrate themselves and the singers sang and the trumpeters sounded all this continued until the burnt offering was finished and when they had made an end of offering the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and prostrate themselves moreover Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praises unto Hashem with the words of David and of Azaph the seer and they sang praises with gladness and they bowed their heads and prostrate themselves then Hezekiah answered and said now ye have consecrated yourselves unto Hashem come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of Hashem and the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings and as many as were of a willing heart brought burnt offerings and the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was threescore and ten bullocks a hundred rams and two hundred lambs all these were for a burnt offering to Hashem and the consecrated things were six hundred oxen and three thousand sheep but the priests were too few so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings wherefore their brethren the Levites did help them till the work was ended and until the priests had sanctified themselves for the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests and also the burnt offerings were in abundance with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering so the service of the house of Hashem was firmly established and Hezekiah rejoiced and all the people because of that which God had prepared for the people for the thing was done suddenly 2 Chronicles chapter and Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of Hashem at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto Hashem the God of Israel for the king had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month for they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not sanctified themselves in sufficient number neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem and the thing was right in the eyes of the king and of all the congregation so they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba even to Dan that they should come to keep the Passover unto Hashem the God of Israel at Jerusalem for they had not kept it in great numbers according as it is written so the posts went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah and according to the commandment of the king saying yet children of Israel turn back unto Hashem the God of Abraham Isaac and Israel that he may return to the remnant that are escaped of you out of the hand of the kings of Assyria and be not ye like your fathers and like your brethren who acted treacherously against Hashem the God of their fathers so that he delivered them to be an astonishment as ye see now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were but yield yourselves unto Hashem and enter into his sanctuary which he hath sanctified forever and serve Hashem your God that his fierce anger may turn away from you for if ye turn back unto Hashem your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive and shall come back into this land for Hashem your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if ye return unto him so the posts passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh even unto Zebulun but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them nevertheless divers of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem also in Judah was the hand of God to give them one heart to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of Hashem and there assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month a very great congregation and they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem and all the altars for incense took they away and cast them into the brook Kidron then they killed 
the Passover lamb on the fourteenth day of the second month and the priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought burnt offerings into the house of Hashem and they stood in their place after their order according to the law of Moses the man of God the priests dashed the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites for there were many in the congregation that had not sanctified themselves therefore the Levites had the charge of killing the Passover lambs. For every one that was not clean to sanctify them unto Hashem for a multitude of the people even many of Ephraim and Manasseh Issachar and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it is written for Hezekiah had prayed for them saying the good Hashem pardon every one that sateth his heart to seek God Hashem the God of his fathers though he be not cleansed according to the purification that pertaineth to holy things and Hashem here can to Hezekiah. And healed the people and the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness and the Levites and the priests praised Hashem day by day singing with loud instruments unto Hashem and Hezekiah spoke encouragingly unto all the Levites that were well skilled in the service of Hashem so they did eat throughout the feast for the seven days offering sacrifices of peace offerings and giving thanks to Hashem the God of their fathers. And the whole congregation took counsel to keep other seven days and they kept other seven days with gladness for Hezekiah king of Judah did give to the congregation for offerings a thousand bullocks and seven thousand sheep and the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep and priests sanctified themselves in great numbers and all the congregation of Judah with the priests and the Levites and all the congregation that came out of Israel and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel and that dwelt in Judah rejoiced so there was great joy in Jerusalem for since the time of Solomon the son of David king of Israel there was not the like in Jerusalem then the priests the Levites arose and blessed the people and their voice was heard of Hashem and their prayer came up to his holy habitation even unto heaven 2 Chronicles chapter now when all this was finished all Israel that were present went out to the cities of Judah and broke in pieces the pillars and hewed down the Asherim and broke down the high places and the altars out of all Judah and Benjamin in Ephraim also and Manasseh until they had destroyed them all then all the children of Israel returned every man to his possession into their own cities and Hezekiah appointed the courses of the priest and the Levites after their courses every man according to his service both the priests and the Levites for burnt offerings and for peace offerings to minister and to give. Thanks and to praise in the gates of the camp of Hashem he appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offerings to wit for the morning and evening burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the appointed seasons as it is written in the law of Hashem moreover he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites that they might give themselves to the law of Hashem and as soon as the commandment came abroad the children of Israel gave in abundance the first fruits of corn wine and oil and honey and of all the increase of the field and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly and the children of Israel and Judah that dwelt in the cities of Judah they also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of hallowed things which were hallowed unto Hashem their God and laid them by heaps in the third month they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finished them in the seventh month and when Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps they blessed Hashem and his people Israel then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps and Azariah the chief priest of the house of Zadok answered him and said since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of Hashem we have eaten and had enough and have left plenty for Hashem hath blessed his people and that which is left is this great store then. Hezekiah commanded to prepare chambers in the house of Hashem and they prepared them and they brought in the offerings and the tithes and the hallowed things faithfully and over them Conaniah the Levite was ruler and Shimei his brother was second and Jehiel and Azachiah and Nahat and Asahel and Jerimoth and Josabad and Eliel and Ismachiah and Mahat and Benaiah were overseers under the hand of Conaniah and Shimei his brother by the appointment of Hezekiah the king and Azariah the ruler of the house of God and Korah the son of Imna the Levite the porter at the east gate was over the freewill offerings of God to distribute the offerings of Hashem and the most holy things and under him were Eden and Miniamin and Shua and Shemaiah Amariah and Shekaniah in the cities of the priests in their office of trust to give to their brethren by courses as well to the great as to the small beside them that were reckoned by genealogy of males from three years old and upward even every. One that entered into the house of Hashem for his daily portion for their service in their charges according to their courses and them that were reckoned by genealogy of the priests by their fathers houses and the Levites from twenty years old and upward in their charges by their courses even to give to them that were reckoned by genealogy of all their little ones their wives and their sons and their daughters through all the congregation for in their office of trust they administered the Sacred gifts also for the sons of Aaron the priests that were in the fields of the open land about their cities in every city there were men that were mentioned by name to give portions to all the males among the priests and to all that were reckoned by genealogy among the Levites and thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah and he wrought that which was good and right and faithful before Hashem his God and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God he did it with all his heart and prospered two chronicles chapter after these things and this faithfulness Sennacherib king of Assyria came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fortified cities and thought to make a breach therein for himself and when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were 
without the city and they helped him so there was gathered much people together and they stopped all the fountains and the brook that flowed through the midst of the land saying why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water and he took courage and built up all the wall that was broken down and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and strengthened Milo in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance and he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the broad place at the gate of the city and spoke encouragingly to them saying be strong and of good courage be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria nor for all the multitude that is with him for there is a greater with us than with him with him is an arm of flesh but with us is Hashem our God to help us and to fight our battles and the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah king of Judah after this did Sennacherib king of Assyria send his servants to Jerusalem now he was before Lachish and all his power with him unto Hezekiah king of Judah and unto all Judah that were at Jerusalem saying thus saith Sennacherib king of Assyria whereon do ye trust that ye abide the siege in Jerusalem doth not Hezekiah persuade you to give you over to die by famine and by thirst saying Hashem our God will deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria hath not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem saying ye shall worship before one altar and upon it shall ye offer no ye not what I and my fathers have done unto all the peoples of the lands were the gods of the nations of the lands in any wise able to deliver their land out of my hand who was there among all the gods of those nations which my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of my hand that your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand now therefore let not Hezekiah beguile you nor persuade you after this manner neither believe ye him for no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of my hand and out of the hand of my fathers how much less shall your god deliver you out of my hand and his servants spoke yet more against Hashem god and against his servant Hezekiah he wrote also a letter to taunt Hashem the god of Israel and to speak against him saying as the gods of the nations of the lands which have not delivered their people out of my hand so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of my hand and they cried with a loud voice in the Jews language unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall to terrify them and to affright them that they might take the city and they spoke of the God of Jerusalem as of the gods of the peoples of the earth which are the work of men's hands and Hezekiah the king and Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos prayed because of this and cried to heaven and Hashem sent an angel who cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria so he returned with shame of face to his own land and when he was come into the house of his god they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword thus Hashem saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib the king of Assyria and from the hand of all and guided them on every side and many brought gifts unto Hashem to Jerusalem and precious things to Hezekiah king of Judah so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations from thenceforth in those days Hezekiah was sick even unto death and he prayed unto Hashem and he spoke unto him and gave him a sign but Hezekiah rendered not according to the benefit done unto him for his heart was lifted up therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem notwithstanding Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the wrath of Hashem came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah and Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor and he provided him treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all manner of goodly vessels storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil and stalls for all manner of beasts and flocks in folds moreover he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance for God had given him very much substance this same Hezekiah also stopped the upper spring of the waters of Gin and brought them straight down on the west side of the city of David and Hezekiah prospered in all his works howbeit in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land God left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his good deeds behold they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel and Hezekiah slept with his fathers and they buried him in the ascent of the sepulchres of the sons of David and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him honor at his death and Manasseh his son reigned in his stead 2 Chronicles chapter Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem and he did that which was evil in the sight of Hashem after the abominations of the nations whom Hashem cast out before the children of Israel for he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down and he reared up altars for the Baalim and made Ashroth and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them and he built altars in the house of Hashem whereof Hashem said in Jerusalem shall my name be forever and he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of Hashem he also made his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom and he practiced soothsaying and used enchantments and practiced sorcery and appointed them that divined by a ghost or a familiar spirit he wrought much evil in the sight of Hashem to provoke him and he set the graven image of the idol which he had made in the house of God of which God said to David and to Solomon his son in this house and in Jerusalem which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel will I put my 
Name forever neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from off the land which I have appointed for your fathers if only they will observe to do all that I have commanded them even all the law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses and Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err so that they did evil more than did the nations whom Hashem destroyed before the children of Israel and Hashem spoke to Manasseh and to his people but they gave no heed. Wherefore Hashem brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria who took Manasseh with hooks and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon and when he was in distress he besought Hashem his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and he prayed unto him and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him back to Jerusalem into his kingdom then Manasseh knew that Hashem he was God now after this he built an outer wall to the city of David on the west side of Gin in the valley even to the entrance at the fish gate and he compassed about Offal and raised it up a very great height and he put captains of the army in all the fortified cities of Judah and he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of Hashem and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of Hashem and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city and he built up the altar of Hashem and offered thereon sacrifices of peace offerings and of thanksgiving and commanded Judah to serve Hashem the God of Israel nevertheless the people did sacrifice still in the high places but only unto Hashem their God now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto his God and the words of the seers that spoke to him in the name of Hashem the God of Israel behold they are written among the acts of the kings of Israel his prayer also and how God was entreated of him and all his sin and his transgression and the places wherein he built high places and set up the Asherim and the graven images before he humbled himself behold they are written in the history of the seers so Manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his own house and Ammon his son reigned in his stead Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign and he reigned two years in Jerusalem and he did that which was evil in the sight of Hashem as did Manasseh his father and Ammon sacrificed unto all the graven images which Manasseh his father had made and served them and he humbled not himself before Hashem as Manasseh his father had humbled himself but the same Ammon became guilty more and more and his servants conspired against him and put him to death in his own house but the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon and the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his stead 2 Chronicles chapter Josiah was 8 years old when he began to reign and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem and he did that which was right in the eyes of Hashem and walked in the ways of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left for in the eighth year of his reign while he was yet young he began to seek after the God of David his father and in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the Asherim and the graven images and the molten images and they broke down the altars of the Baalim in his presence and the sun images that were on high above them he hewed down and the asherim and the graven images and the molten images he broke in pieces and made dust of them and strewed it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them and he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and purged Judah and Jerusalem and so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon even unto Naphtali with their axes round about and he broke down the altars and beat the asherim and the graven images into powder and hewed down all the sun images throughout all the land of Israel and returned to Jerusalem now in the eighteenth year of his reign when he had purged the land and the house he sent Shaphan the son of Azaliah and Masiah the governor of the city and Joah the son of Johaz the recorder to repair the house of Hashem his God and they came to Hilkiah the high priest and delivered the money that was brought into the house of God which the Levites the keepers of the door had gathered of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim and of all the remnant of Israel and of all Judah and Benjamin and they returned to Jerusalem and they delivered it into the hand of the workmen that had the oversight of the house of Hashem and the workmen that wrought in the house of Hashem gave it to mend and repair the house even to the carpenters and to the builders gave they it to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings and to make beams for the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed and the men did the work faithfully and the overseers of them were Hahat and Obadiah the Levites of the sons of Merari and Zechariah and Meshalam of the sons of the Kohathites to preside over it and other of the Levites all that had skill with instruments of music also they were over the bearers of burdens and presided over all that did the work in every manner of service and of the Levites there were scribes and officers and porters and when they brought out the Money that was brought into the house of Hashem Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of Hashem given by Moses and Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the scribe I have found the book of the law in the house of Hashem and Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan and Shaphan carried the book to the king and moreover brought back word unto the king saying all that was committed to thy servants they do it and they have poured out the money that was found in the house of Hashem and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and into the hand of the workmen and Shaphan the scribe told the king saying Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book and Shaphan read therein before the king and it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that he rent his clothes and the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam the son of Shaphan and Abdon the son of Micah and Shaphan the scribe and Asaiah the king's servant saying go yet inquire of Hashem for me and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah concerning the words of the book that is found for great is the wrath of Hashem that is poured out upon us because our fathers have not kept the word of Hashem to do according unto all that is written in this book so Hilkiah and they whom the king had commanded went to Hulda the prophetess the wife of Shalom the son of Tokay the son of Hezra keeper of the wardrobe now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter and they spoke to her to that 
Effect and she said unto them thus saith Hashem the God of Israel tell ye the man that sent you unto me thus saith Hashem behold I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah because they have forsaken me and have offered unto other gods that they might provoke me with all the works of their hands therefore is my wrath poured out upon this place and it shall not be quenched. But unto the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of Hashem thus shall ye say to him thus saith Hashem the God of Israel as touching the words which thou hast heard because thy heart was tender and thou didst humble thyself before God when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof and hast humbled thyself before me and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me I also have heard thee saith Hashem behold I will gather thee to thy fathers and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof and they brought back word unto the king then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem and the king went up to the house of Hashem and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people both great and small and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of Hashem and the king stood in his place and made a covenant before Hashem to walk after Hashem and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book and he caused all that were found in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God the God of their fathers and Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertained to the children of Israel and made all that were found in Israel to serve even to serve Hashem their God all his days they departed not from following Hashem the God of their fathers 2 Chronicles chapter and Josiah kept a Passover unto Hashem in Jerusalem and they killed the Passover lamb on the fourteenth day of the first month and he set the priests in their charges and encouraged them to the service of the house of Hashem and he said unto the Levites that taught all Israel that were holy unto Hashem put the holy ark in the house which Solomon the son of David king of Israel did build there shall no more be a burden upon your shoulders now serve Hashem your God and his people Israel and prepare yet after your fathers houses by your courses according to the writing of David king of Israel and according to the writing of Solomon his son and stand in the holy place according to the divisions of the Fathers houses of your brethren the children of the people and let there be for each a portion of a father's house of the Levites and kill the Passover lamb and sanctify yourselves and prepare for your brethren to do according to the word of Hashem by the hand of Moses and Josiah gave to the children of the people of the flock lambs and kids all of them for the Passover offerings unto all that were present to the number of thirty thousand and three thousand bullocks these were of the King's substance and his princes gave willingly unto the people to the priests and to the Levites Hilkiah and Zechariah and Jehiel the rulers of the house of God gave unto the priests for the Passover offerings two thousand and six hundred small cattle and three hundred oxen Konani also and Shemaiah and Nethanel his brethren and Hashabiah and Jeel and Josabad the chiefs of the Levites gave unto the Levites for the Passover offerings five thousand small cattle and five hundred oxen so. The service was prepared and the priests stood in their place and the Levites by their courses according to the king's commandment and they killed the Passover lamb and the priests dashed the blood which they received of their hand and the Levites flayed them and they removed the portions that were to be burnt that they might give them to the divisions of the fathers houses of the children of the people to present unto Hashem as it is written in the book of Moses and so did they with the oxen and they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance and the holy offerings sod they in pots and in cauldrons and in pans and carried them quickly to all the children of the people and afterward they prepared for themselves and for the priests because the priests the sons of Aaron were busied in offering the portions that were to be burnt and the fat until night therefore the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests the sons of Aaron and the singers the sons of Azaph were in their place according to the commandment of David and Azaph and Heman and Jeduthun the king seer and the porters were at every gate they needed not to depart from their service for their brethren the Levites prepared for them so all the service of Hashem was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of Hashem according to the commandment of King Josiah and the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time. And the feast of unleavened bread seven days and there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet neither did any of the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept and the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem in the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept after all this when Josiah had prepared the temple Necho king of Egypt went up to fight against Karchemish by the Euphrates and Josiah went out against him but he sent ambassadors to him saying what have I to do with thee thou king of Judah I come not against thee this day but against the house wherewith I have war and God hath given command to speed me forbear thee from meddling with God who is with me that he destroy thee not nevertheless Josiah would not turn his face from him but disguised himself that he might fight with him and hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God. 
and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo and the archers shot at King Josiah and the king said to his servants have me away for I am sore wounded so his servants took him out of the chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had and brought him to Jerusalem and he died and was buried in the sepulchres of his fathers and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah and Jeremiah lamented for Josiah and all the singing men and singing women spoke of Josiah in their lamentations unto this day and they made them an ordinance in Israel and behold they are written in the lamentations now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his good deeds according to that which is written in the law of Hashem and his acts first and last behold they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah 2 Chronicles chapter then the people of the land took Jehoahaz the son of Josiah and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign and he reigned three months in Jerusalem and the king of Egypt deposed him at Jerusalem and fined the land a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold and the king of Egypt made Iliakim his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem and changed his name to Jehoiakim and Necho took Johas his brother and carried him to Egypt Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem and he did that which was evil in the sight of Hashem his God against him came up Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of Hashem to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him behold they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah and Jehoiakim his son reigned in his stead Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem and he did that which was evil in the sight of Hashem and at the return of the year King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of Hashem and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem Zedekiah was twenty and one years old when he began to reign and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem and he did that which was evil in the sight of Hashem his God he humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet speaking from the mouth of Hashem and he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar who had made him swear by God but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto Hashem the God of Israel moreover all the chiefs of the priests and the people transgressed very greatly after all the abominations of the nations and they polluted the house of Hashem which he had hallowed in Jerusalem and Hashem the God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers sending betimes and often because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place but they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of Hashem arose against his people till there was no remedy therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldeans who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young man or maiden old man or hoary headed he gave them all into his hand and all the vessels of the house of God great and small and the treasures of the house of Hashem and the treasures of the king and of his princes all these he brought to Babylon and they burnt the house of God and broke down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof and them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon and they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of Hashem by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had been paid her Sabbaths for as long as she lay desolate she kept Sabbath to fulfill threescore and ten years now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of Hashem by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished Hashem stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying thus saith Cyrus king of Persia all the kingdoms of the earth hath Hashem the God of heaven given me and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem which is in Judah whosoever there is among you of all his people the Hashem his God be with him let him go up.